Hello and welcome to today's broadcast of the Chinese DPC. My name is Nomad and I've got Lizard and Beacup on the panel to start the day off. Guys, looking very fresh, uh, looking, looking very formal today, Lizard, yeah, actually. You, you, know? you, you really are. <laughs> I thought I'd, uh, you know, dress down a little bit to, uh, you know, meet your previous standards, but now you bring the standards up, you know, we're, 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 we're just not on the like same my page. My standards are, all, are always the same. What's the difference? I mean, you can't. You, I, I think a turtleneck is kind of like I'd, I'd say it's more business casual, but you're looking kind of uh, uh -huh. business. You're looking business today, lizard. Yeah, because we Fresh have some too. sick games, and I dress to match the occasion. I see, I see. We do indeed have some sick games. We've got an excellent schedule ahead of us today. We've got Phoenix versus RNG, followed by eHome versus Aster, and then ending the day with PSG, LGD versus LBZS. And like it was planned, it appears on your screens in front of you. Wow. Look at these games. I mean, which one are we most excited for? I, 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 think, it's, uh, I, th I think it's pretty obvious, but I'll let you guys say it. Is it obvious? Because it's obvious. Is it? For me, it's Aster E Home. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> yeah, everybody I, thinks I'm gonna say LGD LBZS because I'm a massive LGD fan. But uh, but yeah, exactly. You're a massive L uh, LGD fan. You don't want to see them get wrecked that badly. So uh, you, yeah, you resort to Aster yeah. versus E Home, right? The sun will rise again. Like, I'm afraid for PSG LGD a little bit there because LBZS they the, they have the power of the sun within them. They're drawing that power. They might lose once one series, but that's it. You see on their social media, they were all sunbathing yesterday, just yeah. all, all, all out there, you know, just, just exactly. taking in the yeah. race, you know how powering all up. The, all, all the teams, they're playing with um, the, what, what's it called? The shades. The shades down, the yeah, yeah, yeah. LBCS, they just... Put the blinds up, they have a <laughs> glare on their screens, can't see anything. <laughs> Boss, are you sure this is a good idea? <laughs> Trust me, guys, it'll work, it'll work. Somebody's got their chair right in front of where the sun's coming in, just right in their eyes. Uh, it's probably like molasses or something like that. Uh, but uh, talk to me why this uh, this Asta E Home uh, series is going to be so critical. Uh, e Home, they kind of took a step down, and I feel like after their loss, it might be a, a proving ground match where they need to really step up, go for something more. And uh, you know, Aster, I think, are still always trying to keep the ball rolling, more Ori domination. More Ori domination, yeah, finding his new home. And, uh, you know, he's moved in, you know, he's got the furniture unpacked already, and he, he, he's just he's just vibing in this new home. Yeah, he definitely is. It's looking like he's going to have a really strong season this time around. It, not that his last one was uh, too disappointing, but you, you want to be on top if you're Ori. Yeah. Exactly, and he's got the caliber to yep. be on top. Alrighty, let's start talking about our first series of the day then, and this one is very exciting. It's Phoenix versus RNG, and now you might be going into this thinking, well, obviously RNG's got the win, but uh, I'm not sure we can say his team has been super consistent for RNG. Yeah, I think there's a couple things lacking for RNG. Yesterday, we obviously saw God King kind of come out of his shell in game number three a little bit, but games one and two, it still felt like is God King really doing his part? So do you think he's going to gain the confidence from that, uh, you know, the triple rampage at the end of his last series to come out of his shell and, uh, you know, be the God King we all know and hope he can be? I'd like to think so. I don't think I've ever gotten a rampage before. In my really? Life. Yeah, I don't think I've ever gotten one. Oh, we, need, we need to get you a rampage. 90% of the games I play are right. position five. Like, I, need, I started playing Wraith King and Kunkka, and then it was all Ancient Apparition. We, we need to get you a rampage. I yeah. need three this in is, the same game. This is sad. So I don't know if, like, that feels like feeling. a metaphor, but, yeah, we need to, you know, take you out of the town <laughs> and, uh, you know, make you yeah. meet some enemies, you know, get them nice and low, and then... How long does the feeling We'll protect last? you. <laughs> Do you guys, like, get a rampage, and then, like, next day is, like, awesome? Like, I don't know what it feels like. Ah, uh, well, you know, you'll learn. You'll learn. You'll learn what it feels like, and okay. uh, we'll help you get there. Uh, you know, teach you the techniques, etc. Hopefully. <laughs> Um, it's, it's kind of funny that we're talking about God King needing confidence, considering his name for a long time was literally God King. Like, I don't know, man. It's Maybe he's just compensating, right? Like, he looks into that nickname and he draws power out of it because mm. he's mm. lacking a little bit of it. He does have a very long name right now. God King, Gwen Experience. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of... A lot of Is that something else? A lot of real estate. Yeah. I don't know, I guess... Uh, Have we had a longer nickname in the, in the pro scene before? Like, didn't Brax used to go as Brax X, 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 and it would just, like, yeah, but this is, <laughs> cover the entire these thing? These are different words. Like, uh, it, it's not gibberish with, with just yeah. X's, right? Imagine if that's just, like, a really thrifty Dota player, though, who's just, like, selling 
It, like adding loads of sponsors onto his name. So he's just like, you know, a ridiculously long name. He's getting like five pounds each from each of them. He's like, I'm pretty sure there, there was at one point teams in uh, Europe, players in Europe, that just for the heck of it would add like 10 sponsors. <laughs> well, they're not even being sponsored. Yeah, they, they weren't really being sponsored. It's just <laughs> for fun. The advertising. Look, look at what you can. Or, or like your name and then dot your advert here. DM me now. <laughs> Yeah, do you guys remember the times when everyone was adding hearts and like, you can see we're, we're still doing that in SA. <laughs> yeah, but you can see that we are definitely uh, like becoming older as, as the community, so we're losing those hearts a little bit and whatnot. But in SA, uh, there's lots of youngsters coming up in SEA as well. I think these two yeah. regions are are the future of Dota anyway. Got some young guys in China, you know, some yeah. eighteen, nineteen yeah. year old players. You yeah. used to have like Ego and ASD. Those were some young guys that were coming up and then now you don't. Now you don't. <laughs> yeah. thanks, thanks for the insight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it really did happen like that, right? Like one day it was just, I think it was Ego who was just like, I left. And when he was playing on that dominant E-Home team too. What does Felix's name mean, by the way? Felix Schauber. Is that just is that a translation thing? Or should, 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 we, should we ask uh, the oracles over at Perfect World that question? Yeah. They, no, they know everything. Any question we have, like, even if we don't ask them, they, they just have tell the us. Answers. It's like they can read our minds. They just don't know how to get me a jersey. <laughs> I've been asked. <laughs> but they're also probably sick of me. I ask, like, every day. Yeah, you, you have a couple of good jerseys. You have PSG LGD, you have Vichy Gaming as well, right? That I noticed. Yeah. I think he gets them. <laughs> I actually got them on. Uh, now, do you just go eBay. back home and spam people, or did you buy them? Uh, I bought those on eBay, but I do spam people trying to get jerseys. <laughs> LGD sent, sent me that jersey. Base. No, look, I'm the same. <laughs> Nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, yeah, I, I, I message every now and then. I'm just like, hey, you know, can I get like a... I'm always like, I'll pay the shipping, I'll pay the jersey. Just like, how do I get one? Please. Like the jacket for Aster? That's, that's the fresh look. I think looking at RNG's game history, though, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of like a little bit worried about this series because, you know, IG, uh, RNG beat them, you know, it's, it's, it's a close matchup. RNG get the win, then LBZS. They lose. And then Ehome, who have looked really, really good this season, RNG beat them. It's kind of like inverse to what we're expecting, which means Phoenix uh, might, might have a chance. It could right? be in some trouble here. Yeah, yeah. 1 2 1 2, yeah. Yeah, Phoenix uh, so far are what, 0 3. They're yep. bottom of the pack. They're not really doing that great. Um, however, they do have they do stand a chance against RNG. It all depends on uh, what RNG shows up. True, true. Mm. But Phoenix yet to win a single game in this tournament as of yet. They are, as you say, zero and six. Um, not a single win. So just taking one game in a series would be really, really nice for this team. I guess. I don't know. I always have that, especially in the DPC, like, is one game really enough to, like, tide yourself over and be like, I did a great job? You want to get, like... <laughs> well, uh, no, so better than getting uh, zero games. So you, you would now, rather just bang out with no wins and all losses? Don't give yourself hope. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all or nothing, right? All or nothing. Okay, that's a... Uh, eight, yep, there you go, the 0.0%. You're just adding that decimal point on there as well, just to, just to hammer it home. Yeah, it's been a rough run for these guys, but I mean, you know, talk to me about the history, you know, because this wasn't what the team looked like when they qualified for uh, for Division One, right? Deep, right, Big Cup. Yeah, the team that qualified is now on eHome. eHome, right? Yeah, they got picked up by eHome, poached. If some people want to go that way, is it a full? It wasn't a full roster that got poached. No, it's like, the it was like three, the three of them. It was three of them. Yeah, three. Yeah, I think it, so. At because. Least. Because Phoenix then had Yi, who used to play for Keen Gaming, and he was a big part of them getting to Division One, and now he's teamless. But they have Shiro and Seveni, who both were a part of Phoenix Gaming at some point. Definitely looking good for the boys that left Phoenix. Yeah. No, no, not that great for the new ones on Phoenix, but it happens sometimes, right? Like you, you have to make these decisions that seem unfair a little bit, but when you're aiming to become the best there is, Sometimes things just look that way. Things are unfair. Yep. I, uh, there, there have been situations in which you know teams qualify together, and as soon as they qualify for a tournament, they replace a player. Is that great? Extreme gaming. Is that great? <laughs> <coughs> Probably not. But uh, you know, you you want to have the best chances of winning. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, these teams are not looking to, uh, you know, get the win maybe in this season. They're not looking to even maybe take the first major. Some of them are, of course, but for everybody, the goal is the same. It's the international, it's getting to TI, and it's finding the best possible path to TI where you are potentially going to win the whole thing. And that is where the journey starts. It is right here. And guess what? The draft is almost right here, which means we need to say arigato. No, konnichiwa to the draft master. Hello, senpai. How's it going? It's going very well. It's early fresh morning. Unfortunately, as you guys said, Phoenix uh, struggling to make ends mm -hmm. meet. But uh, whenever we watch them, they're actually quite good in the early games. But uh, once the, the mid game comes, they don't really know where they should plant themselves, where they should be, what kind of strategy they should be following. Do, do you think they can uh, adapt to that? Maybe get this draft that snowballs like that TA draft that we saw from Ehome? It's uh, possible, possible but the problem is just really what I've seen with other, a lot of other teams too, though, is really shot calling. Mm -hmm. At least in this season one in China has been a big problem for a lot of teams. And Phoenix, of course, very inexperienced. They don't have like a you know, seasoned captain or veteran yep. or anything like that. So it's very hard for them to yeah, really get the ball rolling, uh, rolling right. unfortunately. <laughs> Well, we do have the draft available, so let's jump straight into it and find out exactly how this one's going to go down as we get into game number one, Phoenix Gaming versus RNG. Unbelievable first pick of the death prophecy. <laughs> we have not seen it at all. It is, I think, the first time wow. in two Shocking. years, probably. I can't believe <laughs> what we're seeing here, because it just got nerfed so much, right? <laughs> Half by one to three. <laughs> do, do you think we're going to see some... Uh, usually it's DP Tusk, right? But yeah. You see Io and Storm, so maybe you can get something different. I'm a big disruptor fan against disruptor. both of those. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, uh, a lot of people don't seem to favor Disruptor. Which what? I don't know why. I actually think Disruptor is a really, really strong support right now. He is. DP Tusk is the most common pairing so far in the China DPC upper division. And it's also carrying a 71% win rate, which is... Uh, Fairly tidy. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense because the lane is very strong, and in the mid game, you have to task with Blink Dagger that can actually save the DP, but they opt to go for the Bane. More pick off for the Storm. It's also pretty good against Io because you can sleep the Io or his partner and then grip the other. And Feeble isn't that bad. And well. Feeble's pretty good to get um, the heal reduction going. But it's 1 and 2 right now, therefore, it's rubbish. Sorry, stats don't lie. Pretty rubbish. Uh, Three gains. Yep. Two losses. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I don't know who would ever pick that. <laughs> <laughs> LGD, 16 win rate, 16 consecutive win rate, uh, win rates. consecutive wins. Yeah, win on, on Bane, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. That is pretty crazy, Black. They, they gotta stop that picking that hero. They can't break that win streak. Hmm. Uh, Do you think when you reach 16, do you give up there or you do you go for 20? Um, go for 30. But the minute you're at 20, you go for 40, and then for 50 and 60, you never stop, right? Yeah, it's the greed. Yeah, the greed that corrupts all of us. Wow, getting very philosophical this morning. Yeah, see, the greed, <laughs> that's why they pick Bane to instill nightmares. Mm. So people are less greedy. Yeah, because if you're too greedy, you get gripped. Ah, and there's my boy X Nova. How about a hero that's a reverse alchemist? That Instead of being greedy, he makes you less greedy. Philanthropist. You, you, <laughs> no, no, no. A philanthropist would Still kind just of be me that. feeding, right? Like, here you go. <laughs> I, I mean, more like uh, he comes into the lane, he has minus two gold aura. Like, you can For the enemy, you mean? Yeah. Or for yeah, your yeah. own teammates. <laughs> <laughs> no, for, for the enemy. That hopefully. sounds super broken. That sounds Level so four, broken. It's minus yeah, it's 20 just, gold a second. Just, and you're invis, so you just follow. <laughs> that <laughs> sounds horrible. You just well, that's bounty hunter. Bounty hunter. Yeah. yeah, you're never <laughs> making it's rubbish. Gold. So. Well, while they're farming ancients, they get minus 50% yeah. gold from yeah. all creeps. So. I mean, I feel like so many of the hero ideas in Dota that if you were to pitch them without having seen the hero being played yet, you'd be like, that sounds silly. Like, you know, bounty hunter. If, I was, if you were to suggest that idea, if Bounty Hunter wasn't in the game, everyone would be like, that's yeah, but a ridiculous idea. Bounty Hunter is one of these old school uh, concepts, right? Like all these new heroes, they, they jump around, they have these spells that just, yeah. you don't know what's happening on the ten map. 10 mobility spells. Yeah, 10 mobility spells, like Void Spirit, Earth Spirit and whatnot. And then you see, and you jump yeah. from mid to the middle. I mean, they're just yeah. doing that because it, like, it's more mid quote unquote mid fun to play for all the Zoomers out there. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to attract the Zoomers, definitely. For my <laughs> boomer brain, 
Wraith King, man. Just walk up to something <laughs> critical. The old Wraith King, not the new one. Yeah, the, the old one, of the course. The skeleton spawning is a yeah. bit heavy. A it's bit, too bit much for me. <laughs> and, and the crit cooldown, too. Like, ah, I need to stop my attack. Oh, yeah, now I can hit. Nah, it's too, it's too, too much. Too much. I agree. I agree. What's the ultimate zoomer ability that you'd put in the game? Uh, Charge of Darkness. Oh. Cop out. No, he's copying out. Yeah, I agree. You'd have to. Include I mean, you ask, the ultimate zoomer ability is. Uh, uh, no, when when Void Spirit goes under, what's the name of the spell? Dissimulate. 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 Like he goes under and then he's. I'm here. I'm there. Wait, you think it's more? <laughs> <laughs> you think it's more zoomer than than ball lightning though? The ball lightning is pretty zoomer. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I guess. That's zoomer movement. I'm talking about like zoomer. Like we have to click mentality. super fast. Or yeah, zoomer mentality. Yeah, it's like you know the the. the simulate. Yeah, I, I I think any of Void Spirit spells will do. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not Astral Remnant, but yeah. And yeah, but just going back to the draft because that's what we're here for. Thank Unbelievable. you, Draftmaster. Keeping us on topic. Yeah, uh, Spirit Breaker to counter, of course, the Bane. It's not particularly great against DP, but what what if? The okay. draft master has to keep us on topic. Meanwhile, the three of us are trying to derail it. Trying to take it. it. Yeah. That, that might get very we're, chaotic we're, and it might get very loud. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> we're trying to tip it over. I mean, I, I'm, I'm already being pretty distracted by... <laughs> I see. Yeah. Black's the camp counselor trying to keep Everyone's us in distracted line. when this is on the <laughs> look, yeah. You see how easy it is? Like, <laughs> like hey, He got distracted again. <laughs> it, it, it's not my fault. Like, <clears throat> I look over, I see three beautiful young men. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you Thank know? you. Appreciate that. Been away from your wife a bit long, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> a bit too long, perhaps. Well, Dark Willow's been picked at least. But that is, uh, yeah. It's an oversight. I, I don't know what the connection is, but yeah. sure, Dark Willow has been picked. With the Ember <laughs> Spirit. On, is Dark Willow actually written? That doesn't strike me as super good in this it, game. It they doesn't don't have sound a combo. great. It doesn't have a combo. You're also playing into a storm that gets on top of you. Can There's a ton of damage that goes through the Dark Realm. Yeah. Even Spirit Shadow Breaker. Realm. Spirit Breaker as well does yeah. not care about any of your spells because the, of all those. The, the Ember pick. I mean, it's a pretty good pick against both Storm as well as Spirit Breaker. Of course, Ayo can't really stop you either. Mm. But why are you picking the Pango into the Ember, which is considered a counter? I want to get cheering sa uh, chained, chained, chained. Mm -hmm. you got English is a hard Se language sometimes. Steering chained, yeah. Steering chained, it's, uh, yeah, you can't roll, you can't jump, <coughs> you can't do anything. And generally you would pick Ember into the Pango because of that reason, but they must be very comfortable on it. Yep, and you have grip as well on the side of uh, Phoenix, right? Yeah, to to and work. silences and... Yeah. Yeah. Have, have RNG done this every game? Just pick God King's hero last? Yeah. They've never, like, front-end picked it, right? Like, other teams are picking their carry earlier. Yeah, like, God King, King needs that last card. pick. Like, right now, it's all about building God King up. The well, best he, way to do that, your last pick is hero. He also talked about, I think he was doing an interview yesterday after the game. He talked about how after they lost to LBZS, he's now doing the drafting. Yeah. God King is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah of course. And really every it. single game since that ga game. Wait, every single one since that game they've... Uh, yeah. Last pick. Carry last Actually, no, they, they always draft the carry last, don't mind. They if, if you do your own drafting, you got a last pick you hear, though. Uh, so you look like the best. Yeah. Actually, not not true. Since he took over drafting, they've put less focus on to uh, his, his, taking his hero last. So, really? draw Ranger, right? What a guy. Yeah. <laughs> what, what a humble Seems, dude. Uh, Who'd have thought that a guy would be the picking at last right now? <laughs> would be this humble. But yeah, sorry, continue. N nice try dera <laughs> der derailing him again. Well, not really a try. <laughs> hey, this is you, relevant. This is you relevant. Just took Throw it information. Yeah. It's very relevant information. What else is there? Draw? Sniper? Anything else? <laughs> Sniper is a little bit more risky against Ember Spirit, perhaps? <laughs> Phantom one? Just a little bit. PL against Ember can work if you're like super big, but generally you Just don't Just a Wraith King. Didn't give give that man. Nah, no Wraith King. <laughs> nah, like Draw Ranger seems like the best. I okay, agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Although. Yeah, they've been loving this troll. Troll against Dusa is pretty. And Bane and. I mean, he had a really good troll game yesterday because he had like, three games, so I'm... It was a really good troll game. This one is yeah. a bit... Not, not that good. I'm wondering if he kind of lulled himself into a false sense of security. He's like, wow, yesterday with the troll, I went like 10-0, pushed all the buildings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It happens so many times. The hero looks really strong in one game, which was perfect for him. Yeah. And then but they also stomped the entire game, right? Yeah. Which made yeah. it super easy yeah. for them. It was like start to finish. They kind of just... Yeah. Never Honestly, happened. just purely based on draft, I would actually go for for, uh, for Phoenix. Phoenix yeah. yeah, yeah. And because we are the analysts and the draft masters, we gotta go with the draft. 
So I'm going to go with Phoenix. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. He's not baiting me this time. I'll go with RNG. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) RNG, he's not baiting me this time. Yep. Uh, I mean, if there was ever a game to break the lost streak for Phoenix, it might be this one, but unfortunately, RNG are just looking a little too crispy to be dropping a game here. But we could be wrong. It's happened before. The Draftmaster could be right. Let's find out how this one's going to go down with our casting duo of our Cryptic and Neff. Thank you so much, Nomad. And, uh, you know, one thing I will say, you know, Phoenixes, they, uh, they rise from the ashes, right? Maybe this is the time where this is their rise. They've fallen six times now without a single uh, rise yet, so. <laughs> you can't do that to them, buddy. That's not fair. <laughs> uh, I mean, if there's ever a time for them to need to clutch something out, it's going to be now. RNG, they're probably feeling a little bit better after that uh, rampage yesterday. I know God King was very excited in yeah. the uh, Chinese uh, language post-game interview, but, uh my, my only issue is that Phoenix have been falling back so hard on this Mars pick, and that was the first thing that they banned out on uh, the side of uh, RNG here. So mm. I'm not so certain that they're going to end up winning this one, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. I, I do like their draft, like Black was saying. I think draft-wise, I'd give the edge to Phoenix here uh, a little bit. They have tools to deal with the Spirit Breaker. That's one of the things that uh, teams have failed to address. Mm. Right, like we'll see the Spirit Breaker pick, and then it just goes unchecked for a whole game. But you have multiple different avenues here on the side of Phoenix to deal with it. You have multiple heroes that like to build Yules. Ember Spirit, fantastic, slight chains. Bane, not too bad if you manage to catch him, but in general, Bulldoze makes his life pretty hard. Um, the Medusa, her only real uh, thing she has to be worried of is like this relocate from the troll and like a storm jumping her. Right. You are concerned about you know Chalice uh, potentially picking up an MK or sorry uh, a Diffusal Blade and just burning down her mana, or uh, them only having Shining as a, a person who's able to pick up a Heaven Talbert. I have a number of concerns this game. I mean, Medusa is very good against the Troll Warlord. Uh, he's just forced to fight right into that Stone Gaze. But if you end up shutting down her game, which I feel like you fair, can do uh, fairly easily with this global gank potential of the Io, the Storm Spirit, and the Spirit Breaker then our game is just ruined and uh, RNG are going to pop off. But who might have disagree with our draft masters? I don't like it when you hit me with all these really good points, Nev. <laughs> 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 Makes my life very hard. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I do agree, though, 100%. I mean, the RNG has a lot of playmaking potential. Phoenix, um, we'll see if they can handle, uh, handle the side of RNG. Uh, one thing they did point out that I did like is the fact that last time they played the troll, it was the perfect troll game. And, and that's why it felt so strong. So maybe they're kind of a little overconfident on the hero right now, but we'll see. Uh, God King, obviously, uh, would love to have another solid performance here in the series. Yeah, if there's a time to be overconfident, though. It's definitely coming out of your last, uh, the game that you just played yesterday with the triple rampage. Yeah, that'll, that'll boost anyone's confidence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, poor B-Cop, by the way. <laughs> Why is that? Did you not hear what they were talking about on the panel? Uh, no, wait, wait, I missed it. What? Oh, uh, man's never gotten a rampage in his life. What? Yeah, we'll have to set him up for success here. Uh, it's, he plays Ancient Apparition. He's he's there to build people up, not take the glory well, we for himself. We have to build you know? our fellow caster up uh, probably after we're done today. We'll All right. get that man a rampage. Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> queue up some pubs, make sure it happens. All right. Okay, so mid lane matchup. Uh, Storm Spirit does do reasonably well against the Ember Spirit. One of the few heroes that can actually break the uh, the Flame Guard with level one. But Zone keeping his distance away from uh, Somnus here, so he's not able to uh, break that level one Flame Guard. It gets uh, easier for the Ember, right? Though once you get levels like three and four, every time I've seen Ember, usually starts winning this lane. Not that much easier though. I mean, if you go one 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 build on the Storm Spirit, you do have that kill potential on the Ember Spirit. Uh, not to mention the fact that Storm Spirit has a lot of base armor and decent agility growth rate, so you can't whittle him down as well with his sleight of fist as you can some other heroes. You're right. I, I keep forgetting that hero just has like five base armor for yeah. some reason. That just makes total sense. Always <laughs> has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you'll probably go the Orb of Corrosion, sleight of fist build. Um, this game, like he'll probably just max that out. I'm curious if he wants to pick up a Yules. Um, like to deal with like potential early orchid as well as the spirit breaker it's it's you know not a build we see all that often out of the ember spirit but this is a game where the utility from it might be actually pretty good yeah the yules for the spirit breaker the yules for getting with the orchid uh, even controlling up the troll warlord because yeah yule scepter is something that isn't affected by status resistance so even if he ends up getting a sanjin yasha or a titan sliver Ooh. Ooh. bane first blood in the top lane chalice and felix are actually doing a lot of damage here to m77 maybe uh had the tank, uh, tank one for the boss here. Yeah. 
At the, I think it was only level one in the Medusa uh, when went down there on the Bane, so no points in that uh, mana shield just yet. It means it you know, melt fairly quickly. She does have it now, though. She's hit level two. But that's the issue. You go level one in order to secure yourself some CS and harass the enemies. You're very susceptible yeah. to just getting killed as Medusa's got incredibly low base HP. Rightfully so. That hero has uh, way too much survivability otherwise. Yeah. yeah. It should be some punish at the start of the game. All three lanes, though, going very uh, much in favor of RNG at the moment. The Ember Spirit doing okay mid, but Storm's got a pretty sizable CS advantage. Yeah, and that's to be expected. You've just got better tools uh, for playing close to the lane for uh, yeah. securing yourself CS. Yeah, Static Roman is one of the best tools in the game, unless you're playing against something like an Invoker that we saw the other day. Just able to burn down his mana, he's going to do just fine. Mm -hmm. well, and he'll continue to, to do so. Zone, again, is struggling to stick any of this damage onto Somnus here, so I mentioned Somnus is going to have a pretty good game. And uh, yeah. Ember Spirit might unfortunately be forced to retreat into the jungle. He doesn't have the Orb of Corrosion queued up next. He's got himself his uh, Magic Stick. Probably get a Wand here. Uh, that way he's able to stand his ground. If the Storm Spirit over commits and heal back up, you can find a kill onto him. Uh, Troll actually finished a Wraith Band. Is that a... F uh, I just never see this item anymore. Sometimes I forget it even, even in Dota, to be honest. Yeah, me too. I mean, you build it every so often against, like, a Slardar. Yeah. Uh, somebody who has huge amounts of physical damage. Uh, and it, like, again, doesn't necessarily even need to be on ranged tiers when you build it. Yeah, it's very interesting. Shining. Unless he gets bashed here. Oh, oh there we go. Nice yeah. curse. Very cool. But they built it, uh, like, against a uh, lane that's mostly doing magical damage. The Dark Willow and the, uh, yeah. the Death Prophet. That's strange. It is very strange. Top lane, M77 falling low here. Does have that stick, though, so should be fine. No too, not too much aggression coming out, and uh, we'll get salved up, rejoining the lane in just a moment. That's going to be the Urn pickup for the Dark Willow, and Urn is one of those items where if you manage to find an early kill, it kind of snowballs a lane pretty heavily. Like, a lot of heroes can't contest with this, like, five-minute Urn coming out and getting those two charges. My question is, if it's too bold, I mean, you got the kill under RNG's belt right now. You're certain that you're going to be finding kills if you go over this early Urn. Otherwise, it feels like a bit of a wasted pickup. <sighs> it's not as... well. Mid lane, zone, taking a lot of damage, having committed the Slide of Fist already, so unable to dodge some of this out. And Out of bottle charges, does have his boots now, though. Somnus is going to put the pressure on here. Yeah, very smart. But yeah, all this base armor on the Storm Spirit, 7 right now at level 5, so a Slide of Fist just ain't sticking like it should be. Ooh, nice forward on the wave, and it's going to give Zone a little bit of time as YP rotates mid. Somnus gets level 6 on the wave, so will dodge this out. Really well calculated, but Zone... Does he have the catch? Does he have Searing Chains? Oh, he catches a Bramble! Zone should be able to find the kill. What? Oh, no, no, oh, no. We missed it. A little bit confused on what just happened, but we saw the first blood there, <laughs> I think. Uh, that was uh, the first blood happening, the hammer being brought down on the Storm Spear. We saw the boxing gloves come out. Wait. Yeah, he got the last... Uh, Right click in, and then he was holding his sleight of fist, and that was what ended up finishing off the Storm Spirit there. It happened uh, off screen. Yeah, we're also, I mean, are you here in the game right now? There, there we go. Okay. Yeah, we got it now. So they also managed to find two kills top lane in the process uh, as well. So the Medusa ends up getting dove there, it seemed, by Chalice. Um, didn't really catch that one. But yeah, first blood going to the Ember mid, that's huge. Big rotation in from the uh, Dark Willow. Yeah. Shining, Shining, taking a lot of damage. Bottom, Bash. No way, he gets bashed again. All right. No, he's going to be just fine. Uh, that's an issue with the Spirit Break. You know, he's such a tanky hero, so Shining is able to heal up uh, quite a bit off of you as you try to go in on him. If you get yeah. first him down with that initial charge, you're going to have a bad time. But uh, yeah, that was huge. It was such a well calculated play by uh, Somnus, though. He clears up the creep wave, realizes he's going to be able to get level six from this one. The and fort, then vulnerable during the stun. Yeah, wow. The M77 is just dead. Go yeah. under the tower, falls to the urn. Okay, we were talking about urn in the other lane, but uh, Pango picked one up himself. Orb of Corrosion plus the overcharge, like double. Both of these heroes are level 5. Like, they do a lot of damage. Pango doesn't actually have the uh, Diffusal Blade queued up. He's just going straight into the Spirit Vessel. I thought that the uh, Diffusal Blade might be a decent pickup when you're playing against the Ember and the Medusa. But it's pretty far out of your way and doesn't grant as much utility as other things. So he's trusting his team to be able to do enough damage to take this Medusa down as the game goes on. And 
I guess he does have to be a little bit more of a frontliner and an initiator if he's got a Storm Spirit in the mid lane. Spear Vessel is like honestly not like a bad item against the Medusa still though until she has like Manta right because yeah. it, it it is gonna burn through her mana um, pretty well. Pretty quick. Yeah. yeah, it does percentage uh, like current HP percentage based damage. So if you're sitting at uh, pretty high HP, it'll chunk you down. It'll you'll lose a lot of mana pretty quickly. Chalice with the Rolling Thunder gonna find M77 here once again. There's a charge coming through. Chalice might find himself the third kill onto this Medusa. They are hemorrhaging heavy in this top lane, and RNG off to a fantastic start now. Yeah. And Fortify on cooldown means they're going to be able to take this top tier one uh, fairly easily. I don't think they realize Bane's up here. He's hoping they don't realize he's up here. Guys, let me live, please. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't know. Four and zero. Pango, all of the kills on the side of RNG at this point. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, uh, trying to cut the wave here and uh, get the creeps on top of the tower on the Ember Spirit. Oh, using the illusions uh, to do that. So he does end up clearing it out, but Spirit Breaker now back in the mid lane, and he's going to be able to soak up a little bit of XP. He needs to get that level six, uh, you know, with the, at that 10 minute mark, maybe alongside the tome. Right now, him and Io kind of lacking on levels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look back up here in the top lane. Chalice playing very far forward. They want to be able to dive this Medusa, but they've got a fortify available on the side of Phoenix. If they They're dive do this it. tier two tower. In the tower flacket, the entire uh, diving team is just going to melt. I mean, they're just so under leveled out of this top lane. And uh, Zone actually going to find God King here on the Troll Warlord. Does not have that battle trans, and easy kill for him. Nova going to have to get out, I'm sure, is uh, getting chased here by the Emperor Spirit. YP, though, going to meet Chalice in the river, trying to get pushed up onto the high ground. Chalice, though, stuck in the corner. YP. Yeah, he gets pushed up with the urn. No swash but a shield crash in one will be able to finish the kill. Nicely done there by the Pangolier. But uh, Zone did manage to get himself a double kill. Mm -hmm. A nice play there by him. And uh, yeah, there was a, a cheeky play there by the Dark Willow. She's hugging the wall, she's trying to get the, uh, the, the Pango to force yeah. him up. And he did in the end, but uh, with shield crash coming off a of cooldown, he manages to finish him off before the urn can heal enough and does go down. But. Now looking to make a play of the realm, punish this Ember Spirit is, uh, after his double kill, or smoked up. They're looking at Death Prophet bottom, actually, I yeah. think. And yeah, they... they're pinging her out, and Death Prophet, I mean... Oh, no, no. Having a decent start to the game, cannot afford to go down right now, Can't and Shining, it. he's going to show for just a second, and that's all they need. The charge coming through, in comes the Storm Spirit as well. More than enough damage here at Death Prophet. Goodbye. Yeah. Nice try. You show yourself for half a second. It's all the Spirit Breaker needs. That and the Storm Spirit uh, coming in on you. Ooh. WWE's troll. not level six yet, so. Unfortunate. You don't have that Fiend's Grip. How close is he? All right. No. It, it's thought... not the 10 minute mark yet. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I was thinking, like, once in a while you can make these plays happen, then you get XP at the 10 minute mark. Chalice gets a swashbuckle out. Rolling Thunder coming through. Somnus goes in, finds the Bane. They'll take down there first. The question is can they get more? There's a DD on zone, though. Yeah, Gotta be a careful. little bit careful here. Chalice goes for the TP home <laughs> after seeing it, so he's gonna be Ooh. just fine. They might have been able to interrupt that with like a really well timed bramble. Is uh yeah. Long Thunder ended at the same time this TP went off. But yeah, they don't want to fight into the DD rune on the zone. I actually think that Arcane Rune is uh, scarier in the early game on the Ember Spirit, just because uh, you get all that bonus damage from Slight of Fist, and if you're using it faster, uh, ends up uh, being a little bit more your early damage and scale that well with the double damage and compared to how much like the mana cost and cooldown reduction is on the sleight of fist yeah but still kind of scary mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well death prophet did pick up the hood of defiance which is uh, pretty standard going in for the yules and like we were talking about we're probably gonna see multiple yules built this game on the side of phoenix it is probably the best game for a yule scepter we've seen so far like yeah. there's a, a lot of utility you get out of it um to countering out these heroes on rng so yeah. We'll let's make a, let's make a list real quick for everybody. Uh, Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker stops his charge, uh, dispels his uh, empowering case. Bulldoze. Yes, bulldoze. <laughs> the correct. Empowering case has not existed for some time. <laughs> yes, that is. Uh, <laughs> no, we're not in 2017 anymore, buddy. Uh, yeah, the that's it. That's the whole list. Now we're just gonna. Oh, no, uh, no, just kidding. Uh, uh, Troll Warlord uh, goes through stashes and keeps him in the air for uh, two and a half seconds. Oh God, X Nova, long way from home, and he ends up going down. I mean, that was a nice uh, rotation from Phoenix into the mid lane. They see them show bottom, right, going for that kill. Mm -hmm. And so they just grab themselves a return kill mid onto the Spirit Breaker. Yeah. Well played. Yeah. 
you went out of your way for the Orb of Corrosion on the Ember Spirit. It has uh, netted you a couple of kills, uh, and it's good that you found these early kills. The hero doesn't farm very fast until he gets his Maelstrom, and that's where we see a lot of Embers come apart, is if uh, they have a pretty rough early game, they never really come back online, but he's on his way to his Maelstrom now. As long as he completes it in the next, like, uh, I don't know, three, four minutes here, I think he'll be fine. Bane, bottom lane with Shining, is going to find the IO. Obviously, they're looking for that Storm to get that Fiend's Grip target, but they'll settle for uh, Felix. Not a bad find. Lights out. Mm. Still, not what they wanted, and you did get a lot of information out of that one. I think Amazing giving up the IO isn't so bad, but when they're up, uh, what, 2k net worth here at 12 minutes in the game, you're happy to take what you can get. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're uh, actually not too far ahead in net worth. It's starting to even out a little bit, but... Uh, the big problem is your Medusa hasn't really had the space to kind of catch up to this Troll Warlord. I mean, she is about a thousand net worth behind. And uh, I'm curious, Troll, if he's going to go like the Battle Fury, if we're going to see like the Maelstrom build. I think we saw Battle Fury before, didn't we? Is that what yeah, we, we saw the Battle Fury last time. Uh, just so we could scale the late game as best as possible, but it ends up getting absolutely... He got uh, destroyed that game, didn't he? No, no, no. Then he, uh, he crushed the, the... It was like a perfect Troll game, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Chalice in the mid lane with the Rolling Thunder. going to come through. We find Shining, and he's got that Spirit Vessel as well. He needs help. Fiend's Grip right away, but going to be canceled by Somnus. So Bane might give up his own life here. Shining, though, with this Exorcism, healing off a pretty good amount of this damage, and Somnus going to be forced to leave. The question is, can they find any other kills here? A one-for-one one trade as they defend the mid tower. Not a bad uh, not a bad hold from Phoenix. Yeah, considering they're behind like this, uh the fact they held here is a pretty big deal for them. It's unfortunate that you uh, forced to commit that Fiend's Grip onto a Chalice, but it stopped the initiation in their tracks there. 77, he could be in trouble. Uh, he is indeed. He's going to pop that uh, Stone Gaze, but team relatively close by, so <laughs> should be okay. Yeah. He's going to be just fine on M77. Needs to heal back up. Hopefully someone provide him a little bit of mana in a moment. Does he have mana bits in the Bane? Is under attack. I'm not sure. I don't think so. He's getting charged, though. Uh, Storm's going to find an Arcane Rune. Pretty big pickup there. Yep. Hopefully he can set something up with this in a, a moment, but he wants to finish this Orchid first as, uh, you know, he's sitting less than 400 gold away from it. Once he's got this one done, it becomes so much easier to jump the back lines. The Bane is going to be his primary target. Uh, this is, you know, one of the main reasons we see Storm's get picked up is to jump the back line, the Bane in particular. And even if you get a BKB, it doesn't deal with him. He's just able to fiend grip you uh, as you try to zip into these team fights. So you always need to be going on him. So in on Somnus, uh, once he's got the Orc, he'll probably go BKB as a secondary item. So he doesn't have to you know, deal with the Silence and the Death Prophet or any of this control on the Dark Willow and uh, burst down this Bane. Yeah, well, uh, I believe Pango will be able to deal with... Well, Pango and uh, the Spirit Break will be able to deal with everyone else. And you are correct, it ended up being a Battle Fury build. He's got the BKB queued up next as well. So a lot of faith being uh, put into Somnus, being able to jump the back line. But Somnus has had an amazing uh, tournament season so far. Yeah, he's really been one of the uh, all-stars so far in the CNDPC, almost every single game. Um, but God King, yeah, going for the Battle Fury build, it's something that he definitely likes, and it worked out really well in the previous series, so not that surprised he goes back for it. M77 just trying to farm up on the Medusa, get towards that Manta style, and she's definitely going to need it once this Orchid comes out. I'm surprised that I didn't see her uh, go for the Dragon Lance this game. That's a bit bizarre. She yeah. had picked up an almost every single uh, agility range carry. I would say a lot of that's probably due to the fourth four deaths in the lane stage. <laughs> you feel like it's too far out of your way at that yeah, point. You can't I, really afford to go like the bands of elf skin up into it. Yeah, I think you just are too far away from getting it. LWW, he's going to find the Pangolier who's scouting him in the trees. In comes the Fiend's Grip, and this is a nice pick off his Chalice. Pretty valuable 509 gold over to the Dusa. That puts you right in range of that Manta style now. Yeah, you had to commit the Fiend's Grip there before we got the Rolling Thunder off. That was a very valuable find. Yeah. He's in a he's in no man's land, too. There is no way anyone from RNG is going to get there outside of a relocate. Yeah, and you don't relocate it to that, unfortunately, yeah. the Fiend's Grip. There was just uh, no way to defend from that one. It would have came in a little bit too late, then Io potentially goes down afterwards. Yeah. Still sitting on the Exorcism there. On top uh, lane? Medusa. Sorry, on the Death Prophet. All right, they're just going to defend the tower here. Uh, they're pinging it like they want to commit, but Shining does have that exorcism. Still a little bit under-farmed here on the DP, though. It's pretty far away from this Yule's. Yep. Uh, 17 minutes in, just the Hood of Defiance, double null, and uh, Voidstone is 
definitely behind where you want to be. So Yule Scepter is very important, and they now have one way to deal with the Silence coming in from Somnus. The Manta style just was completed on the Medusa, but uh, no Yules on the Ember Spirit or the DP yet means I think they're going to want to try to stall this out a little bit, but Troll Warlord's out farming you while you stall. Yeah, I actually love the BKB pickup, or that Somnus is going for. It is such a value game uh, to just have a BKB. The only real thing you have to worry about is Fiend's Grip, and you can still get Reload out. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, a lot of utility from the BKB this game. Once Storm has it, his game becomes a lot more free. Yep. Band Brace now found on the Medusa. Nice item. Very, Very cool. good item, yeah. If you were to see uh, Ring of Aquila, then you can pass the Band Brace over to like the Death Prophet or uh, the Ember Spirit, but what can you do? A Grove Bell? That would have been nice to find on the Medusa, but Storm's been... <laughs> cool that. Yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of items, or a lot of heroes that don't mind the Grove Bell. Who would you like to see it on? I mean, this game, at the moment, it's probably best on... Uh, honestly, this is actually... Yeah, I'd probably avoid it if you can find almost any other Tier 2 item on these heroes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not bad on Storm. It amplifies his damage quite a bit because, uh, you know... It's like a mini Veil. Yeah, it's like a mini Veil. The extra spell amp really does... Oh, Feed Grip! They caught the troll! Does he have the stick charges? Doesn't even matter. They just blow him up so fast. Beautiful rotation in the jungle there from Phoenix. Yeah, double damage rune there on uh, zone. Definitely help with that one, but they commit absolutely everything onto him. He is worth a lot of money sitting at the top of the net worth, and with that, they're going to try to set up in the mid lane. Yeah, I mean, that's so important of a pickoff, and uh, I think they're going to be able to chip down this tower. Shining still with a little bit of time on the exorcism. Fortification finally going to get popped here. It's only level one exorcism. Yeah, Rolling Thunder. They go in the blink reveal there from Chalice. Gonna do work. It's the charge on the backside. It will get interrupted thanks to the Bramble. Nether Strike catches the Bane. LWW first to fall. Shining healed up thanks to those spirits returning. But can he actually make it out of this fight? Not at all. Chalice grabs him for the beautiful swashbuckle. But Somnus looking to go in for more. He has this Arcane Rune baby rooted up in place. Can they bring down the Storm Spirit? No, he gets a stick. He's back out. No problem at all. Child's reinitiation with this shield crash, and it's must. It's just another window for Somnus to look for more. In comes God King as well. It's a five man wipe. RNG. Clean up big. God King getting his revenge as he comes back into the one, but absolutely huge Arcane Rune there on the Storm Spirit, putting in work. Massive initiation there by them, and did an amazing job of controlling up that Death Prophet there on the Storm Spirit. Helped the uh, the Orchid until he came back down from the Yule so he could silence him, and he couldn't stand his ground and heal back up as they went on him. So, Somnus with the patience there, knowing exactly what needs to happen in the team fight. And you know, Dark Willow did an amazing job of stopping that Spirit Breaker initiation with a very well placed Brambles that came out super quickly, but it didn't end up being enough for this Arcane uh, Rune Storm Spirit. So Storm Spirit, after that fight, decides, yeah, forget BKB, maybe? I'm going to go Sanj and Kaya. That's overconfidence if I've ever seen it. Uh, but maybe he feels like he wants to initiate onto different targets other than the Bane. I mean, that's part of the issue that I was talking about earlier. It needs to be Somnus that takes care of this. He's essentially saying, all right, I got a little bit of room for error in these fights. If uh, I don't jump the Bane and he fiends grip with me, at least I'm going to come out of it slightly quicker. Storm with another rune. This time Invis not as uh, powerful, but X Nova gonna find a kill here onto the Bane. More going the way of Somnus. Yeah, there's your Grove Bow on the Medusa. Ooh, Dark Willow makes it out just in time. Very close. Yeah. Yeah, Grove Bow for Medusa. You're pretty happy about that one. He's now working on the Eye of Scotty. I mean, this is a big one against. Uh, a number of these heroes, if you can reduce the healing that Io is providing, you can slow down the Troll Warlord in these team fights. you're doing great, but again, falling pretty far behind this Troll Warlord, and you're now sitting 2k net worth uh, back on him. I mean, RNG even Chalice, like, right? Like, you're falling very far behind Chalice as well. Like, he is this offlane Pango who is super farmed, and Pangolier, when he finds this type of farm, is a very scary late-game hero. Mm-hmm. I mean, still looking rough for Phoenix right now. This is the result a lot of people uh, probably expected, the RNG-Phoenix matchup, but uh, not out of it yet. They've still got all the Tier 2 towers standing. And if you draw this out to the Ultra Late game, I do think that you have the advantage. Troll Warlord, he can become uh, pretty easy to kite as the game goes on, and you know, Medusa, Death Prophet, Ember Spirit all become very scary. I think Death Prophet specifically, right? Like, you'll have, like, Aeon Disc, BKB, like a Refresher, and tons of armor. She just gets like to be this uh, uncontrollable hero, but I mean, looking at her net worth right now, she's struggling so much. Yeah. Right, goes with the Searing Chain duration. 
on uh, the Ember Spit. I think realizes that uh, they're going to be playing on the defensive here rather than going for that uh, bonus damage on the Flame Guard. Realizes he isn't able to stand his ground against any of the heroes this game. I mean, Searing Chain's duration is just such a sick talent. It really is. Like, it's great against the Pangolier, who wants to be able to pop that Rolling Thunder. It's great at holding the Troll Warlord in place if he pops his ult. So there's there's a lot of utility. Yeah. And Are Somnus you... hasn't, isn't going for a BKB yet. Oh, yeah. M77 found mid. Does have a Manta style, but in some trouble. Needs help. His Mana Pool just gone as they control up the Bane on the backside with the Rolling Thunder as well. Shining outside the base, surrounded by the side of RNG. They take down two big kills behind this Tier 2 tower. El WW hesitated for half a second there before dropping the Nightmare on the Medusa. And then as soon as he was in the cast animation for it, boom, Pangalier Blink Dagger on top of him, interrupts at the middle of it, and they lose that two heroes there. Yeah. I mean, that's your only real save, right? To give Medusa that slight window for the Manta into that uh, Stone Gaze. But I think even then, it would have been very difficult as they were all, I mean, she was out of all of her mana pretty much, so. Yeah. Very well played by RNG, a great find, and Somnus finds himself... I mean, I think Somnus has gotten the last six runes, to be honest. Uh, they had one on the Ember Spirit recently. They got a double damage on him uh, when they ganked mid, uh, yeah. the, diving the tier one there. But other than that, you know, Arcanian's double damages. The storm is pretty scary here. You don't want to dive just yet. Uh, Bane is sitting far back uh, behind his teammates. Unless you got vision of him, the Storm Spirit could potentially still uh, be punished. But he's got the Aegis for another minute and 20 seconds. He might look to use this. Thinking about going in, maybe? No, they're going to not bother chasing the Storm there. Very scary. And there it is. Yeah, the Yules like we were talking about on zone. Uh, in, in general, like... It's just, yeah, three Yule Scepters on the side of Phoenix. It is the best Yules game we have seen, so not all that surprising. Yeah. And of course, Manta Style on uh, M77, so he's able to get out of some of these uh, these debuffs. You know, so. deal with the, what, the, the mischance from the Troll Warlord, uh, the Spirit Fest all coming out from the Pango. The Disarm for the Pango as well, Manta Style will dispel that one. Yeah. You know, Heaven's Halberd won't. Charge bottom. They're going to connect onto the Ember Spirit. Smoke giving him a bunch of extra move speed. Into the trees he goes, and he's caught for the moment. Does have a Yules, but never gets a chance to use it. Beautiful find there by X Novas. They're also going to find the Bane. Somnus turning heroes into dust at this point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Troll Warlord going for the Sanja and Yasha now. I mean, this is a. Uh, Sanja is something like optimal that you build against the Bane. I figured he would do this. And that's what makes the Yule Scepter so useful. The fact that you can kite out his ultimate, kite out this Troll Warlord, and the uh, status just doesn't affect it. But I'm not sure that. Even with like the perfect itemization here, even with the, how useful the Yule Scepter is this game, it has become fairly one sided. 18 to 9 right now, 14k net worth advantage here, 24 minutes. And. Just a couple minutes ago, they had all their tier two towers still standing. Now the entire map belongs to RNG. Yeah. And they're looking to keep up this aggression. Uh, just bought the smoke there on the Spear Breaker. They, they may wait for Roshan before they continue to push, but I feel like it's something they don't even need. We've got the BKB just picked up on the Storm Spirit as well, so that is just another uh, tool in uh, RNG's belt. And honestly, I don't know how you kill Somnus anymore. Yeah, he needs to oh, go. They jump in, they find Bane once again. The Terrorize comes through, does connect. They might get the storm. He doesn't pop the BKB in time, and X Nova it. ran down as well. Chalice in some trouble. This is three huge kills, and they've controlled the Troll Warlord off onto the side. The Yule Scepter's doing work, but he's going to get relocated out. So uh, We need to talk about you caster cursing people, Ricky. <laughs> this is a serious discussion I need to have with you. <laughs> The BKB not quite flown out to the Storm Spirit. It was on his carrier, and it was uh, maybe half a second from delivering it when he went down there. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna plead the fifth on this one. Yeah. This one's not my fault. <laughs> this is <laughs> a massive XP swing there, as you can see, seven thousand for the side of Phoenix, and very much needed. Is huge control there by Dark Willow getting the yeah. brambles off, and the finally the silence coming in onto the Storm Spirit that uh, Sanj Kaya on the Storm didn't end up providing with him enough status just to get out of that. So maybe he was regretting not picking up the BKB first there, but that swing very much what they need, not just to uh, you know get it back into the game XP-wise, but more map control. Finally, they're able to uh, move back into the triangle, move back into their jungle, and if they can keep this up for another minute, they'll be able to grab tier three neutral items. I was concerned about them being boxed into their base, not having the tier threes, and having to fight against the Aegis, too. Well, they don't stop. They find YP bottom, and uh, <laughs> goodbye squashed <laughs> there by a roly-poly. That's gotta hurt. 
I thought maybe he'd be fine, you know, he'd just TP out, but uh, <laughs> Bango had that one under control. Basher now being worked on by uh, Troll Warlord, God King, win experience here. Just needs another 400 gold. Huh? God King? Uh, he's alright, he's alright. Yeah, they don't know where the rest of the team is. They have like a general idea, but I don't think uh, LWW wanted to move forward and commit. Either that or they figured they wouldn't have enough damage to be able to finish him off. People just weren't in position. I mean, he's got the Sanj and Yasha and a BKB. If you're not able to finish him off with that single screen script, then he turns around and kills the rest of your team. They should get the D ward here in this triangle on the side of RNG. I mean, they know there's going to be a high ground ward up there, but they also have two very good wards placed themselves. You know, one on the far side in the lane and then one on the uh, opposing high ground. So it's it's really difficult for uh, Phoenix to approach this, uh, approach this spot of the map. Yeah. I'm going to be too surprised if... Oh. All right, never mind, they're fine. I wouldn't be too surprised if uh, they build a gem on RNG just to be able to deward everything on the map as they control it. Oh, they're looking for Bane Bottom. He walks right inside a ward vision. Rolling Thunder does come through, but they don't actually have the detection quite yet. They could go for a Fiend. No, group. Chalice! Oh, yep, there it is. The Fiend's grip right onto Chalice. In comes the Storm Spirit trying to interrupt it. They do manage to find the kill, but the Terrorize on top of two. Troll Warlord pops the BKB, laying into Shiny, but he pops his own, trying to cut him out, but he gets bashed up by the Troll. Yule's gonna buy him a little bit of space. Can they actually keep Shining alive? The Cleave will take down the Dark Willow, but you're way too far forward. God King goes down. Next Nova hits him with that Nether Strike, throwing Shining back, but Zone claims a second, able to disengage here on the Pangolier, but two for two, they get the buyback on the Willow, but you lost God King. Definitely a fight worth it for uh, Phoenix, going a little bit too far forward and just trying to pop that ultimate so you can lay as much damage to this enemy team as you can, but not so easy to do that. Yule Scepter coming in clutch, forcing the Troll Warlord to change targets, and of course the Mantis style getting Medusa away from that Troll Warlord after uh, getting netted. And we got a lot of damage in these fights. It was just Troll laying into them. And yeah, I did 6k hero damage, but uh, against a Medusa, it didn't end up being near enough. He cleaved off a Medusa to kill the Dark Willow behind him, which was kind of funny. It was a little bit yeah. unintentional. He was just trying to burn through the hero. But at that point, he was super far alone. Like, Chalice had almost nothing left. They had spent all their spells. Um, I mean, unfortunate spot there for Chalice to get stuck playing ping pong in the corner. But... Uh, yeah, Fiend's got pretty good against the Pango. Uh, pretty good against uh, a lot of these heroes. Storm coming in to save him. Uh, well, attempting to come in to save him, but put himself out of position as well. So, very awkward engagement there. And that, that BKB on uh, the Death Prophet here was really important. And that's going to be an Aghanim Scepter pickup for the Ember Spirit as well. So, pretty dang strong. LWW here hiding next to... Uh, I'm concerned that the Agnum Scepter doesn't change much. I mean, it's great for catching heroes out and forcing fights, but when they're stuck into their base like this, maybe it makes it easier for you to uh, just, like, move around the map and uh, cut waves or something. Cut waves. Keep it's, shoved in. But. It's pretty good at dealing with the IO, because he really wants to find it. They do know that this Roche is happening. They saw the storm zip right on in. They smoke right away, but this is falling fast. They gotta get into the pit. The Ember Spirit throws the uh, Illusion, or the Remnant, but they don't make it in time, and yeah, they will grab themselves a second Roche, goes the way of God King. Now he can get away with a dive like that again. Yep. And he finds himself a, both a Paladin Sword and a Titan Sliver. What more could you ask for? He'll just take the Titan Sliver, I'm sure, right? Uh, Paladin Sword to Felix. Yeah, looks like it. it does, of course, uh, amplify the healing that uh, the IO provides. I think he teleported it back to base instead of handing it off to him, though. Yeah, it happens, you know. He's got to do, he's, he, he makes his support to do the I heavy lifting. I get so angry when that happens. <laughs> oh, do you want this? Yeah, do, do it yourself. Yeah. Now, M77 did find a Mindbreaker, though, so for Medusa, a very solid item. Elven Tunic, though, ooh, ooh that's a good one. Yeah. You don't have MKB um, or anything like that on the Troll Warlord. I think the Storm Spirit will probably upgrade to a Bloodthorn pretty quickly for M77. If he's like, you can see him building his Butterfly right now. He's got the Eagle Song. He's got the Evasion Talent. He's got the Elven Tunic now. Uh, That'll definitely allow him to stand his ground against uh, the Troll Warlord, so you want to be able to prevent that. Do you think after the uh, Butterfly, this Medusa just goes for like a BKB, though? Mm. Or is it just not worth it? Do you just like tank up uh, like with Daedalus Satanic or, or Silver something? Edge, yeah. maybe. I mean, he's got uh, the Chrysalis. It's, Chrysalis is like one of the most efficient like damage per gold items in the game. Uh, Daedalus is like obviously very good, but with how cheap Chrysalis is to complete, it can really help your damage output. Yeah. So I think you go back and complete it after you get the Butterfly for the extra survivability. Uh, the Daedalus or the Silver Edge upgrade. Yeah. Um, it'll probably be the Daedalus on a, a hero like Medusa, but 
you know, every so often right now we have seen people just build Silver Edge because it's good. Yeah, it is. It was pretty good. Pretty good item. But uh, RNG seeming to be a little bit less confident than they were uh, a few oh. minutes ago. It is now 22 to 14, a 15k gold lead. They do have this Aegis, so. For three minutes. Yeah. Probably going to want to push this lane in a little bit more. and uh, Not yet. We're oh, waiting oh. 100 gold. Phoenix just smoke up themselves. They want to take the fight to RNG. They don't really have vision up on the high ground, though. That will help a little bit. And they, they will see, see the God King on the troll. That is a fantastic start. They also saw a Spirit Breaker for a moment. Yeah, they don't see anyone else on the team. As soon as somebody shows the lane, they'll come They see Pango. That's the kill. Chalice fiends grips as he goes right up onto the high ground for vision. Gonna regret it. And now X Nova on the run pops that bulldoze. Should be fine. Yep. Ember Spread slightly off the mark with the direction that he thought X Nova would retreat. So he's forced to, to play a little bit further back. You don't want to waste too many of your remnants chasing X Nova here. The He's classic, uh, oh, I'm just going to check this high ground. <laughs> 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 Insert, like, solid snake question mark or exclamation point mm -hmm. noise. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I thought they'd be able to commit onto the troll, but uh, they didn't know where the rest of the heroes were. Maybe if they showed something in the top lane, they might try to grab troll and uh, stop his ages, but the pango just looked like such an easier kill, so they went for that and, you know, could have just backed up afterwards. It's a big part of the fight too. I mean, worst the 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 one of the worst case scenarios there is they get trolls Aegis and then they just get like zipped on, relocated, charged, and pain goes rolling thunder. Right? They have a lot of follow up mm -hmm. to that uh, reincarnation timer. So finding Pango ended up being probably just the safer play, like you were saying, and just value pick off for sure. Yeah, you ended up being correct by the way. The Medusa uh, does have a BKB queued up after she's not completing that Daedalus. I, I like it. I, I think this game you just. If you die on Medusa, this game it might just be over. Yep. So it, it makes sense. Like, she just wants to be able to survive in these fights, not have to deal with Rolling Thunder, constantly stunning her. The disarms as well from Pango are super annoying. And Somnus has an Aghanim Scepter. So we now have the AoE Vortex, which is a super scary ability. Yep. In these team fights, pulling everyone together, make it easier for a Spirit Breaker to get that multi man stun off as he uh, comes in or, you know, reinitiates into the fight. Pango will be able to get uh, people with his Rolling Thunder. Uh, you'll be cleaving everyone down with uh, the Troll Warlord as well. Before, they've had no reason not to group up now. The Storm Spirit is something to be very afraid of. And speaking of the Troll, like you were talking about, he uh, finished up the Abyssal and now has the MKB queued up. So it's going to be your uh, yeah. evasion answer for this Medusa eventually. But uh, still decently far off. This might end up just being like a farming Aegis because they, uh, it, it's a scary team to push into, Phoenix, right now. Yeah. Ember Spirit is able to cleave you down from uh, sitting on high ground. Uh, you can turn fights pretty... It's hard to like jump on the bane or need the tier 4 towers. The Medusa is so good at standing in front of the rest of her team. So controlling the map is uh, definitely the play here for RNG. This next uh, Roshan is going to be very scary. It'll be number 3. Yeah, whether or not that comes with a free Ags or a refresher, I mean, in my opinion, the Ags is always like the better of the option usually because people, a lot of people end up buying refresher, but... I mean, the refresher is going to be pretty good on Storm, but that double uh, double AoE pull is huge. Yeah, well, it's also really good on Troll too, right? Like having double Battle Trance and double BKB and stuff like that. Yep. Ooh, there's the Ags and the Pango. So I was wondering if he was going to go for this build because you are against a Medusa. And it's really value against Medusa. It's also going to give him a lot more farming potential. Yeah, Bloodthorn done on Storm Spirit. So, is your another answer to the evasion? Yeah, it just feels like RNG picking up all the items that they need to try and close this game out. And like we said, a little bit of a farming Aegis is it does expire. Mm. Good point. And now going for the Diffusal Blade on Pangolier. It took him uh, 35 minutes to get here, but... Oh, X Nova, bottom. No way. Okay, he gets him with another slide of fist. I mean, the dude's fast. He's a he's a fast space cow. Bottom lane, though, looks like they're going to try and punish this. They're going to look for LWW in the trees. They've got the dust, though. Easy pick off there for God King and Somnus. They do manage to get out on the Ember, though. Yeah. The trade, I think, definitely worth it. Uh, being able to trade the Spear Breaker for that uh, Bane is no, SP actually worth a decent chunk of gold. Winning at uh, 8,200 net worth. This does delay their push, but they're not too concerned about pushing at the moment on RNG. I think they definitely are waiting for this next uh, Roshan, number three, with the Refresher Shard or uh, the Aghanim Scepter and the Cheese. That plus they're so close to that uh, MKB, right, for mm -hmm. the troll. Like, that is a very big, important item for them. The BKB finished up on M77, now going for, like you said, the Daedalus. Yep. Um, so a lot more damage, especially once it gets to the level 25. That talent will be really strong. Yeah. 
this Medusa might be too much to deal with. As this goes into the ultra late game, I did favor Phoenix, and it's very clear RNG, they're feeling a little bit of the pressure here with the Diffusal Blade being worked on in the Pangalier. They started to work on serious solutions to Medusa. And Shadow Realm will buy him a little bit of space. Silence onto the troll. He's still got the BKB. Terrorize comes through as well, but can they actually kill him in time? There's going to be the BKB. Abyssal onto M77. He needs help. Stone Gaze does come through. Stunning up God King for the moment with the double buybacks as well as another Stone Gaze stun. Can they actually kill the troll? He needs help. And fast God King goes down 100 seconds without the buyback. X Nova will be able to charge away. Chalice all alone inside the Exorcism. They take down two. Oh boy, if this is a fast Roche, RNG might be in a really bad spot. Yeah, they're definitely going to scout this one out. I'm not sure how much they'll be able to take on the map. The Roche is definitely like uh, the best case scenario for them if it responds instantly, but that is very hopeful for the side of Phoenix. On the other hand, I mean, a two for two trade, you end up taking down two cores there for the side of two supports. Yes, you were forced to use two buybacks, but again, they we're in that late game scenario now, the Medusa versus the Troll Warlord matchup. This is exactly what Phoenix wants. He's forced to stand his ground when he uses that battle trance against the Medusa, so he gets hit with that stone gaze twice. He's disabled yeah. for so long. And look what Zone just found, a timeless relic on the Ember Spirit, ah. which is one of the best ones that you can pick up. It is going to be a long respawn, uh, respawn time here on Roche, so that does favor RNG quite a bit. But uh, Phoenix should be able to grab a, maybe an objective here. They don't know that they're on, uh, they don't have buyback. That's the big thing, right? If they push this tier one top and then like God King and Pango buy back into it, you could just get heavily punished. Yeah. No stone gaze, no chance. So they uh, don't want to push uh, any further forward than they're currently sitting. That's your Daedalus for the Medusa. Yep. Tier 4 neutral items, uh, at the very least, is something they can grab as they're able to leave their base for a little bit. Trickster Cloak, Telescope picked up now. Trickster Cloak, I'm sure, is going to go the way of the Death Prophet, right? Like, that is just... It makes her so much tankier, effectively. Yeah. Well, actually, she's got a Paladin Sword. She grabbed it just now. Did she? Okay. I was going to say, it, ma it makes her a lot more survivable. And right now, I feel like... I, you have, like, this situation where you don't really know who to target on Phoenix. Because you need to kill the Medusa. But it's such a difficult scenario because of Stone Gaze. And then if you don't kill her, you have this Death Prophet's exorcism just chewing through these heroes, as well as the Ember Spirit, who's just jumping target to target. So you were right. The late game scenario getting a little bit difficult here for RNG. Yeah. And this troll world is going to have his work cut out for him. I and mean, we've had the three Yules uh, previously. Now Death Prop is working on the Heaven's Halberd. So Troll Warlord, uh, when he's not stone gazed by the Medusa, is, you know, have one more thing that he has to worry about being controlled up by. Charge on to the Ember. He gets a remnant out, but he just gets instantly deleted. So much damage coming through from these heroes. And now chasing after the Death Prophet. Shining Force to BKB. Does go for the Spirit Siphons. Might turn this around. He has an Exorcism. Terrorize being pump fake. There's going to be. It does connect onto God King. He's going to send him back. Curse Crown should connect as well. Stunning up the IO. M77 able to get him. The Ember Spirit goes in the Fiend's Grip. They've got him. God King dead once again. Chalice on the run now, but you can't outrun this Ember. Silence does connect. They get the kill, and Roche just respawned. Phoenix Gaming's going to scout it. With the Exorcism, too. They're going to take this one so fast, and still no buyback on either of these cores that went down. X Nova trying to stall for time, but there's no way he can do this by himself. That Cursed Crown was absolutely huge. The Dark Will with the game-saving plays, it came out so fast. Dude, it, I mean, the Terrorize caught Io and Troll, and the Cursed Crown popped perfectly. There it is, the Aegis, the Cheese, the Refresher going the way of Zone. Ten Remnants, double BKB now available for... Actually, he doesn't have BKB, does he? The Ember? No. And ten Remnants and a lot of damage. Yeah. Ten Remnants. Uh, he's got the Maelstrom uh, only. He hasn't had the most farm. Now he's going to go for that Lincoln Sphere, but they're realizing they would have bought back to prevent them from taking that Roche if they had it there. And Stone Gate's still available. They're just going to push down mid, and they've got 45 seconds to do this. The Fortify will buy them a little bit of time, but the game starting to look too difficult for RNG to be able to win. They're, they're crumbling here. Phoenix, like I said, they rise from the ashes, and this game was kind of in the ashes for a while for them, but... Uh, no buyback again on God King, just short on the money. Somnus as well needs to be careful. If he gets caught, this game becomes so difficult. M77, charge through from X Nova, just trying to again stall things out like you were saying, but they're going to try and take this tower in back. There's going to be the fortification. I think this is going to be the uh, time to disengage here from Phoenix. Yep. So I'm waiting uh, just until the tower would head back to our protection after you pop that. Uh, they're going to go for a smoke play, I think. They're fighting into the Stone Gaze and uh, the Aegis and the Cheese here. They don't have Exorcism. Uh, 
it's not like they used a ton of resources in that last fight. The thing that turned that around was the Curse Crown off onto three and the fact that you lost the IO. They head right in, they find M77. Does he get the Stone Gaze off? Not in time. Nightmare to buy him a little bit of space. He's got the Aegis. Ember coming back in on the backside. You've got to keep this Medusa alive. Phoenix Gaming, they've got the tools potentially. She gets caught by the Battle Trance. M77 in trouble. Stone Gaze number one will connect. He stuns up X Nova. They've caught God King again with the Fiend's Grip. They're falling so fast. They don't have the damage. Somnus goes in. Big Vortex onto two. Finally takes her down, but Shining. Still very lively. Refresher pop there on Somnus. BKB number two. Shining can force his zone. And now Ember able to disengage. TP out from the Death Prophet. God King with his like third or fourth death in a row. Just yeah, him going down there. But the Medusa just barely getting off that Stone Gaze before she ran out of mana. If she didn't get that, there was no way the Troll Warlord ends up melting there. And I think they just run them over and win the game. But now, because of God King's death after death here, this game becoming relatively even as far as XP goes, and net worth now down to a 10k advantage here at 42 minutes, it's starting to mean very little. I mean, that and the fact that they are on a, a buyback disadvantage, like they've just committed two from the IO and the Spirit Breaker in that fight to turn it around, and neither Somnus or God King have been holding it. And we see in this last fight, Somnus pops the Refresher just to try and find another kill, so... Going back for the Bloodstone, it would seem. Despite, yeah, I'm gonna disassemble the uh, the Kaya. Here it is. Realizing the song, Sam is realizing he's gonna have to do some heavy lifting. <laughs> yeah. He goes, all right. Let's in online. I didn't think it would have to come to this, but here we are. Well, six slotted now is. God, he's gonna end up being like seven, eight slotted as this game goes on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you're still at 12,000 gold. You uh, are still in a pretty commanding position here on the side of RNG, but them being... It's becoming so difficult for them to deal with the Medusa. I mean, we see the double stone... Like, the two stuns from Stone Gaze is just such a problem for the Troll Warlord. Mm -hmm. And he can't look away. It's one of the weaknesses of the Troll here, and, you know, half the reason why this Medusa is picked up in the draft. I mean, they last picked the Troll, didn't they? I actually, I think they did, didn't they? Oh, yeah, they did. So they, they felt confident enough to run it here into the Medusa. All right, Aeondis there for YP is quite useful. The Medusa saving a lot of money, saving for next game is what I like to call it. 7,000 gold in the bank. Yeah. Uh, I'm, try, I'm wondering, I mean, do you go for an Ags here? Do you go for the like cold-blooded shard? Like, uh, another, like another mini stone gaze option here? Like what do you build at this point? Uh, on the Medusa? No, like the, the cold-blooded shard for, for Moon Medusa. Is that oh, yeah. I'm surprised she doesn't have that right now, to be honest. Uh, that uh, would help her quite a bit as she was running out of mana in these team fights. And, but there's not like a ton of like single-target abilities that are dropping on her in the fights. But at the very least, if like that returns to Storm Spirit, he's got so much mana, you'll go back up to nearly full. Well, does he? Uh, since he has AoE Vortex now, you'll never hit Storm Spirit with it. Yeah, you will. He's got Bloodthorn. Oh, yeah, Bloodthorn. You're right, you're right, you're right. Good call. So he's going to be dropping that on Medusa, like the entire reason of this Bloodthorn pickup, uh, like upgrade. Partially because he was running out of slots and partially because this Medusa has so much evasion. All right, and this there for the Ember Spirit. I mean, they've they've all just got so much money in the bank here on the side of Phoenix. Making sure that they have buyback uh, is quite important. The uh, Ember Spirits, as we see, still on cooldown for another 2 minutes and 30 seconds. But uh, once that timer comes through, sure, surely he'll have it. Yep. We're starting to get that uh, pretty late game period though where you know, 12k now with advantage means uh, very little. He's been to set, is pushing out the waves by herself. BKB on her is pretty important. She's got to hold on to this as the game goes on. Otherwise, uh, because the Agonim Scepter uh, on this Pangolier, he'll just be able to constantly disarm the Oh my gosh, they're going to walk right into them. God King up onto the high ground. Got to be careful. They managed to find Zone on the backside, but Aeontis will connect. Going to keep him so alive. A lot of space coming through. In comes the Rolling Thunder as though. Chalice able to do a lot of work, and they're chain stunning down the Medusa. There she goes, deleted from the game. Going to buy back. They also grab Zone as well. This is the Pango Show, baby. Chalice is doing so much work in this fight. Triple kill for Somnus, thanks to the DD rune. And Phoenix may have just lost themselves the game fighting underneath that ward. Death Prop needs another 700 gold before she's able to buy back, but uh, God King, he took that fight much more carefully than he had the previous ones. He wouldn't drop his uh, ultimate until he saw the stone fall. Well, not while he was running at the Medusa. If it was going to retarget onto her, then he wasn't going to commit it until uh, she was, you know, uh, stunned up and low enough for him to be able to bring down uh, in that stun duration. And that's exactly what happened in that last fight. 
I mean, you don't have Ember buyback for another minute, and the Death Prophet didn't ha didn't save for buyback either. No. Well, yeah, I think he was trying to save for buyback. Uh, I mean, he, he saved for buyback, but yeah, another minute, the Death Prophet was trying to save up that goal, but didn't end up having it. You lose two sets of Rags here. It's about to be three. Yeah, They're just going to go straight for Megas, and nothing to stop them. Phoenix, they were looking so good for a minute here, and now starting to struggle. In comes Chaos once again on the Pangolier. Going to go hero to hero here, roll up. To be able to push him away for the moment, but they got to defend the barracks here. Can they even do it? The Abyssal Blade, she gets the BKB off for the moment. The Fiend's grip out. They managed to catch the IO in the Bramble. Felix is dead. Stone Gaze number one will connect. He pops out, trying to get so much mana back on the Medusa. Nether Strike doing work. X Nova in trouble. They take down the troll. He's got the buyback. He'll lose one. Somnus, he needs to leave. He will TP. The Medusa holds against all odds here. I gotta say, this is all YP. These brambles coming out, every single team fight stopped them to be able to come in and uh, catch the troll. The cursed crown coming out in that team fight earlier. I mean, that is exactly what happened to the IO there. He tries to relocate out, tethers over to the IO, but the brambles were in place. He predicted that IO's movement. It stops him from being able to get that relocate and save him. He's the saving grace to this game. Yes, Musa is doing a lot of damage in these team fights. The Stone Gazes are clutch, but it's all being set up here by uh, the Dark Willow. There YP is. is doing so much, man. I was looking at this, I was like, you just bought back on Medusa. It's Divine Rapier time and cues it up. Courier going to the secret shop as we speak. This is your Hail Mary. You're all in on this Medusa. Yeah, get rid of those boots. You won't need them anymore. You got a leveler, you got BKB, you got a Divine Rapier and Medusa. A lot of damage. And we can see, like, if she's able to attack heroes in these fights, she just melts the side of RNG. So it's really important that they don't allow them to get on top of this hero. And with 50 seconds left They're on the Spirit Breaker... So they can move slightly faster into the base here. They know this is going to be their only opportunity. Shining goes in with the Exorcism. They do have Fortification. Chalice will grab. Do they actually have any way to stop him? Fiend's Grip is not available, but M77's just cleaving down the towers. He's just going straight for the Tier 4s. They want to end the game. 14 seconds until uh, you're back up on the Troll Warlord. He doesn't want to have to commit buyback here, but Dude, he might they're just doing it with a couple seconds Can they? left. Somnus, big initiation. In comes Chalice as well, but the Medusa trying to stand her ground. Stunned up for the moment. Pops the BKB. They're going right through the back door. Protection. Great play by Somnus to cut the creeps, and now in some trouble. Big Vortex. In comes the Abyssal. That's got to be it. They just take down the Medusa on the dieback. They hand that Divine Rapier on over to the Troll. He's just melted here. This Troll Warlord does so much damage. And with Medusa down for 110 seconds, they might just call it here. The waves pushed into their base. That was all they had left. I had to get the Vine actually over to Somnus, but you're right. I mean, it was such a sick play by the Storm. He saw this all-in push coming mid. He cut the next two waves, and then there was no way to stop them. Zone caught inside the base. X Nova pops the BKB. He does have a Yule to try and buy himself a little bit of time, but Somnus will catch him with the Vortex perfectly timed. And Zone, actually okay for the moment. Shot. Oh, what a reinitiation by Chalice. He predicts it perfectly. Four heroes dead inside the base. And despite Phoenix's best efforts, RNG looking to close out game number one in this series. An incredible hold from them. As that's going to be five heroes on the deck. Somnus really, really standout performance once again. Yeah, switched over that blood zone when he realized things were getting a little bit dicey. Amazing jumps on these back lines. Uh, God King, moments of brilliance, but uh, once again, just too much control for this Troll Warlord. He, you know, did a ton of damage to the Medusa when he could get on top of her, but it ended up being pretty rough. The three Yule Scepters, uh, the Stone Gaze you were having to fight into, I, it was very rough for the Troll Warlord, man. I mean, it took to a 50k gold lead. Obviously, some of that, the Divine Rapier, that went on over to the other team, but... Yeah, it, it felt like this game almost went the way of Phoenix. Like, it was very close. I think going for the Tier 4s there, they maybe uh, overestimated how fast that they could push. Maybe just getting the barracks backing off. I mean, they... Uh, I feel like they weren't really... Did they have to go for the all-in push? What do you think? It felt a little bit too hard for them to be able to defend uh, once they had two waves pushing in naturally. I mean, you're fighting against a Storm Spirit who's able to like, constantly cut and uh, push and creep waves. You're fighting against a Troll Warlord who's able to melt your bear axe pretty quickly. I think they thought that they were all out of options and that was their best moment to strike. Maybe if they made a, a mistake in that defense there by RNG, they would have been able to win that game. So in these sort of situations, you either go there, hope the enemy makes a mistake in that moment, or 
hope that they make a mistake as the game goes on. So I think that was their best option. Yeah. I mean, heck of a way to open the day. We get a divine rapier on a Medusa. They almost managed to come back from an incredible deficit. I'm really curious what our panel has to say. So we're going to send it back to them. Hello, yes indeed, it is RNG that take the first game, but uh, I don't know how many more times I'm going to say this. RNG take the game, but it wasn't very clean. I mean... What do you mean? It was the cleanest game that we had in this DPC season. I never doubted RNG <laughs> and our prediction for a little second. Never. Yep, yep. Never. Well, it's, we're sweating away, grabbing the napkins yeah, what, of the break room. What's Do you see this? Ice cold, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Ice in his veins. Didn't sweat when God King died to the curse ground. Didn't sweat when God King <laughs> died again over in their own triangle. Didn't sweat again when he was dead and they were pushing the tier fours. Once you have Somnus on the team, you're fine. It's okay. All good. All good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it was pretty telling uh, how Somnus looked after <laughs> oh that game, God. right, Ben? <laughs> he looked like a shell of himself. Yeah. Can, let, let, let me just uh, big up B Cop here. Like Ricky <laughs> is saying, like it's a shame we didn't record this in the in the green room. So we were watching the game, and Ricky, he's casting. He says, "There's no way Somnus dies anymore." B Cop is like, "Yeah, this is where he's gonna die in like three seconds, literally on the dot." It was, the dot. It, was it, it was very Ball, impressive. Ball lightnings in, gets caught, <laughs> yeah, dies around. immediately. Oh Terrorized. Somnus dies. I'm like, oh, okay. Eight times kill streak. There we go. Uh, With but gold. Does kind of get, get the feeling that, uh, you know, Somnus has kind of got this whole RNG team on his back and is just kind of heading towards the sunset with them. Um, the rest of the team, I don't know. They, they have good games. You know, we saw God King pull out a great game on that gyrocopter yesterday, but it's so hot and cold with this guy. Yeah. Do you know the, um, the happy mask salesman in Majora's Mask? Uh, he's got that giant backpack. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just standing there with Skitty a dude, smile that just looks super backpack. fake. That's Somnus. Yeah. Except every <laughs> mask is just his teammates. Yeah. And he's just there like, I carrying this whole thing. This is great. It's fine. This is how we <laughs> plan to play it, guys. No worries. Gosh. It, he didn't look happy. Uh, no, at not the, at all. Like the cameras showed his face and he was like. He did do I mean, so much to save this game. A, a game such as this one. When you end it, like if you understand and uh, are, and if all your mistakes are apparent to you, you're not happy when you win it, because this game could have been over much much sooner for RNG. They had full control. They just didn't capitalize on it. This is the this is the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is no way Somnus can die. <laughs> well. There he goes. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, waits every time. Uh, so, you know. Somnus uh, has been like that for the past year, right? Like the moment you think, okay, this is it, he's unkillable. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he does have some pretty Watch flashy this. unkillable moments. Yep. Oh yeah, I mean the terrorizes were just really well placed by YP and the curse crown too, using after, that combination. After seeing the game, did the troll pick make a little bit more sense to you guys, or still no? No, I don't think the troll is a bad hero overall uh, I think that he has a place in the meta maybe even more so than a morphling that's picked every <laughs> other game yeah um, in this game it, it, it was not a perfect troll game by any stretch mm. and I don't think that he's the one that made this significant impact like, that's why we're talking about this some the this was the fact yeah a three men stun right here with the curse crown mm. boom into a full Woo! team white remnants red. in oh. spicy Love it. Yeah, there's a couple of beautiful moments coming out from Phoenix. You know, they're showing flashes of promise. Such a high potential team, but uh, unfortunately, you know, this is a very brutal practice ground to start finding your legs as a, as a kind of new, 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 new team. Yeah, uh, it's definitely tough. You've got some veterans in there. LWW is a bit of a veteran with Aster Ares. You've got M77, who was Gintoki, played for Rock Y. I think he went to WESG with that team and ended up doing pretty well. Like, he's got some high-end experience. It's just when you're coming together like this, it's very tough to, you know, make it. To gel, mistake. right? Yeah. So, and it's kind of telling that throughout this game, 
throughout this panel, we we're mostly talking about RNG and their mistakes, right? We're not really talking about Phoenix and how well they did. Like if you if you consider that they're zero three, this looked like one of the better games that they had, the closest one probably, because uh, at this point it could have just as well went their way if they played it a little bit more passively, a little bit more carefully, perhaps. And yeah, they overstayed right there. What did you think of the uh, Storm Spirit build with the um, Refresher and the Axe, which is uh, you know very interesting? Man's got to do what man's got to do. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a build you do when you've got God King on your team and you got to carry everything. He only had two deaths. Yeah. He almost had one death, but you know, he, he never dies. He did extremely <laughs> well. Overall. I love how he took the rapier at the end as well. You know, he was just like, you, know, you don't touch this, God King. King. <laughs> Leave this for me. I'll I mean, uh, he's had some good performances, and you know, he he is he is a good player, but it just feels like the team aren't really sure how to make it work right now. Um, oh, it looks a bit more m more passive than it should be. Uh, perhaps, yeah. I mean, when your carry's like farming a lot of the yeah. game, you kind of expect him to come out yeah. and kind of be the dominant hero when he does finish farming. Yeah. And that unfortunately wasn't the case. This but, one could be down to the hero pick, could be down to his gameplay. But still, you should uh, have these moments that you should capitalize on, right? You, you should be able to realize the potential of your hero in, and the potential of your team when they're ahead, which is something that RNG is struggling to do. And uh, we've been talking about Chalice a lot recently, but um, perhaps Chalice being iso isolated in some of these games and being so upfront is a domino effect from not really him being out of position, but his team not, just not being there to support him at times. Do you think that could come down to like a kind of just lack of practice, lack of cohesiveness, or maybe some... Just got to get on the same page, I suppose. Yeah. Right. And it's not really... Um, you can practice this, definitely, but it's also something that's individual, right? It's in each individual player. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier to just find a team that think, thinks the same way, naturally, than it is to practice and put someone out of their comfort zone to, to, to play differently, right? Yeah, yeah, but, you know, the fact that we have these criticisms for RNG and that we do see them making these mistakes, you know, I think it almost comes back to the testament of how individually skilled these players are. Like, RNG is just such a ridiculously yeah. talented team. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're old veteran players in, in Somnus, mm -hmm. in Chalice. We know how well these guys can play, you know, TI grand final caliber players. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, not quite TI winning players yet, but uh, certainly very, very good. And then you've got the new blood coming in of Felix and God King. And, you know, as I was saying in the interview, uh, x -Nova was saying, you know, th these guys are bringing those fresh ideas, those new takes, that brand new talent, which they kind of need yep. to hopefully find a new formula that works and hasn't been done before. And that's how you get to the big leagues. Yeah, I, I do wonder what's going to work for them just because like Somnus played with a lot of carries that he knew would secure their position in the game, secure their farm in the game. You play with somebody like Ame, Yuris, mm -hmm. you've got guys that you can kind of rely on. You know they're coming out of the, the mid game with something to bring. Yeah. And, and they have a lot more confidence, I think. I don't know if it's a confidence thing on God King, but it, it, it seems like he's just making some questionable plays and mm -hmm. he's never really secure in his lane. Um, it, it's tough. I, I think Somnus definitely does have to do a lot more of the heavy lifting and that could be a burden. Uh, you know, He's getting it done at times, but it, it's certainly one of those things that how much does that stress you out that you've got to now kind of change your builds potentially like that you know, there in the storm. Like what are you seeing from God King. Which is funny because during the elephant stint, it was the complete opposite. Like you didn't, sure. you did not need to do that much. You actually needed to do a little bit less uh, to allow your teammates to have that space, right? Like yeah. Elephant, we were watching them for a year, just waiting for them to become this powerhouse that they could have been. <laughs> but Any minute now, Elephant are going to be great. You know, any minute. Any minute. Online. This game. Wait, it, it must be this game. <laughs> this is when they come online. TI, all right, this yeah, is but it. This it, is it was similar. They just had this disconnect, right, in which everyone wanted to do a little bit too much by their own. Yeah. Um, here, everyone is doing a bit less than necessary, besides Somnus, that is. And yeah. then Chalice is a bit too far out, gets punished for it. Um, still, though, no one can dispute that they're top tier one players. Yeah, and uh, you could see the difference. Like when Somnus was playing with Uris, it felt like Somnus was almost not doing enough. Like he didn't feel comfortable taking more of a backseat to Uris, right? Mm -hmm. And then Chalice, when he played with LGD, he played a lot more sacrificial in the off lane. It was like, oh, 
well, you know, he secured his lane, but then from there, the one and the two took over in the farm, and he just kind of did his thing and was the initiator. All right, well, the draft is just around the corner for game number two. We'll find out which way this one's going to go, but we, of course, need to introduce the draft master for this one and joining us to break down the picks and the bands and also give us a little bit of an insight, just a little bit of a, a, a nugget of knowledge of the last game. We have Black. What yeah. are your thoughts? Um, obviously that I'm one of the greatest draft masters ever. You of know? course. Yeah, I agree, said agree. Uh, the draft is heavy. Well, not heavy. The second best here as well. Second best, yes, right <laughs> after you. I, I admit defeat oftentimes, you know. you got to know when to admit defeat in battle. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like the draft of Phoenix was actually really good, which was kind of shining through at the end where they were really struggling to end the game on RNG. But yeah, it's, uh, they made it a lot more complicated than it, than it had to be. They had like, what, the 20k goalie that minute 25 or something? Yep. And then they just couldn't end the game at all, which is, yeah, it's not a good sign coming down the, uh, the road. But not. your draft is already... Live, and we've got the first pick crop for RNG, which is usually banned nowadays in the first phase. And yep. it's actually Third. first banned to Brute Mother, too. <laughs> That's still interesting to me. Uh, we, that one Brute game wasn't. They did win, though, with that Brute. They did yeah. win, yeah. ultimately. It, it didn't up. look like <laughs> super great always. It, it kind of fluctuated, right? It was like it was good in the beginning, and then it wasn't, and then it was. Yeah, Brute 100% win rate in the China DPC. Ooh, so, one out uh, of one. Uh, overpowered Ooh. hero. Yep. Right. So That's the 19 bans she now has. <laughs> oh my god. Just let it through. I mean, if she, that's one hundred percent win rate, of course she deserves the. Is she banned right? or picked every game? No, right? No, no, no. Close. It's not banned or picked every game. No, not even close. Not even close. No. What's it? How, uh, it's banned a lot. The right? contest uh, rate isn't that high. percent yeah. contest rate. Yeah. In so China games. In China only, yeah. Really? Yeah. It feels like so much more. Yeah. But I guess well, it's just the selective band memory. Don't rely on your feelings. Rely on the stats, B Cup. Selective memory, B yeah. Cup. Yep. Uh, that hero just looks. Absolutely bonkers when you actually try hard with it and you have the discipline to block mm -hmm. each camp all the time and you're not just playing for yourself but for the team. Like playing against the Luna and blocking Ancients all the time feels uh, kind of broken in my opinion, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. going back to the Dark Willow again. Well, not again, but this time RNG steals yep. it from them. Because honestly, Dark Willow is a really underrated support, but it's now getting more and more into the spotlight because it's just a very strong hero. Like we have seen what it can do last game. He has like two insane cursed crown talents. He can scale mm. into the late game with an Agonum Scepter, level 20, level 25. I it's not really a point in the game where it's weak. It's always good. I felt that she isn't that great versus Spirit Breaker, but uh, it doesn't seem that way. I guess the Bramble Maze as well is good, right? Yep. Catching him while he charges through. Can also be kind of random, right? It's just randomly on the floor somewhere, yeah. and yeah. your Cursed ground, uh, Crown later also spawns four of them, so can stop the charge just really randomly. I feel like most of those times it's actually not planned. It's just like, oh, he's in there now, guys. He, uh, he charged someone. Probably even better than it's random, right? Like if you set it up somewhere, he's gonna anticipate it, dodge it or something like... Yeah, suddenly just somewhere in the fog, I'm like, oh! Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone else be... wish Bramble Maze was actually a maze and not just a, you know, a, 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 a topiary garden? Yeah, we need more minigames in Dota. Like as soon as you... <laughs> Bramble maze someone, they have to like navigate through. Yeah, that should be that could be a shard, right? Making an actual maze where you have to run through and there's like, you know, there's a reward in the middle, but obviously You, you don't have custom games, what, right? You get an item in the middle? No, yeah, no, sure. I like a little bit of gold. Oh, cool. No, 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 that would be counter intuitive then. Makes yeah. no sense. But you guys all play Warcraft, <laughs> right? Such I'm a good sure. or otherwise. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yes. And you had these uh, little run, kitty run. Yeah, stuff. these, these yeah. kind of games. Uh, yeah. It's uh, this could be a mini game in Dota. Every time you bramble oh, yeah. maze someone, it just zips you in the mini game. You have to complete it. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you take 500 damage, get yeah. stunned for two seconds. I, I mean, uh, like let, let's be real. When um, OD astrals you, like you could be ported into a different game, right? For True. What do you think is actually happening? I mean. In the astral dimension, it's very probable that time moves differently. So perhaps whilst you're in that astral imprisonment, you're actually experiencing maybe like a hundred years of life. You come out the other side and just like, or maybe one you, second, a new person. What if, what if astral just turns your screen out, like becomes black? You can't That's similar to that dark lady. I don't see. I have black on my screen most of the time anyway because he's so beautiful. He's my background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about if Bloodseeker? If we get even crazier just constantly has crazy movement speed because his speed is based on the health of heroes in every single game of Dota. Now we're getting... Uh... Oh, that's too far. <laughs> All right, All right guys. <laughs> Keep oh, yeah, we got a Bane pick. I mean, 
One thing I could get behind is the fact that, uh, you know... You need to reel us back in, Black. Come on, remember? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm trying, but uh, he said let's get back into it, and he starts talking about it again. He's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We, really hard we go to Bane, pick up with the Grim Stroke, we see the double grip oftentimes. But it's not an easy Bane game. They have three heroes that can cancel the backline already. Yeah. So getting full duration grips off is not going to be easy this time around. Feels like a good clock for a game, though, right? It is, yeah. It's really good against Spirit Breaker too. Yeah. Uh, although I do think you can charge out, right? I think you can charge him out, maybe. But probably you're going to be just um, CC at the moment you start charging, right? You start yeah. charging, it's going to stop you. Until you have Axe, at least. Yeah. Then you have no cast time anymore. And your Beastmaster going through to the second phase, which you oftentimes, well, it's really only LGD picking it in the first phase. Yeah. But whenever they do, it has an amazing impact. It's a very strong hero. I think it's... Very underpicked. I think in EU, in EU also, it's banned first phase many, many times. Which is really very strong, impactful yeah. hero. We, we have seen Beastmaster be banned out uh, in the first couple of days, but yeah, fell yeah. out of Then the people don't want to pick it anymore. Yeah. I don't know why. It's actually such a good hero. And I hope Chalice will be able to demonstrate why, because you can literally just end games in 20 minutes if you have a good game. Nice Stalker banned out. Also, you couldn't really pick it on Phoenix, so you won't have that... Uh, way of dealing with beasts creeps yeah this is so this is the offline spirit breaker eh? mm -hmm. yeah certainly it's very tough to pick a carry for phoenix actually because this game like they have a ton of magic damage they have a ton of disables they got bkb piercing disables they got AOE pure damage, damage through yeah. bkb they got bkb piercing everything yeah like you don't wanna like here, like Medusa would make the mo most sense probably because we don't really, really want to build a BKB, but yeah. yeah. Nice draft from RNG, I really like it. Very all round, a lot of damage. When we see LGD play the Beastmaster, sometimes they're setting up for a Tinker. Do you think there's a possibility of that for RNG? Like some of us can certainly play it, right? So yeah. maybe. Yeah, but do you really need. I, I guess you could. You have objective taking capabilities from. That are given to you by Beastmaster, right? And so Beast just gives you everything. Yeah. <laughs> you do Roshan, you do everything. Literally. <laughs> so you, you could last pick a semi carry or a Tinker or whatever you wanted to. Yeah. But I, I think Somnus is very comfortable on this Quap, and they're just going to last pick Guard King's Hero again, which I think. Well. Just give him a Wraith King or something and. <sighs> get, no, like, go, go back to Troll. Yeah. Troll wouldn't. I mean, you're playing into a Spirit Breaker, but then again, Bane is against you, so it's difficult. Was it? Wasn't if you have against them last time, right? Yeah. But they had the Spirit Breaker to... I, I don't, yeah. don't want to see them pick the same carries all the time, though, because that is just like a, a sign of having no confidence. Yeah. Like, I, I remember in my time when I was having like a rough time, I would just always go back to my same hero. I'm like, ah. Anti-Mage? Anti-Mage? No, the hero is too difficult when you're having a rough time. It's got to be like Lifestealer or something like that. You know, <laughs> something something very simple. But yeah, it's, it's not good when you when you keep doing that because it, yeah, it just... And they, they could go for right something, there. maybe it's not the best game, but it's not terrible. Like, they could go for something like a Luna, and you have Beastmaster, yeah. Luna, and the game quickly. That could work for RNG. Yeah, they, they actually bound a troll, so they force his hand. Medusa. They, they, they do go right. for Medusa. Okay. RNG's turn on uh, the Medusa. Makes it, a lot of sense, it's a yeah. very good Medusa game. Still solid. Rounds up their draft nicely. You have this super late game potential. It's Beast master, master buffs her up. Good laning stage with the clockwork, most likely. I, or Dark Willow. I did want to ask you, Draftmaster. Yes, um, sir. What, what are your comments on God King's drafting? He has been drafting since the LBZS series. Have you mm. been uh, impressed by his caliber? Is he drafting by himself, the question, though? Or is he just taking over the mouse? Because a lot of times. People that say I'm gonna draft, no, they just take over the mouse, and you just discuss as a team the yeah. entire time. That's what happened in a lot of my teams. It's like let's change drafter guys, but yes. then ultimately it's the same thing. It's just another guy pressing the buttons, you know. Yeah. But okay. the draft overall they seem pretty good, especially this game. As I said, I like a lot. Yeah. Very well rounded. Sometimes it's e even easier for the guy that uh, knows the most to not be the one behind the mouse. Not yeah. be the one clicking be the button. Yeah. Behind the mouse, yeah. yeah. The, the mouse is very scary sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a psychological hurdle. No, it truly is. Yeah. Like, because like, you got to actually press that button. It, yeah. it sounds very easy, but when you're there, you're like, ah. It's like, yeah. just ask insane. You know when old people are playing chess outside, like on the, you know, on the street, like on those par chess parks? Like, yeah. usually the ones controlling the pieces are the ones that are playing the least. Everyone around is just giving suggestions 24-7. 
Oh, interesting. Draw. Yeah. I, I, I spoke to the people while you guys were having... Mm -hmm. uh, good job, Draftmaster. I heard good job. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we, we, got, we got one pick right out of 10. That's good. <laughs> one out of 10. Well, it's at like uh, 10%, uh, but in 10 times, that makes it 100. That is true. 100% yeah. every time. Not every pick, right? I don't know what you guys yeah. are talking about. But, um, yeah, it's a stuff to go for. You know, I gave Phoenix the benefit of the doubt last game. Yeah, but difficult uh, this time, right? Then you were 20k behind. Yeah. You know, game shouldn't have gone that way. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Phoenix this time around. Way. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how the bait works. You're baiting yourself, like. <laughs> no, their draft is good, though. It's yeah. good. I think the draw actually has a very good game. Mm -hmm. And we Green have plus Spirit Breaker as well, right? Yeah, the draw do some matchup is also very draw favored, so they have a chance for sure. For sure. Okay, is it? I mean, for sure. For sure, he says, but I'm still going with RNG. Yeah, I'm Absolutely RNG. certain because. I mean, the way you work with RNG drafts is you look at their heroes, you say, can Somnus carry this game? He's playing Queen of Pain. Here is very good. He's got this. Uh, I'm, I'm going for RNG as well. Let's find out what our cast stats think about this one as we get into game number two of RNG versus Phoenix. Thank you so much, Nomad. And uh, I, you know, I kind of agree with him. You know, RNG looking pretty good after this last game, but it, it, for some reason, Phoenix still looks like they have a better draft, almost right. Mm, but uh, Draftmaster seems to think so, and obviously he knows the better than the rest of them. He's got a podium in front of him instead of a couch, so. I'm going to have to go with uh, his opinion. I mean, there's no way Phoenix loses eight matches in a row, right? Yeah, I mean, hard to say. We'll find out, I guess. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's one of those things that this last picture out is pretty dang good in this matchup. You do have to worry a little bit about the clockwork, the Queen of Pain, uh, you know, two heroes that can gap close on top of you. But uh, honestly, X Nova is going to have his hands busy dealing with LL, uh, LWW's Bane once yeah. again, I would guess. Yeah, it becomes an issue uh, that you see with a lot of Drow Ranger lineups where, okay, uh, I definitely want to jump the Drow, but are there any other issues I need to take care of? My only concern is that uh, as this game goes on, it's only going to be the Drow that's going to be a big uh, damage output or so. RNG now the late game favoring them a little bit. Did they actually miss this ward here in the middle lane? Oh my gosh, it's just out of vision of the sentry. Yep. That is unlucky. Oh, a little bit of a rune find, LWW. My regret going in for that one, we'll be able to dodge out the Bramble, but X Nova with the board. This is just gonna be first blood going with the deny. Never mind. Okay. That's Phoenix, the Arcana. Phoenix are winning. Yeah, that's the Arcana. Okay, that's right the there. Arcana yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah, but Phoenix have won this game. The mental on RNG is just absolutely destroyed and. Oh, they get the D ward, man. All right, never mind. It's like a. I'm going for orange. <laughs> <laughs> Neff, you're, you're flip flopping a lot here, buddy. Uh, that's a nice way to start the game. I mean, you don't end up losing your uh, Spirit Breaker instead. Oh, sorry, you don't end up losing your Bane instead. Uh, Drow ends up getting the Deny off onto him, and let's go uh, to one sided for the side of uh, the mid lane. I mean, giving Somnus an uh, extra first blood gold would be absolutely disastrous. So. Yeah. I mean, giving up a first blood of the rune, like, like almost, is one of those things that ruins a lane pretty heavily right now, especially considering how important Ooh. lanes are. All right, that was some sick creep aggro right there. It was uh, mistakes from zone there. Doesn't end up getting any of those last hits off, and did end up committing his uh, nuke for that one as well. Yeah. Dude, this Drow is just one of those heroes that has such a terrible attack animation, forced to use your Q to like get a little bit of extra bonus damage to last hit with. So it's uh, that ca that attack point is just such a, so brutal to deal with. Yeah, they buffed it a little while ago, but it still feels like you said pretty awful. They get the board, they do. Okay, I'm just going back the other way a little bit. Each one of those are worth uh, 60 XP, so hopefully Chalice gets a lot of denies off of the range creeps. So we're gonna see Shining here on the off lane, Spirit Breaker being paired up with YP on the Grimstroke. Now this is a super strong duo that we have seen in this uh, tournament so far. Uh, one other thing to consider is we do have the Double Fiends grip and we saw this actually c become really, really, really difficult for teams to deal with earlier as well, as long as, you know, barring no one can stop it. So that's kind of the Clockworks job this game, right? Yep. Yeah. Be able to do anything to this um, Nusa doesn't really look like it. She's still very tanky at the moment. He's got a double slippers of agility. I don't think that I'll uh, turn enemies into a Wraith fan. A little bit of a waste of gold, especially considering this is all magic damage in this lane. You do a decent chunk from right clicks, but you know, greater bash and majority of uh, well, all of your kit here on YP is all magic damage. 
All right, CS wise, Drought managed to pull back bottom lane and uh, Void Spirit tying it up in the mid lane as well. So not too bad. They were struggling. To, it looked like they were struggling a little bit more early on, but it's gonna be fine. Oh, LWW, a little bit too far forward, but uh, might just try and commit to kill the board here. We'll see. Right, there we go. Nice south. Using the Shadow Realm, so it's safe to drop the south off onto the Drow Ranger zone, taking a little bit of damage here, but. They just get the first one. Yeah, they get the Bane and Grimstroke top also falling very low. He's going to go down. Shining, trying to do what he can here to get some damage out on over to the Medusa. Charge does come through, connects, but uh, he doesn't have the damage alone. So two kills now in these side lanes for RNG. Going to give them quite a bit of an advantage. Yep. Wow. And uh, already looking pretty good for RNG. Phoenix on the back foot to start this game. He ended up uh, stopping the first death from coming out, but uh, zone, getting zoned. Oh, yeah, that, it's that that's pretty good. Yeah, Thank you. That's a good good zone humor there. Yes, oh, thanks. Uh, it's just one of those things. Like Void Spirit is one of these heroes that like people tend to pick into the Queen of Pain. I don't think it ever really. It, it doesn't surprise me uh, very much ever. Like every time I see this matchup, Queen of Pain still ends up winning. It's pretty rough, but uh, Zone's managing to find a decent amount of CS though. Yeah, unfortunately the wave is underneath the tower for uh, the Queen of Pain now, and so you have to back up. Queen of Pain has a lot of denies as well, 16 and 8, and uh, is controlling the wave super well. So Somnus off to a great start here in the mid lane. It's uh, It looked uh, better for the Void Spirit than it really was there, is uh, the position of the creep wave, and he had like a double range creep shoving into his tower. Water Rune's going to spawn, and they make the rotation into the bottom one with the Dark Willow. So no bottle refill going to be available for the Void Spirit. More damage being done his way. But top lane getting aggressive on top of God King, but a great uh, Cogs here from X Nova and Shining. Taking a lot of damage himself. Will be fine, though. Yeah, needed YP to help get him out of those Cogs there, but uh, he was just trying to auto-attack down that clockwork. So it ended up costing the Spirit Breaker a lot of HP. They'll play a little bit further back for a moment. And, uh, you know, a lot of things, well, all these uh, lanes going the way of RNG. Well, Draw Ranger's still uh, near the top of the, the CS chart, but uh, Chal is doing pretty well for himself, too. Almost has that uh, dominance. It's a recipe. Yeah, you're out of health and you're out of regen. M77 just going to get dove behind the tower. The Bramble play has been absolutely perfect here from Felix. Is now the chase down the main double bore. There's no escape, and that's going to be a double kill for your Beastmaster, basically. Lose Chalice. Well, Chalice ends up uh, grabbing two heroes there, and your tower now under some heavy pressure. Top lane, they might get a kill off on the God King. This is a big one. Yeah, if they can get this bash, this would be huge. He just needs one more auto attack. He gets it just in time. So, God King falls top on this Medusa. They have been so close at finding this kill multiple times and uh, finally end up getting it. Yeah, very much needed uh, too, given how bottom is going. And a good chunk of damage to that uh, tier one tower. Unfortunately, they didn't have the catapult wave with them. It is uh, just coming down now, but. I think they're going to start to bring the herd. TPing the mid lane here. The clockwork, refilling Somnus' bottle. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Chalice. I think we saw Chalice play the Beastmaster before, right? So this is uh, a hero that he actually did really well on in the previous series. And if left unchecked, Beastmaster becomes a massive problem. Mm -hmm. Some of the Overlord that they're looking for. And the only person that's really able to deal with it uh, is going to be the Drow Ranger. Like, she can burst down creeps incredibly quickly with her marksmanship, but she's going to have a lot of heroes running in her. That's going to be the number one priority of X Nova this game, is staying on top of this drought, stopping her from pumping out damage. Yeah. Roy's spirit will eventually fall off, and against the Bedusa, there's very little that she's going to be able to do. You get I'm actually doing not too bad in this offlane. The Spirit Breaker kind of staying with the Medusa, but it's really just this mid lane and offlane where you're going to start to see these heroes pull away, and Zone's still not quite level 6. About to get it in the mid lane here off that next creep, but... Bottom lane, they find LWW once again. The Bramble Maze perfectly placed by Felix, and a couple auto attacks is all he's going to need. Goes the way of the boar. Killing spree now for Chalice. He's off to an incredible start. This game not looking so hot uh, for Team Phoenix. I'm going to wonder if our Draftmaster was right. It is one of those things, I, I kind of forget about this, but Beastmaster is one of the best counters in the game to the Bane in lane. It is such a miss. Oh, well, top lane, God King, gonna get stunned without the Mana Shield. He's dead. Way too far forward here. Yep. Underestimating the, uh, I guess, the catch and the burst potential of these two heroes. Spirit Breaker Grimstroke combo is pretty scary to get on top of those heroes and a lot of stun between the two of you. Somnus is gonna be just fine, standing his ground. 
Jack wants to trade a little bit uh, with Zone. He's got two points in the dagger. It's going to heal him fairly slowly. Yeah, the fe uh, the fairy fire plus the wand. He was just trying to bait that second astral step, maybe. But uh, yeah, felt confident enough. M77 though in some trouble, getting chased here bottom lane by Felix, the helm of the Dominator creep in pursuit. Gotta give him the clap, and uh, we'll slow him up just enough. Clapping to missing. Yeah, there, he's really. got the board though. Perfect ramble maze once again into the Sonic Wave. Ooh, so the Sonic Wave pushed him back just far. Oh, actually, never mind. He ran out of mana. He didn't have the roar to commit onto the Bane there. I thought he was gonna grab both of them with that. No mistake there by the Queen of Pain. Somnus doesn't make mistakes. No, no, it doesn't seem like it. Mid lane, a decent chunk of damage being done to the tower, though, thanks to the catapult. So you do, there is a little bit of a trade there. They're not going to be able to grab the tower, but uh, still at least something going the way of Phoenix. Trying to make, I, I'm trying to help Spear him out here. Spearbreaker's farming. Yeah, well, they're going to lose bottom tier one. Obviously, this is what this Beastmaster does. Mid lane looking for Somnus. Remnant just off the mark. Otherwise, Somnus super dead. Charge is coming in, though. Astral step to the other side. Somnus does need to be careful. They will grab the clockwork. Yep, and they realize. actually find more is the question. Somnus gets charged. It connects through the trees. Shining grabs the kill. Silence on over to the Dark Willow zone with a beautiful uh, Nether Strike as well into just a lot of burst damage, actually. I I'm surprised. I didn't think they would get this many, but a three for one in the mid lane. Yeah, catching out that Queen of Pain. She figured that they didn't have vision onto her there, and I think it's one of the reasons why she continued to play around in those trees. And once she realized Spear Breaker was charging her, she kind of had given up. Committed too many ults uh, down there in the bottom lane and just weren't able to stand their ground and fight. Chalice is in here and ready to shove in. At least I assume he would be ready to shove in the mid lane. But he's going to move over the jungle. He's going to get the D ward off. I think just trying to establish control of the enemy team. The goal of this game right now for RNG is to keep this draw ranger shut down, and right now they're doing a decent job of that. Yeah, they really are. I mean, you can see she's definitely struggling a little bit here. The Medusa um, already rotating into the uh, bottom lane, clearing up the jungle as well as the triangle, so she's off to a pretty good time farming. Definitely faster than the draw ranger at the moment. We're going to see another Yule Scepter pick up here this game from zone in the mid lane. Yeah, I mean... It's something that you want to build on the Void Spirit, especially against the, the Co-op. You want to be able to deal with these silences somehow. You want to be able to you know, control up uh, these heroes. Bane might be in trouble here. Getting chased down by the Beastmaster? Ah, uh, no, he's fine. Okay. Yeah. They're going to dive draw behind this tower if they have the opportunity to. It looks like uh, both the Queen of Pain and Dark Willow setting up. Oh, oh there's the hook mid. shot. They managed to get the charge off, but a little bit of a counter bait there as they will know about. The Actually, they don't even have a ward. It's just a hawk scouting this whole thing. They are so deep. <laughs> they are so deep in uh, Phoenix's side of the map right now, diving behind like the tier one tower and realizing Drow isn't really, really able to contribute anything yet. Nice dodge in the dagger there with the dissimilate. Yeah, X Nova not having hook shot. It means that you do have a little They've bit. They've got roar though. They're going to go into zone. They're going to try indeed. He gets in range. There it is. The tumbler toy in the Sonic Wave. Goodbye. Very nice play there from Chalice, and now YP chased down here by the Dark Willow. Plenty of damage from there, so they find two as well as the Tier 1 Tower. Great rotations from RNG here. The Tumble Toy in the early game is something that uh, I've listened to Trent rave and rant about uh, all the time, just how much of a difference it makes. That small little hop can make or break plays on like any other neutral item. And he was in the trees there. They didn't have vision of the Beastmaster come in, but uh, it definitely looked like it played a big part in that kill. I mean, he just hops over the tree, right? Top lane, Drow Ranger gets caught, tries to pitch off Felix, but the Dark Realm going to save him. Zone, thinking about going in. Turns his attention to Exnova here, maybe. Remnant, dissimilate, has another Astral Step out. He's going to be fine. Actually throws the hook shot as well. I don't know why, but... I mean, he wanted to disengage, but no such luck. LWW yeah. looking for a Fiend's Grip here potentially, but they don't have any damage left, so. Yeah. You would have been able to take out the uh, rest of this Queen of Pain's mana, but uh, without anyone to follow up, you don't want to waste this cooldown, right? Yeah, you got to get a kill with it. Behind like this. 2k net with advantage here at 11 minutes into the game. Drow Ranger still not managing to catch up. Now 1,000 net worth behind this Medusa. And when you have these super deep boards like RNG have, uh, she's not really safe anywhere. You've warded so much of the enemy side of the map, you know exactly where she is uh, when she's not showing. Yeah, that plus the fact you have Beastmaster's Hawk vision, right? So you have a lot of tools and flair. Like, you're you're always going to be at a vision disadvantage against this RNG lineup. Yep. They did such a good job at uh, shutting this Draw Ranger down. They see her now, but they've got uh, their eyes on shining down here in the bottom lane. 
Oh, Shining taking a lot of damage here from the Dark Will. It does have a charge. Will drop it, but goes right into Chalice's roar. Perfectly <laughs> timed. And uh, yeah, another kill going the way of this Beastmaster. Well set up there by Felix. They're going to smoke in a Roche? No way, right? Like They're, they're no, looking for a kill. They can't Roche yet. I was like, who's their damage? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. I mean, even like I don't think anyone could tank up Rosha at the moment either, especially with Spirit Breaker dead. Dude, they are walking right into RNG. LWW gets a ward down, looking for Somnus. Remnant doesn't come out in time as well as the Science, but Felix, big terrorize onto two. Out of mana here on this Dark Willow. Zone, does he actually go in? X Nova on the backside gets the hook shot, finds the Grimstroke. He needs help. They got to burst down this Clockwork or else your Grimstroke is just dead. Charge does come through. They will be able to save the Grimstroke. He'll settle for a support, I suppose. They didn't even try to help that clockwork. He was separated from his team there. The, he was so certain ex Nova. He's like, all right, this is the time I'm going to go in. I'm wrapping behind the enemy heroes, guys. Let's go. And everyone just starts walking away when he initiates. There's, See you later, ex Nova. Yeah, they're actually all sitting under Hawk Vision here mid lane. They knew about it. So Somnus can be just fine. Charge still coming through. The question is, will he cancel? And he's not going to. Another strike is available, but he's stuck inside a Bramble, and Shining is just dead. Too much magic damage coming through from these heroes. And now Som is looking for LWW up on the high ground. Does have the chase. Zone here as well. Remnant to buy a little bit of space, but you can't imagine Somnus is going to let this Bane survive, right? Sonic Wave? Yeah, we'll finish him off. Uh, no getting away from that one. Once the dig was out, uh, he realized he was probably just dead. Now, complete map domination here. Uh, they haven't been able to take care of any of these deep wards that have come out from RNG. I mean, Drow Ranger's had a little bit of space made for her, but she hasn't really done anything to close the network gap between her and Medusa. Nah, we're seeing the Dragonlance, the Manta, almost completed here on the Medusa. And uh, your Ancient Stack. They, I mean, they've got vision of this the whole time. They knew you were working on this, and Chalice and Som is going to walk up, take it for themselves. Yep. So you try to multi-shot this, she steals one of the big creeps. That's something. Actually, no, I think it was a small one. That's 40 <laughs> gold. <laughs> oh, no. Bottom lane. Once again, finding Shining here. Hookshot does come through. This hero is such a nuisance for the Spirit Breaker. Nice soul bind onto two. Can they get the Bane here for the Fiends Grip? Is this going to be Zone that initiates instead? Can he finish them off? Nice Astral Step on Ford. Needs one more auto attack. Can he actually do it? Yule Scepter. Is that actually enough damage? It is. <laughs> Gets him. Multishot comes through. He takes on the Clockwork. Put a roar onto the uh, Drow. Nice gust onto this. I mean, there's just nothing left. They've got no damage on these heroes' zone. His kit fully expended. Yep. Chalice might just dive the tower here. Thinking about it. Throws the Axis. Somnus here as well. They get on top of the Bane. There's just, there's just no chill for RNG at this point. LWW. Trying to make his way to the other tree line. Gets the Fiend's Grip out onto There's the Queen no of Pain. Way Wait a kill. minute. Somnus. Could Zone catch him? He got a charge. He has Yules. It connects. <gasps> Shining gets him. They're also looking for Chalice now as well. The Nether Strike is there. You got way too far. A huge punish in from Phoenix. And there's Shining with the double kill. So much gold from both of those ending two streaks there. Chalice. Shining just got over a thousand gold. Yeah. Your Spirit Breaker is the carry now. I mean, he has a Shadow Blade now. Yeah. Drow Ranger is sitting third on the net worth. Yeah, this is a position one spear breaker. <laughs> All right. I thought I was like, yeah, RNG, this dive totally fine. No big deal. But uh, yeah, ended up doing a lot of damage there on uh, the Void Spear. They need to take him out quicker inside these team fights. I mean, yes, as this goes into the late game, it's only going to be Drow Ranger that can output enough damage to take down some of these RNG heroes. But I mean, honestly, Zone eh, has a Yules there to try and keep himself alive. Still gets stunned, but by the Curse Crown. Hookshot comes, but he finds the Drow Ranger. A great targeting there. In comes the Sonic Wave Drow falling incredibly low. Just the auto attacks there from God King will find the kill in Zone. Dissimulate? Does he have any Astral Steps? He does, but doesn't manage. Oh, he didn't. Actually, doesn't manage to get out. Yeah, you get the green bar at the top of the screen uh, for any ability with charges. Yeah, it's such a weird deceiving, thing. Deceiving. Uh, yeah. Interaction, but into Roshan they go. 4k gold lead still for RNG. X Nova, gotta be a little bit careful here, actually, buddy. Whoa. Uh, I mean, they've cut the Vlad, so he's feeling confident as he went in there. A Chalice left to tank this one up. Come with the Overlord almost completed, I think. After this Roshan, maybe a creep wave or uh, a neutral camp or two. They'll yeah. have that one done. Not a super fast Roche, but they get it at the end of the day, and God King will be able to pick him up, pick up that Aegis. Kaya Sanj done up on the Queen of Pain. 
That's a pretty big item. Yeah. Necessary against a Bane as well. I feel like we see Kaiosan picked up like almost every single game on the Quaff. The extra burst damage gives you the status, it doesn't allow you to play a little bit further forward. Shining still doing pretty big work on this Spirit Breaker, but it's one of those things that there is just so many answers to this hero. Like you got you got Dark Willow again, like we, they were talking about on the panel. You just drop a Bramble, and there's a chance Spirit Breaker is going to hit it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Clockwork as well, one of the uh, most annoying heroes for him to deal with. Charging up onto God King. He just got the Aegis, but might lose it right away as in comes Zone and friends. All right. Can he keep himself alive? Doesn't look like Astro Step on forward. They get the Aegis. Time to bail. They got what they wanted. They get the D Ward as well. They get the punish but they're running the right into the side of RNG. They predicted exactly where they want to be. Hookshot does come through, but who has he found? It's just getting... Oh, it's actually M77 on the Drow. Somnus with the chase as well. You need to help him out. LWW caught out top by the Beastmaster. Sonic Wave. Not available quite yet. Seven seconds. They're still it. looking for him. Scream comes in. They get the kill. Chasing all the way to the tower. Yeah. He's trying to look for a punish here on zone, but it doesn't end up catching the Queen of Pain on the way back in. So Drow Ranger down again. Third on the net worth is your position one. And again, RNG know that it has to be the Drow Ranger who carries this game. Nobody else is going to scale and damage like she is. So doing everything they need to secure themselves this victory. And yes, Chinese having a decent game. He managed to find a couple of kills on the Spear Breaker as uh, RNG were trying to disengage before, but by himself, it's just not enough. 6.4k hero damage right now on Drow, and yeah, she's a late game hero. She hasn't come online yet, but I don't see this improving anytime soon. No, I mean, with how, how farmed this Medusa is, she's nearly double your net worth. It, it doesn't feel like it's going good. Shining, I mean, trying to make some space, baiting them here in the mid lane. Bulldoze protecting him for the moment, but there it is once again. X Nova with the hook shot, grabs the Spirit Breaker, and Oh, gets the bash? Nah, I was like, maybe with the bash you can get out, but no. Nah, with nah, the nah. bash, then charging something uh, a ways away from him. But that one's very tricky. There's like, if you push him behind you and you charge away at like a, a nice tick for the battery assault, you can get away, but there's it's just still so be. much damage there. Yeah. And now, just pushing the tier three towers. AK net with advantage here at 19 minutes in the game. RNG looking very good here in game number two, cleaning up a lot of the uh, mistakes maybe that they made in game number one. Mm -hmm. A little bit easier for them, and unlike uh, game number one, I don't see the solution for Phoenix as this game goes on. I mean, Drow it. I mean, Drow is definitely got the favorable carry matchup this game, but you still have a lot of other issues. Yeah, but that's the issue with Drow. You get on top of her. Uh, you need someone else on your team doing damage that can punish you committing so much on the Drow. This game, it just isn't there. Like, Spirit Breaker is a decent disengage, but uh, as much damage as he did in that one team fight in the bottom lane underneath that tier two tower, I Smoke don't think Zone is capable of doing charge coming through by himself. Okay, into the ink spell. They might actually be able to take down the noose, but he cancels the nether strike. Beautiful hook shot, but there it is. The Soulbind into the Double Fiends grab. They get Clockwork, they get Medusa. Okay, Neff, this time, I mean, I don't. You, you've been saying that I've been cursing every team, but uh, you might want to <laughs> check yourself, buddy. I mean, that Medusa was too far forward. Yeah, she yeah. definitely dies there. I'd never claim she would. <laughs> Let me just uh, backpedal a little bit here. <laughs> no, I mean, that is, uh, that is definitely an avenue of getting back into this game. You're right, Medusa too far forward. Didn't have the full mana either, so. Yeah. I'm not sure how much of the uh, the map they'll be able to take back here on Phoenix, though. Uh, they only have another, what, 24 seconds. Roar, back they up. caught Spirit Breaker. Didn't get Bulldoze off either. Tries to pop the Nether Strike. Does he have Invis? He does. Does, though. More than enough. Gets slapped by the Golem. Wasn't able to charge away. I think he would have died uh, in the middle of that charge if he had gone forward. And, you know, you do still have Rocket Flare on X Nova. Could have finished him off with that one. All right, well played by Chalice. I mean, it is a great performance from him in this game. Helm of the Overlord. I'm curious what his next item is going to be. I mean, we saw a uh, Crimson Guard build come out um, on Beastmaster before. This game, he might just opt for like a Blink Dagger or something, so we'll see. It's going to flying out right now on the Courier. But tier two falls bottom. God King back into the jungle. He's like, all right, maybe I don't want to fight quite yet. I'm going to get this Eye of Scotty. You guys just keep doing your thing. Yeah. He's, uh, he's farming pretty quickly. Once he's got the Eye of Scotty completed, though, I, I think he's going to be a bit too tanky for this magical burst. I mean, you do have the kills there with Fiend's Grip. Uh, the fact that it does so much damage and removes your max mana is mm -hmm. a great tool for them to do so. Hook shot mid. Bane caught here by X Nova. No four staff quite yet, so easy kill there for the clockwork. And it is going to be the Blink Dagger for Chalice, so these uh, Blink Roars 
I'm really good at catching the drown. That's, that's one of the big things right now, right? Like, they need to be able to get on top of this hero. They have the Queen of Pain, they have the Clockwork, but now your Beastmaster can do it. Yeah. Oh, YP found bottom, trying to do his best here, but Chalice, not going to tolerate it. A little bit surprised they end up... Oh, no, Curry's end up being fine. A bit surprised they end up committing the Roar for that one, but I guess they figure uh, until we take this next Roshan, we're probably not going to want to... Uh, take high ground. Yeah, and Rora isn't it like an exceptionally long cooldown ability either. Kills them down a little bit, but now just pressing their advantage, keeping uh, Phoenix boxed into their base. I have Scotty completed now on the Medusa as well. So we're gonna see when this Roshan responds in the next two minutes here. But I imagine with this next Aegis, it this is going to be the side of the match. Whether or not uh, they're gonna be able to close out the game, you can defend high ground reasonably well, but X Nova doesn't miss, baby. He gets another hook shot here onto the Spirit Breaker. Bulldoze not available in the rotation in from Phoenix. Plenty of damage. Asana's gonna be able to secure the kill. Yeah. Quick rotations there. Definitely worth it to grab uh, Shiny, punish him from being able to cut these waves that push too far into your towers. Smoke up bottom. Looking for it. Oh, there it is. Just the blink out. He knew that this was coming. Yeah, they don't bother going for the helm of the Overlord creep. And now grouped up, looking to punish them if they can catch them uh, moving any further out of their base. Try to scout with a rocket flare, but don't catch anything. They do see zone in the mid lane, though. So you do have an alternate damage source now, zone with the Aghanim Scepter. Mm -hmm. it, this hero does a lot of damage once you uh, get to level 18 as well. So um, we'll see if he's able to deal with some of these supports. The Blink, the Roar does catch the Bane. He's just targeting these supports, making their life so miserable. LWW trying to keep himself alive will be okay. Soulbind onto Somnus. Bramble going to get caught there by the uh, Void Spirit. Terrorize will be able to interrupt that Fiend's Grip, and Somnus is out. They find themselves a kill onto the Bane. Clockwork a little bit too far into the base. Goes down here to the Drow Ranger, and outside the base they find Shining. Trying to make his way in. Zone goes in. Nice catch onto Somnus. Gets the kill. Well done by Zone. M77, though. He needs help. Chalice is not done. Chops him down with the axes. And God King going to be forced to pop that stone gaze. It kind of looked like Zone DC'd in the middle of that fight. Yeah, it did. Uh, did you <laughs> see that? was coming out from him there. Yeah, I did. But uh, that fight was a little bit too difficult for him to take anyways. That uh, Interrupting the Fiend's grip off onto them ended up uh, just you know completely decimating them as they grabbed the base zone. Chal I mean, Chalice is out of mana. Zone's got abilities here. Yeah, I mean, okay, just too much damage, too much slows from these boars. Yeah. That Clockwork getting silenced as he went in, though. Uh, managed to get his hook shot off there. Just uh, completely melted once he was inside the base. I mean, he managed to find the kill there onto Somnus. You know, it, it, it's not, not the worst trade, I would say, for Phoenix. Like, they get something, uh, but they need a lot more to come back into this game. 13k advantage still for the side of RNG. 15 to 29, and this Medusa is just becoming more and more terrifying. Yeah. Picks up the blink. I don't think she's going to upgrade this one for a while, but she wants to be able to get on top of the drought. Same sort of, I mean, you build this on almost any carry when you're playing against the drought ranger. They go in, Chow's the Roar catches, Shining, but Bulldoze gets him right out of it, but it doesn't matter. Somnus there with a the follow-up damage, and now Hookshot will connect. Sonic Wave as well. They get themselves a second. YP forced after the low ground, but M77, he's all alone up on the high ground. Ends up getting forced staffed in by mistake. He's going to go down as well as YP. Triple kill there for Somnus, and it's all falling apart here for Phoenix Gaming. Yeah, he turns around to try to slow them down, but that was the, the Grimstroke, isn't it? And that is it. They've got nothing left. They know. Dude, Chalice <laughs> crushed. I mean, Chalice and X Nova, man. They actually owned this game so hard. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, this Clockwork just always where it needs to be. And Somnus ended up making a ton of plays with this Queen of Pain as well. But RNG looking a lot cleaner in this game number two. It, Looks like when they find their stride, there is some amazing coordination. But uh, unfortunately, maybe the fact that we only have three weeks for this uh, DPC here is cost them a lot and maybe stressing them out a little bit more. But they yeah, it, today. it feels like, in, I mean, game one, we saw this yesterday. Game one yesterday was a little bit uh, sloppy from them. Game one here today, <laughs> also <laughs> a little bit of <laughs> a uh, like struggle. But uh, here we see in game two, much better performance. Yeah, A lot cleaner. Not really any mistakes. I mean, not really any like really glaring mistakes. A couple pickoffs here and there, but hmm. they managed to hold it together and close out the game. Uh, they did an amazing job of picking apart this Drow Ranger. Itemized very well. Somnus ends up getting the MVP for this match, but uh, yeah. Uh, congratulations to RNG for winning uh, game number two. A quick 2-0 against them. Doesn't feel too good for Phoenix. Now they sit to 0 in 8 right now in the DPC. It's a rough start. Very rough start for uh, Phoenix. I mean, it's one of those things where we knew that it was it's a brand new team, a lot of new players that are coming in here. 
um, you know, how they're going to fare up against arguably some of the best teams in the world, right? So it, it is, it, it's not one of those things where it's like these guys, um, they just maybe lack the experience, you know? Yeah, well, again, what better uh, place to earn some experience than a C and DPC upper division? Yeah. Hopefully they bounce back from this one and they uh, don't take it too harshly. Yeah. Well, uh, we got more Dota coming up here today. It's going to finish up the first series, but we're going to throw it back to our panel. Take it away, guys. RNG get the GG and take down Phoenix in a 2-0 smackdown. Game number two, looking a little bit better than game number one there for RNG, and they do tie off the series nicely. Guys, Somnus, you know, once again, how many times is this guy going to pull it out the back? Yeah, it felt like he needed to do so again. You say it looked cleaner, and I think it's just they won quicker, and it was more so on the back of Somnus. I didn't have to wait to go up on the high ground three times and botch their attempt time and time again or have God King get caught out three times. 
this time they just had Somnus to close it up with the help of Chalice and the rest. Yeah, uh, I always feel that playing uh, in a Medusa style of a, style of a lineup is easier than a dr draw one. Uh, draw allows you to do less mistakes. When you're playing with Medusa, at least you have that ulti, you have mana shield, right? As a, as a position one, your team doesn't have to necessarily be exactly where you are. Phoenix, they struggled uh, with, the dr with, with the draw. Not necessarily as much as with the Medusa. Drow, if you get on top of her early on, you just delete her from the game, and that's what Somnus was doing. To your point, he was constantly jumping the back lines, deleting the Drow from the game, and then from then on onwards, you're playing versus a team without the carry. It's kind of easy. Somnus, a bit of a superstar in this series, and a superstar in general, and we have the pleasure of speaking to him. Hello, Somnus. Um, so... Slightly rough performance on game number one, um, but you guys did come out with a win. Great 2-0 in the end. Do you believe that your team is progressing in the right direction? Hello,Somnus,首先恭喜你们拿下这场比赛的胜利,然后一开始的话,其实第一局还是打得稍微有些困难,不过最后还是2比0成功赢下了比赛,你觉得现在队伍是在一个正确的方向上吗? 啊,是的,我们在慢慢找自己的问题,然后... Uh, I think so. We are trying to figure out our own problem and we are trying to fix them. So your next match is going to be against PSG LGD. Very big opponent. It is a long time away. You've got about a week to prepare. What kind of things will you be doing in that time? The下一场的对手应该是PSG-LGD,一个非常强力的对手,当然你们也有充足的时间将近一周的时间去为他们做准备,你们会做些什么样的准备呢? We will have a lot of scrimmage for sure, and we will uh, make sure we emphasize something we think is important against LGD. In these scrims, are you experimenting and trying new things, or are you sticking to a core idea and trying to push that idea as far as you can? So,今天训练的话,你们会去尝试一些新的想法吗?还是说你们会把自己认为正确的打法会去贯彻到底?应该会去尝试一些新的东西吧,因为毕竟时间还有很多嘛。We uh, have a lot of time, so we definitely gonna try something new. Cool. Lizard? Um... Yeah, Nomad pretty much took all my questions, so I'm wondering, uh, <laughs> RNG, do you guys uh, do anything besides Dota together? Do you uh, maybe play, I don't know, table tennis or go to the gym together, anything like that? I want to know what you guys are doing now, do uh, yeah, we, we have a lot of things to do together. We we planned it to go to gym together, but it was the schedule is always in the morning, so that plan got ditched. And later on we we just uh, we play some auto chess together after screams. Yeah. Cool. Sounds like you guys get on well. Um, I want to ask, if you were to be stuck on a deserted island and you had to choose one of your teammates to take with you to help you survive, who would you bring? Uh, what 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 makes him useful in that situation? Uh, yeah. uh, Chalice know, knows a lot. He's a master of all kind of stuff. <laughs> master of all. <laughs> yeah. Wise man. Yeah. Speak up. I kind of want to know uh, who's the one who's always bailing on the gym. Why are plans getting cancelled? If there's always that one guy, I'm the guy here. Who's the guy who's always bailing on the gym for you guys?
，我啊，啊，咪，哈哈哈哈哈哈 ，Jeff Lemon， 啊。Get back to a little bit more serious. Is there a different vibe or dynamic here with RNG than there is、uh, with,、uh, say, Elfin or OGD? 嗯，就是再问点正经的问题吧。就是现在在 RNG 之后，队内的氛围啊，或者说整个团队的气氛，跟之前你在呃小香或者在老干爹的时候有什么不一样的地方吗？嗯、呃，差不多吧，感觉就都挺好的吧。对，然后。区别可能就是，呃，就是，呃，有些选手就是经历的那些大比赛比较少，所以可能还不够成熟吧。I think it's pretty much the same. We all have good vibes, and、uh, the difference is that we have some new players that hasn't hasn't experienced a lot of、uh, offline tournaments, so they need to grow up. Interesting. So. Um, uh, would you say that you are kind of taking a mental role with God King, or is someone else helping him more? 嗯，就像你的话，会是对内，比如说给华联做这种精神方面的一些导师一样的这种工作吗？还是说其他人会去带领这个新的新的人？呃，就是我一般会把问题，就是有时候会直接跟他讲，然后有时候会通过就是。呃，李队跟他讲，因为就是我跟他认识的时间不长嘛，但是李队跟他认识了很久。呃、uh, ，sometimes I will tell him、uh, the problem directly. Uh, other times I will tell our manager since uh he he's uh he he's been known Hua Lian for a long time. So sometimes it's better to、uh, use a different approach. Very interesting. Very insightful. All right, we won't take up any more of your time, so that you don't have an excuse to skip on the gym today. Thank you very much, Somnus, and thank you so much for coming to talk to us. Thank you for your interview. Okay. Excellent. Well,、yep. very interesting. Yeah,、uh, a lot of similarities between、uh, Somnus and Beacup. Who knew? I must be such a good player at Dota. Hopefully, you know, just bailing on the gym is not where our similarities end. <laughs> the glasses too. I've got a lot of Dota power. Just I'm yet to harness it. Yet to harness it. It's so much untapped potential. Yeah, yeah we just don't know about it. Someone's got to hit me like a maple tree. Tap me up. <laughs>、uh, anything else you found interesting in that interview, Lizard? I was just skipping the gym. I'm disappointed. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, after you know seeing seeing you on the panel, there you know it might be、uh, empowered. It's about the discipline,、that. you know. It's not about the gains. It's about the discipline. You build that. You go every morning. Suddenly,、uh, you build that discipline. You won't be pushing high ground when it's not the right time. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. So、uh, yeah, to improve in Dota, you must improve at the gym, huh? It's、uh, all about that mentality. As、uh, the the gachi mentality yeah, right yeah. there. Alrighty, guys,、uh, that is the end of this series, and it was a very good one indeed. And of course,、uh, they do take the victory in the end. RNG closing it out as expected. Now stick with us. We've got plenty more games coming up, so don't go anywhere. We're going to take it over to a break. After which, we shall be back with our second series of the day. We'll see you soon.
E-Home versus Asta is the game we have on the cards, and Ricky and Black are the panelists we have to talk about it. Indeed, a very important game for both of these teams, a statement game, if you will. I'm going to let you guys tell me why this one's important. Start with you, Ricky. I'm excited, man. These are two teams tied right now, two to one. And uh, we saw yesterday E-Home drop their first series, Aster lost their first series against LGD and are now off uh, on a pretty good spree. So this is a big game for both of them. Obviously, going up to 3-1 and one puts you in a really good position to make it to the Major. Yeah, also Asta's probably considered second best team right now. So if EO manages to beat them, they can definitely put themselves at a much higher position in the, throughout the league, also with people's opinions. Because I think a lot of people are still underestimating them quite a bit, including myself. I'm not quite convinced like that they're super good yet, like how... My Love two these colleagues, guys. come are, on, but <laughs> believe they definitely have some magic to them, you know. Like, even when they're behind, they don't look lost at all. Like, their in game shot calling seems to be pretty good. Except yesterday, the two drafts they were just pretty bad. Like, they got yeah. out drafted yeah. twice, that's why they lost. But it didn't really feel like they got outplayed as much as they really just got out drafted, which is hopefully an issue they can fix for today. Yeah, yeah, I mean, drafting's, you know, I'd say an easier issue to fix than uh, making sure your in-game calls are correct. And I think overall in-game, E-Home's been one of the teams which is impressing me the most. I mean, these guys just seem very on point with the calls they're making, and they seem to have a strategy, which I feel like a team such as RNG are perhaps lacking. You know, we don't see the same level of coordination. It makes sense, though. I mean, these these players have actually been playing together longer than almost any other team here in Division 1 outside of LGD. I mean, they played together through Division 2 on Phoenix. They move into Division 1. They get poached by E-Home. But realistically, it's still four of the, the original five. I mean, 7E joined them a little bit later in the season. But the other three, I mean, they've been playing together for a minute now. Yeah, that's also how you win games, right? Against, yeah. like, stronger teams. Yeah. Like, through strategy, through just playing together as a team. Because individually, you're probably a little bit worse than them. But if you can get all the pieces together, then... Let me take games off these teams. Absolutely. And on your hand, of course, we have Team Aster. Team Aster, you know, as you mentioned, the kind of second place team. And it's interesting you talk about uh, teams playing each other for a long amount of time because, as I mentioned in yesterday's community panel segment, uh, XXS and Baboka are actually the second longest pair of players playing together out of anyone in the world. And they're actually closing in on, uh, on, on, on Fly and no tail who are currently in spot number one so this year provided they don't break apart then it's very likely that they will overtake them and become the most experienced duo in dota which is insane to think about i actually didn't know that that that's that's a really surprising and pretty incredible stat actually yeah. makes a lot of sense though because yeah. they're playing the post three and four and they're probably yeah. buddy buddy you know wherever they go whether it's karaoke they're always singing this song together <laughs> uh, a lot of bonding time Ogre Magic yeah, it's like charles and x nova right it's the same idea yeah yeah, yeah. I actually, I mean, it's interesting because I was, I was speaking to uh, uh, Knoxville about this because I came to him in preparation for um, the series with RNG in it. And I was saying, how f how high up the rankings are they? Um, and and, uh, and Knoxville was like, oh, they're actually not very high, Chalice and Exxon over there. They're down in like the 20s. Mm -hmm. But XXX and, uh, and, and Baboka are actually like super high up there. They're number two and soon to be number one. And I was like, wow. That's uh, that, that that caught me off guard as well. So uh, yeah, I take uh, you know that's uh, that's that's not me finding that one out. That's uh, of course a uh, shout out to Knoxville for that one because that's insane. Um, and yeah, Asta always going to be a formidable force because of that fact and just the fact that they make such a core strong team. And they've always been beating on the China region, haven't they? Like even last season. Yeah, Asta has always been the dominant team in, in China, right? It's just the the biggest issue everyone had with them, especially the Chinese community. It's like, <laughs> yeah. why are you taking a spot from a team that could do so much better internationally? Because yeah. they always flop very badly. They lost like, in the first round, the most they've gotten. At what did they get at tier 8? Or did at they get TI? They bottomed out. 12th or 16th even? Six, 12th, yeah, they bottomed out 16th. They got eliminated ah. first round by Quincy Crew. Yeah, well, then now you know why the Chinese community was so angry with them. But... Uh, yeah, I don't honestly know why that is, but I had a I had a similar problem when I played for Team Faces. We would crush everything in SEA, and then when we go to a national tournament, we just can't perform at all. Always last place or second last, and nobody can really figure out the issue. Yeah, and yeah, 
I mean, it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy, though, isn't it? Because, you know, you're saying, well, we're really good at playing in our own region. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're super comfortable playing in your own region. You know, you're more free with your gameplay, still taking it seriously. But you know what you need to do to win, and everyone's very confident. And then when you get to the international stage, that old ghost comes creeping on up again upon you. And you're saying, well, are we going to make the same mistakes again? And you're shaken. And it's, it's, would you say that's, that's kind of what happened with Faceless as well? Uh, potentially. But even in Faceless, we had players that were very seasoned, you know. So nerves yeah. shouldn't really play a big role. But I guess they still do. They will always. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, maybe. I mean, Asta also had some inexperienced players, right? Like White Album. So it definitely makes sense. Yep, 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 but now shaking things up a little bit, uh, especially with the addition of Ori as well. I mean, talk to me about what he's brought to this team, Ricky. I mean, he's such an insane player. <laughs> he is yeah. so good, and it's really weird seeing Ori on any other team, but he has played a pretty good tournament so far for Aster, and Aster, honestly, they look to be on an upswing, and that's surprising because they looked so good in their first series against uh, LGD, but they, are, they seem to be doing uh, better and better with almost every series. Like, they are being more consistent. Plus, they're eyes. getting used to the ping. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's true. Uh, yeah, they are playing on ping on a couple of their players, right? So yeah. yeah Where are they playing from? Indonesia. Indonesia? Yeah. Oh, that must not be the best ping. No. When I play from Singapore to China, it's like maybe 80, 90 ping. But I, I'd imagine from, from Indonesia, it should be a little bit worse than that. Yeah, yeah I'd imagine so. I, I can't remember exactly. I think I know it's Mole and Baboka. I can't remember who the other one is. But uh, yeah, Simon's cat probably maybe. No, actually, no, it wouldn't be him because he didn't travel. I think for yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. But uh, yeah, the last we heard was that uh, well, the first thing we heard was that they'd be freed by the 13th to come back into the country. But it sounds like uh, it might be till the end of the season now. So that's very unfortunate for Team Master. I think they have to do another quarantine once they get actually into China. They have to quarantine again for that two weeks. That might be it then. Yeah. So until they're actually them, they'll get into China uh, very soon. Yeah. But then. Again, can't play with the team, so hopefully the ping issues will be sorted out at least. Yeah. Uh, and then we got another waiting period until they can actually play. And then they've got to go to the major. So, yeah, uh, yeah you get to spend maybe a, a couple of weeks at home. Would be uh, nice though, right? Quarantine, knowing that you're in a major, they're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Just enjoy the hotel, relax, you know, yeah. get a bit of room service in. Stay a bathtub full of water, thing. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring in a little squeaky duck. <laughs> Do all Chinese hotels have a squeaky duck? I don't think they do, but I know Ice, has, Ice always brought his own, so he was very well <laughs> he prepared. Actually, he did. He always has a duck with him. Yeah, but I don't know if he actually used it or it was just to troll people, but mm. he had one. Good luck charm, maybe? Potentially. Some people are superstitious, you never know. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring a duck with me to events. That's Would you put a hat on yours? I'd put a little cowboy hat on it, obviously, being a... Yeah, yeah, I'd have NA to put boy. a top hat on my... Yeah, uh, you got you to gotta dress them up. What would yours wear, Black? I don't know. I never had a duck, to be honest. You could just glue some like big muscly arms. I was just say put put like leather gloves on it. Wait, wait, protein powder on it. <laughs> Alrighty, we do have a draft just around the corner, which means it's time to say hello to our draft master. Hello, sir. Today we have Nev guiding us through the draft for this game. Uh, what are your thoughts on this uh, series before we get into the uh, picks and bands? Well, first of all, while I'm standing at this desk here, it's Nef Sensei, please, respectfully. Of course, of course, Nef Sensei. Yes, indeed, as uh, your Twitter handle suggests. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but today we're expecting to see you know, a lot of Bane, one of the most picked up heroes inside uh, the tournament. Uh, I know that uh, on the side of E-Home, Morphling has been valued quite a bit, but uh, Aster, not so much. Another thing to look forward to is potentially an SF pick. Uh, E-Home kind of laughed at it when uh, they saw IG pick it up against them, but... Uh, does seem like they value it on the other side here. Ori ended up playing that one the other day to pretty good effect. So I wonder if uh, they're going to take advantage of the fact that Ehome laughed that off when IG picked it up and try to run it here. It would be an interesting thing to see. Would indeed. Well, let's get into the draft for game number one then and find out exactly what heroes are going to be picked up by these two teams as we head into this best of three matchup who could possibly decide the second place if everything goes how we think it's going to go. But of course, in the Chinese region, it never does. Yeah. It's never that simple. Nope. No. And there, we see, oh, there we see the Bane band out before anything else. Uh, ZZQ has been playing way too much of this, you know. I'm sure he's just as relieved that uh, he doesn't have to play Bane as Aster is uh, not having to play against it as Hero a little bit boring. We talked a little bit about that one yesterday with uh, Lizard. It becomes a little bit annoying when you play these same boring support heroes game after game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the other thing too, we're going to see the Death Prophet, Spirit Breaker IO, like a lot of heroes that we've been seeing picked in the first phase. Um, even teams that seemed like they had an answer for the Spirit Breaker. Black, what do you think? Is, is this hero actually just too strong? 
Uh, I mean, the win rate would suggest otherwise. That's true. But, it has a pretty bad win rate. But when you play against it, you definitely feel like it's a little bit strong. And that's always the question, though. Are people not dealing with it correctly? Because in some games, it also feels like really bad. You know, you charge in, suddenly you just get used up, or like a Shadow Demon purges you, suddenly you just die instantly. Because your health pool is actually not that high. Your armor is not that... You don't have that much armor. Well, you have decent, but it doesn't scale so well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're, we're talking about like mid game, like a team fight. You run yeah. to a team fight because uh, SB is really only OP when you like run in, you run out, you run in again, like yeah. ten times. Another thing to keep in mind for the SB ban is just the fact that Aster was talking about that one a lot in their interview yesterday in the Chinese region. So they might have given away a little bit much uh, for E Home, and then they just decide, okay, well, if they value the SB so much, we'll just ban that one out, so we don't have to worry about it. You bait it. Mm, got I don't him. actually want it. Yeah, maybe maybe Aster <laughs> playing the next level uh, play gotcha, baby. We what, didn't wasn't want that a TI? Anyway. But it was a good team. Like, oh, I was so OP. They never yeah, played it. Yeah, then they never it. played it once. Yeah, that happened too. <laughs> Just 3D, uh, 4D chess there. Yeah. That's smart in the enemy team. That's uh, possible as well. Ooh, I'm very happy seeing Zeal, Pango, and then they immediately ban out the Bloodseeker. The games where he's been allowed to play as Pango without a hard counter, he has owned. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Even the one with the hot counter, he did decently well on it. Yeah, you have to rely on shield crash, but he didn't really go down to the rupture at all in the early mid game. Like he was still able to do uh, make plays with it. Yeah, mm. and if you can't get the bane kunkka, just get the lion kunkka. Fulfills like a similar purpose. You just have a setup stun, and the burst damage that comes from kunkka and uh, lion in the in the mid game is very nice. Very strong lane as well. They want to land it together. And of course, uh, Queen of Pain and Pangolier is uh, the slightly more common hero opening um, out of these two drafts. We don't really see a ton of Lion Kunker. Um, Kunker, kind of medium popularity, I'd say. Queen of Pain, very, very popular. Uh, Pangolier kind of comes in later on in the draft, usually. Uh, but we've seen this combo together six times so far. Yeah. LGD is definitely going to make it more popular, though, because they're first phasing Kunker every game right now. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. No, the Kunker Lion, definitely. Mostly, right. or go ahead, yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I feel like Kunker is one of the stronger heroes at the moment just because you can flex it. It offers disable, so your position four and five doesn't necessarily need to be holding on to that. Uh, God, incredibly tanky. There's tons of different items you can build on the hero as well. So he feels good for a number of reasons, even if it uh, is a bit less commonly picked up as your first two heroes. Uh, it looks like both teams are just kind of reacting to what uh, their opponents are doing. I mean, the Bloodseeker we've seen is a counter to like uh, the Pango and uh, the Razor and uh, the Death Prophet pretty often, who has ended up uh, actually make well, no, that one's banned out, my mistake. <laughs> that one's uh, banned out, but the Razor's uh, just banned as well. I guess they just didn't want to deal with that one if they saw the Bloodseeker ban, it was something that was going to be coming up. Yeah. Alina picked up now, and I think you need a better way of jumping the back line in order to get on top of her right now. I think the Queen of Pain and uh, the Pangolier, not quite good enough. You want more. Yeah. <laughs> Neff demands more. The Draft Master demands more. Yeah, it's a typical response to Quap. It's actually one of the better laners against Queen of Pain. One of the easier lanes for Lina. And uh, I mean, Rubik, we have seen, even if there's like not the best spells to steal, if you're like a really comfortable Rubik player, the hero can make a lot of plays. Once you have the shard, you can save heroes with it. Your, your setups can be very, very good. But I feel like it's also like a specialist hero, where mm -hmm. it really shows when a guy has like 100 or like a thousand plus games on it, right? Like and that's Planet, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Like this is one of his. This is one of his signature heroes. He has a couple. Rubik yep. is definitely one of them. Even in, like you said, a non-ideal Rubik game, it feel it doesn't feel too bad picking it if you have that specialist player. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about a non-ideal Rubik game. Isn't this an amazing Rubik game? It's so pretty far? good so far. It, it's Arena pretty good. Yeah, yeah. He's but stealing, also, he, he picks it in the line, I think, twice so far. Yeah, yeah. Lots of good spells to, uh, spells to steal and uh, ghost ship too. I mean, I like Into Conquer as well, because even if you're quick enough to get the X-Marks, then you can save people from their own X-Marks combo, because you just uh, x mark yeah. and then yours takes priority if it's later. Which most people don't even uh, know how to work still. Even your own teammates will be like, <laughs> What's happening? I'm going all over the place. <laughs> I disrupted yeah. myself anyway. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two big saves coming out then. Well, I... one big save and one medium save. But yeah, do you feel like this is... Uh... I, I don't like that, to be honest. Like, like the support though looks really... Just weak, like squishy, no damage. It's like, what is the SD for? You know, it doesn't hard counter anything. It doesn't really well, combo can, with anything. You can get away from, uh, you know, the lion jumping on top of one of your allies, dropping the hex on them, or, uh, you know, the X boat combination coming up from Kunkka. So it is useful for that. They can get these disengages. Quap is able to get away if she plays a little bit too aggressive here, as long as the SF plays pretty far back. Yeah, what about the laning phase, though? 
to, uh, to you're me. right about that one. The laning phase is going to feel a little bit underwhelming, and this puts a lot of pressure onto uh, Zeal to make initiations and plays on the Pango. So they're going to have to pick uh, a frontliner as their last hero that can start fights. I feel like right now their draft is definitely lacking, like you're talking about. Oh, the quadruple finger Laguna Blade. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much burst. Hell yeah. Crazy. Lots of laser beams, dude. Astros, I'm here uh, for it. They're ready to rave. I mean, one of the things that Shadow Demon does do well is you have Demonic Purge against the Lena. It, it, like, Lena is a hero that does rely a lot on mobility and a lot of positioning. She's a very position-based hero, and so if you do get the Demonic Purge onto her, it's really rough. BKB won't help you, so... But it's also a hero that once you have that BKB and that health talent at 15, you can just stand your ground. Yeah, you don't you have, have to, to run. Yeah. And right now, they don't have a lot of BKB piercing damage, just a wave. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Phantom Assassin is going to be a contested hero uh, for this uh, last pick here on both these teams. If it doesn't get banned out, is you know, the backline jump for both the Shadow Demon and the Rubik is valuable against Ehome, and a way to get on top of both the Lion and uh, the Lena is necessary here. Looks like Ehome's considering this to be a safe lane, Kunkka. I mean, we've seen it on LGD a couple times. The Wraith King was my number one pick for Ehome, and they do ban that out. It would have been very good just to sit up on the front line and kind of dangle for their side. Yeah. Um, and he's a hero that's like really easy to get the Shadow Demon disruption onto. Yeah. I think Marsh should be another hero Ehome might want to ban. It goes super well with Kunkka and oh, Lina. Yeah. Honestly, like, Astra's draft looks really scary. Astra's draft does look very scary. Yeah, like, Ehome's draft is uh, there's, like, a weakness here and there, but I can't say the same with the Astra draft. Yeah, it looks really good. So many stuns, too. Like, oh, every hero has a stun. That's the team you want to play in, right? Like, anywhere yeah. you go, you're just going to have someone ready to play Dota with you. Like, that feels so good. On the side of Ehome, complete opposite. Like, Rubik, Shadow Demon, like, uh, they can do stuff, but not enough stuff for my liking. Yeah, I mean, they, they could pick PA now if they wanted to, which is good against Lina. It's not that good against Kunkka, though, because once you get that boat out, you jump in, you're in a pretty bad position. Uh, like against Kunkka, you usually want heroes that can fight, like for a long duration, right? Like, you can outlast that boat. Like, maybe Lifestealer comes to mind. Gyro. He Hero's not that great, though. I reckon they're going to go Gyro. On e Gyro on e -home. Yeah. Gyro is uh, difficult because you don't have enough to enable you. I think you need that very heavy burst damage to take somebody out at the beginning of a fight here, and that's something that Phantom Assassin offers. Lifestealer mm -hmm. would be okay as well, but... Ooh, oh, of course, nice. yeah. Nice. Temple this makes Assassin's sense. dead. Dude, no, yeah. Mars looks like even better now, though. I mean, we I kind of forgot about this. Like, Ehome's been running the safe lane TA a lot. Like, it's something yeah. that's banned against this, this team quite often. But you're right. Mars is pretty good. I actually don't think it's a great counter to the TA. I think it's just good against the... It helps their team fight more yeah, than anything. Yeah. I mean, it complements the lineup well. And in the lane, like, sure, later on, it's not the greatest hero against TA, but I think in the lane, it's quite nice because you actually have, like, the same Full range. toggle. Yeah. <laughs> it's so annoying. It it the off lane Ogre. That's what I want. Yeah. I absolutely agree with Black, though. Uh, oh. Mars is... Practically the perfect pick here. Yeah. If you get a refresher orb and a BKB in the late game, there's just no way for Ehome to be able to fight into Aster. And the draft is pretty well rounded already. Why not just pick the best solution of the TA? How about you just go for Night Stalker, maybe? Night Stalker. Are you sure? Night they have Stalker, so many options yeah, right now. Yeah, it's like Night Stalker it, with it, Blink and Ink Swell is so strong right here. Like their draft is done on Aster, I feel like. like they're, they're, They've got their draft. They're just picking a like, plus one. Just, yeah, whatever you want. But the cherry on the cake. Wait, you want to play Pudge? All right, let's go. Dude, yeah, sign good. me up, baby. I'm ready Give me for an offlane Pudge. Dude, offlane Pudge is so good. Ah. Oh, it says offlane okay. Kunkka, actually. So, so they go back for the PA. You were right on that one. PA being It ended up hero. being pretty contested in the end. They picked up a Phantom Assassin. I think that uh, Mars would have been pretty good as well, but... You know, I guess they're favoring burst damage here, and they have a lot of it between all their heroes. The PA and the TA is a little bit weird of a matchup, though. Yeah. Like, that, like the PA does the large instances of damage, not a lot. It's of also, like, of damage. weird against, like, Pango. It's not the disarm. greatest against Pango. Yeah. Especially before your BKB, you can't really jump on him, right? Mm -hmm. hmm. I mean, not what I would have picked, but I still think the, the four heroes before that are, like, super good. Yeah, and yeah. I still don't like the, the support the combination of Ehome. They just look very slow, very fragile. That's what Pierre was picked for, right? You just jump the backline and kill them. Yeah, it should be pretty sad life for them. Yep, I saw you go and ask for game one. Unfortunately so. All right. Uh, Neff, what say you, Draft Sensei? It's got to be Aster. I think that Aster, they just have uh, too much strength in this game. They've outdrafted them. And it's like God King said uh, just the other day, drafts matter so much right now in the current meta. I think a lot of people are 
kind of on level skill, or skill doesn't really affect uh, the game so much. You can't really outplay if your draft doesn't shine, and the draft shines here on Aster. Okay. Ricky? Do you really have to ask? I'm going to go E-Home, baby. I want to hear you say I believe in these guys. I see Planet Rubik. I see Zeal Pango. I don't care about Aster's draft. These guys take it home. All right, fair enough, Ricky. I respect the dedication to the cause, but it does look like an uphill climb for Ehome. Can they pull it off? Let's find out with our casters of b -Cop and Lizard. Thank you very much, Nomad. Coming into game number one between Aster and Ehome. Ricky going for that Ehome pick. Do you think there's a lot of faith there behind it? Or is he just uh, going with the team name, going with the team he loves? No, no, no. There's definitely... Uh a lot of love there from Ricky towards Ehom, but I believe that they've got what it takes. Yeah. They've proven that to us before. They've had some wicked drafts before that they made work, and I don't think that there's necessarily anything lacking in uh, the lineup that they're running. Like, right. okay, Queen of Pain on that mid lane versus versus Lina and Kunka later on, you have to itemize against that, but the Pango and the TA, these two should be able to really have a good game. Right, yeah, Aster's lineup, we were kind of thinking about different off laners and didn't really expect the Phantom Assassin. Not a hero. <laughs> I called three out of three band ones. <laughs> yeah, just not looking at the ban list uh, yeah. at all, I guess. But uh, we uh, eventually found ourselves with, what, PA, Kunkka, Lina, Grimstroke, Lion, and Monet. At least for now, just set up mid, but he's just hanging out, yep. hanging around, maybe looking for uh, that first. Well, they did place a ward across the river, get that vision in. We haven't seen much PA. Is this a hero that has been kind of eluded for a reason? I could do that. Is that a pun? Or uh, she, has, she, for a reason? Has, she has evaded the meta for a little while, yeah. but mostly. Uh, because of the bands, like she got banned a couple of times, then you forget about her and you stop picking her because the hero itself is still very strong. Uh, however, usually I like to see PA with some sort of a steroid on her lineup, right? And at the moment, I don't see anything like that on their side. Both is helpful, but uh, you don't even have heroes that want to buy solar crests, right? right? Maybe Konka will, but. Uh, it's not feeling like that insane PA game in which she will just one-shot everyone the moment she gets Battle Fury plus BKB. Yeah, you're not relying on like Magnus. You're not getting those buffs no. of an ogre. But you do have Grimstroke. And I, I say that you know when he gets his shard, it might be a little bit more of a confidence boost. You can jump in with that Ink Swell, feel pretty confident, then pop the BKB as Ink Swell pops. Might give you an extra second or two to get things done. I'm not really... Yeah, it helps. We'll see it, how it goes. It, 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 it helps. I like looking at PA, looking at Drow, these sorts of heroes. I would almost always rather have minus armor on my lineup. Something right. that buffs up my attack speed, attack damage, or minus armor. Some beast masters, some tight hunters, some weavers with uh, with the swarm plus solar crest. Right, these things just feel so naturally great. Yeah, the weaver's been really uh, not like super contested, but it's been one of those picks that feels quite strong and. Uh, mm -hmm. We've seen the swarms be a problem as we take a nice look through the river. We saw that uh, ward with the Frostivus Frost cosmetic gem on it. I'm a big cosmetics guy, but we haven't really seen many of the big cosmetics. You know, FY used to have the mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. the Rubik with the bleak hallucination as well. The his, tusk. His cosmetics are like... If he sold his Rubik cosmetics, he, he could literally buy my house. <laughs> Ah, you know, and I always look. I look at the prices too. I'm like, maybe one day I'll own a, a glitched bleak hallucination Rubik, yeah. and you can get it for some heroes on the cheap, but not other heroes. If you want to buy them, it's like uh, it's a know, bit more difficult. Seventy, sixty thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, that I'm the kind of guy that I'd buy that and then they'd shut down the Dota servers like the day after <laughs> and I'd just be the super market just depressed. crashes oh, instantly, yeah. yeah. Uh, I can definitely see that happening. Yeah, and, and there's just like, there's some cool ones. Silar's got his Lycan that's got the, the Trail of the Burning Doom, which uh, that's why he's got the fire following him. Mm -hmm. And I know there was uh, an Undying that had that as well in the tombstone. Yeah. I forget do, who it was. Do you like that they're putting uh, TA mid? So they swap things around a little bit. Queen of Pain will be on the side lanes, TA mid lane. When it comes to this matchup, Lina should do quite fine. Later on, the TA obviously has some advantages as she can get on top of her, eliminate her fast from the fights, but uh, in the lane itself, it can be 50-50, but usually it's Lina that comes out ahead a bit. 
Monet thinking about going in for Planet. Yeah, this Queen of Pain not really uh, seen much in the side lanes, but they did go to the TA. There has been switches, right? There's been Queen of Pain safe lane and TA safe lane here, here and there throughout the regions. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Is there one that you think, is, you know, minus matchup? So let's not even think about that. Is there one that you think that just feels better overall in the side lane? I think it, it definitely matters on the matchup. It's very important. Uh, Ooh, okay. They get a kill. Getting the first blood on Zeal, that off laner. They take out the Pangolier. Monet was playing aggressive, looking for Planet. I thought maybe that aggression might bite they, them at some point. They too. just go, uh, you get this level two fast enough. You pop the Inkswell on the PA, and it's so easy to kill off anyone with the blink, right? Or even just the slows from uh, from Grimstroke's first spell, from Stroke of Fate. But back to your question before. A Queen of Pain loves playing on that safe lane sideline. Right. Like using the dagger and then following you down to the tier one tower. Like you can't do that on mid lane, right? Like you can harass someone, but he just falls back to the high ground and it's already more difficult. On the safe lane, however, you have more opportunities. Right, X, speaking of opportunities, there might be one here for either side. ZZQ is going after Bobica and they will get the kill there, but do they trade? XXS moves forward and won't find the Shadow Demon, so. Right away, we do see a kill in this safe one as we talk about it. And Shiro on this Queen of Pain, is it? do you go heavy into the Shadow Strike? I think you can. Um, just to dominate the lane hard, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to be the one that's oriented into getting a lot of a ton of farm, right? And they don't really have ways of dodging the Shadow Strike anyway, so uh, I, I wouldn't mind seeing more levels there. By the way, XXS is someone that all the rage was about in the last year. I don't, I don't really hear us talking about him as much anymore. Yeah, XXS stun hits from the Inkswell. Planet, though, is he going to survive with the wand? Swashbuckle only disarms the Grim Stroke. They're trying to get the body blocks, but Monet jumps forward and gets the kill on the planet. Stifle Dagger's zeal, so he'll just walk away. And yeah, go, go back to your point of XXS. He's someone who's played with some prestigious teams. When he played mm -hmm. with IG, the you know that team with Burning and, and OP that won that DAC event, they dominated that event. Mm -hmm. They did dominate it with a Tinker. So I know there are some people who don't like that hero and really mm -hmm. despise when it does well at events. But uh, yeah, he's got a lot of experience and he's certainly one of the foundations on this team. And they've got a lot of veterans here. Like Monet, he's got a lot of time. I, I feel like sometimes when the carry talk happens, not a lot of people talk about him is over mid. They've got the Hex. Do they have the damage get 7e? E? Not enough. Yeah, Ori had a couple of uh, unfortunate missed hits from the low ground. X success. Four stacks, five stacks, and X this success is... just dies. to ZZQ, who will yeah. let himself die to the tower. This is just not an easy lane for a Kunkka. Like, you're playing versus a Shadow Demon and a Queen of Pain. She slows you, then Shadow Demon just stacks up poisons on you. Perhaps takes, uh, you know, the catcher to take down percentage-based HP from you. It's, it's not an easy lane to be in. Yeah, this Kunkka will struggle. can certainly see both side lanes, or at least both off lanes, kind of struggling, because mm -hmm. we see it already, like, Monet's making the aggressive jumps. He's ready to yep. bolster his farm. The only question is, which one of these two off laners uh, contributes more without a lot, without a lot of farm on the in the laning stage, right? My thought is Pang. Once you have probably. the Rolling Thunder, yeah, you're probably. just in those fights. You have a mobility spell, you have Rolling Thunder. They're going Thunder. again. Phantom's Embrace, the Inkswell now pops on two, Stifling Dagger, they'll get the kill on the planet, they might look and kill off Zeal, but he's got a lot of life to work with, Shield Crash, trying to help out and survive, but Zeal eventually will oh, be let. He's fine because of that leave. ring, right? Now they've got the X Shiro, he's going to be pulled back and he'll die to XXS. A little bit surprising with the aggression that Ehome had been throwing, I wasn't sure if Aster were going to be able to get a kill down here. Yeah, really nice uh, small play there from XSS and Lion. Obviously, when Kunkka gets two bracers and the wand, he becomes kind of tanky. Let's put it that way. <laughs> a big boy. He becomes a big boy, and it's not really easy to actually play around him any longer. Yeah. Plus, X marks the spot versus Queen of Pain, one of the best things that you have early on in the game. Add that X and... Felt like once they had that, the damage out on Ashiro, he was dead to rights. Not really any way to get out of that. And it's a 1k lead for Aster at the moment. So things going well. They do lead the net worth with Monet in the top lane. And that has come from the fact that they have played 
really aggressive and succeeded with their aggression. There really hasn't been any counter mm-hmm. from Ehom to deter Monet from going in time and time again. Uh, it just the ink swell and the Phantom's Embrace makes it pretty easy. Yeah, that lane is pretty difficult for um, for Aerobic to play in. I would say that it's much easier for Zeal. You have Swashbuckle, you should be able to get out. But Planet, you just cannot show your face. You have to be doing what he's doing right now, that's hiding in the woods. Sadly, um, I feel that he was a little bit overconfident up to this point. They did stop the bleeding on top lane at least. ZZQ trying to steal these stacks. Laguna Blade with the stun. There's a the disruption. And ZZQ going to throw another stack of the Shadow Poison. Didn't quite get all the creeps. Ori backs off to hopefully secure them. But now they finally land the stun and they will kill off ZZQ. So Ori will get some of this farm. But it's a good job by ZZQ to get over there and just disrupt what Ori was getting. But for the most part, Ori still yeah, for secures the, the For, for the, the most part, it, it, it kind of feels greedy. Uh, I'm caught in the same trap so many times. <laughs> like, you see this juicy stack. You're something like a Shadow Demon, a Phoenix. You don't really have the damage to take it. But maybe if they aren't around for two minutes, you you will. Get those stacks up. And Monet's got level six, but here comes Shiro. Has the Sonic Wave. They're going to try and get Monet out of this one. Here with Siamese Cat, Sonic Wave, Shadow Strike on him. In deny range, but the right click is there for Shiro, and now can Ehom leave? They have the X, they have the ghost ship being thrown from XXS, who made the rotation, so they will trade one for one. It's a three for a one, though, and it does slow down Monet's game, but at the same time, you do have XXS now sitting at the top, and Queen of Pain still middle of the pack off that. Yeah, r really it was a matter of time before that rotation happened. You needed to do it, not only because that's the natural rotation that you should do as a Queen of Pain that's had free farm, but because PA is just being overly aggressive on that. Dominating the lane, yeah. Do they were dominating the lane, but at some point you need to hit the brakes and just take what you've got and run back, right? They've actually, both teams have swapped over. This time, though, Zeal's was ZZQ. Mm -hmm. A pretty natural rotation. One thing that uh, Ehome have got going for them is Queen of Pain perhaps can pressure that top lane a little bit better. Right. And both of these teams don't really have good objective taking capabilities from their offlaners. Like, Kunka on one side, Pango on the other, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, that it's not great. great, yeah. It's not like a Death Prophet that gets in there. Exa exactly. Usually you have at least one of these heroes in the team, so we might look at a pretty slow start of the game, like the first 15 minutes. Yeah, kills are up there, but objective-wise, everybody's safe. Well, at least the towers are for now. And you yeah. see uh, treads into the Battle Fury for Monet. It's not just those brown boots. And he's mm -hmm. also, uh, you know, it, it's not... Just Battle Fury. So many times we see just Brown Boots, yep. Battle Fury. It's sort of a corrosion as well, right? Yeah. When, you, when you get it the way he did, uh, at the timing that he had, it just helps dominate the lane much harder. And <laughs> this is another thing. Like We're talking about heroes that take objectives. They have not a lot of them. But they do have supports that love this kind of a game in which they can just park themselves in front of a tower, defend it forever. Rubik Shadow Demon on one side, both of them great at that. On yeah. the other, you have Grimstroke that excels as, at, at defending. Denied the rune as they were loading up the Stroke of Fate. And Soulbind <laughs> stopping that Rolling Thunder. <laughs> I love how he moved uphill with that thing. Well, yeah, I'm going to get to you. Then, then sees the Pango. Nope. <laughs> Just turns back. I'll, I'll leave. Yeah, I'll leave, sir. Yeah, an ult for an ult. So, uh, basically, in order to take a tower, we will have to see a massive mistake or a massive rotation from one or the other team. And it seems like that's what's happening on bottom. And yeah, maybe they'll get Ori to take the tower. They've got the Earth Spike coming through. Sonic Wave hits on Abobica as well as Monet. They look for the damage. They've got the Fade Bolt. Monet getting low, trying to survive. Goes into the blur. They have the X, but they've already lost the line. They'll lose Monet. The Torrent lands. XXS trying to get a kill here onto ZZQ. But eventually, the disruption comes out and the ult. So, XXS trying to... Well, get his way out of this one, and we'll end up getting the kill on a ZZQ. Yeah, pretty nice kill there on on uh, the Shadow Demon. XXS Ex Ex still in some trouble. They've got three heroes here. They have the stolen Earth Spike. The Fade Bolt lands, and with the control, they'll have the kill, and they'll take away his four times killing streak. Yeah, a little surprised that he decided to not straight run to the right and up to the tower. 
but uh, he at least did get the kill on the Shadow Demon. Overall, a very good fight for uh, Ehome. Like, they killed the PA, they killed the Lion, they finished off the Kunkai as well. It's They're doing everything that they need to be doing right now. And I'm afraid for the PA if she falls behind, because you do have this TA. It's not a hero that can't just press the tempo at some point. Right. And if you aren't ready once that happens, you might just be staring at uh, Lost Roshan without a fight. Top tower. TA right now sitting top of the net worth by a significant margin. And then you see that Monet is now taking a back seat. He's now only at 4,800. Fifth out of six on the core list, if you were to just exclude the supports, as many cores do. They're and still uh, kind of close, right? It's like yeah. 100, 200 gold away from each other. It can change very quickly with a couple of stacks. But the problem for PA is she doesn't really have that Battle Fury, that way of flash farming the stacked Ancients. Yeah, they have about three, four, maybe even five stacks on those Ancients at the moment. And that could be a big jump in farm for the Phantom Assassin. But then I, I think, again... Like I think it, that's for Kunkka. Like, yeah, know. it could even bo bolster yeah. Kunkka up. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's right taking now. it right now. It, it's, it's not really... It would be great for PA, but Radiant she's just not going to happen in time. She, yeah, she can't farm it. So. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, is the Orb of Corrosion a little bit of a bait? You have a good lane, and then you get the Orb of Corrosion, and your Battle Fury timing's a little bit slower. It helps you be more active, and that's definitely what he tried to be in, in, in this game. Sadly for him, it uh, kind of backfired. Yeah. But as you can see, he just took the bottom tier 1 tower, and that Orb of Corrosion definitely helps with it. So. Right. So there are its perks and there, there are perks, pros and cons. Yeah. There's a reason why he bought it. Wow. You can see the aggression from Ehome here. They've got four heroes on the dire side of the river and they, they, inside the jungle. They do, but uh, in the last minute, I feel the Taster got a lot more from the map. And now they're making this rotation with three smokes, probably towards the, their own jungle, right? You want to flush them out. Good read by Ehome. Very, very well read by them. They didn't stick around uh, way too long. Yeah. And they're, look at this. This is just, I love when this happens. This is such, so strategically right. One team goes back into their jungle, carries those sentries, tries to devour the other team, does exactly the same thing into their own, perhaps into the ancients. It's just a treat to watch. This is... I don't, I don't watch this game really for flashy plays. This is... You like the little things. Yeah. But for me, this is the big thing. Exxon, Zeal. No swashbuckle immediately, but does have the disruption. Yeah, the little things excite me as well. The stacking, the efficiency on farming. Those end up being the big things. Uh, and look, these movements on the map, the way you play it, they are the... They are the thing that actually differs from... a a good team, a tier one team from a tier two team. Yeah. Like you can have a bunch of good players win, but they will not win consi consistently unless they understand the way you're Radiant's supposed to be moving. Three man smoke again from Aster. So they used one, then Ehome used one. Now Aster again, trying to find anything. There's a Rubik down bottom that they don't see at the moment. They're gonna cross all the way over, potentially to go for mid. Uri not sticking around though, so making a jump with three heroes. No burst damage from the Laguna Blade available without worry there. And you can see they immediately turn around. They just didn't get what they wanted and probably place. There's a Rubik on the bottom lane. Down. They pinked him out a little bit. Yeah, but, he TP'd uh, mid. Yeah, he TP'd out. Um, one thing the Taster is obviously waiting for is that uh, Alina timing. I'm not sure if she has travels already, what her item build is like at the moment, but. She should be able to fall back after that small camp. Oh no, he's, uh, this is now a greedy play. He's going for one more wave, and that one more wave usually kills you. Yep. Shiro's there. Ori going to try and TP out, but they've got ways to stop this. Got the disruption, and they have the control to get the kill on Ori. And this is all due to that ward on the top lane. You see the Radiant Observer under the tier 2? Yeah. That's what makes that happen. It's because they were on point earlier on, just warding up the enemy jungle. Yeah, that came from that smoke. And finger ghost ship, good combination for XXS to get the kill, and Bobica, I believe, to grab a stack. TA doing Roche. And that's, again, you just said it. Yep. Roche and no response. You can't really, especially if the Lina is dead. 
it's very difficult. You, you, your PA at the moment is not a hero that contributes to fights. So you kind of have to scrape around and find a 4v5. But uh, it, it definitely is on E-Home to push their advantage now. And let's right. see what they can do with the Sages. They'll take the tier 1 over mid so they get one objective out of it so far. And they're looking to push for more. Planet right on the high ground. He's got stolen level 4 Dragon Slave. But we'll see what else he can grab in the midst of a fight. They're, they're posturing up. E-Home know that they have this Aegis advantage and they're not afraid to use it at the moment. Sonic Wave off cooldown. They're ready to go. Yep. Everything's there for them. They're pretty much deciding which way to go at the moment. Uh, the tier 2 on the mid lane is probably the hardest to take. So it's either take the triangle or rotate slowly towards the top lane where you have vision and try and take the tier 2. And just cleaning up the Ancients and making sure that E-Home, or well, making sure that Aster don't have many places to farm. BKB finished for Ori. XXS, he's in the trees and you know, like you said, they're fighting under their vision. And they'll go after Siamese Cat, and they get the kill into the Grimstroke. They'll also take out his Courier. Yeah, Ori was forced to use his uh, BKB. Is that first charge gone? Nine seconds now, down to eight seconds. DZQ, he wants to go for this. He's trying to find the vision to get the disruption. Monet into the trees, TPing, and there he is, getting spotted. So let's see if they can finish off Monet. Doesn't really have a lot to work with. And maybe can jump to the creep wave, but never gets that opportunity. And Shiro gets the kill on a Monet. Ori comes over with a Guna Blade, finds the damage to kill off ZZQ, uh, but not a balance trade. Uh, I'm a full on uh, Ricky E Home convert. Like, I believe <laughs> this team is playing extremely well across the map, across the board. When they get their comfort heroes, like, their movements are just very fluent. Like, yeah. It's enjoyable to watch. The kill on, on the top lane around their wards into the tier 2. Obviously, everything is going r right for them in this game. They're not too far ahead, but they are in full control. And uh, they're keeping that control in by these small kills, like the one on the bottom lane. Not, not really small, these kills on the PA. Yeah. And just to think about where Ehom were last year, you know, their, their roster wasn't bad by any means. They had Fade, Ex Nova, Silar. And, and like switching up Silar a bit as well, right? Yeah, and now they've got this old Phoenix roster under the e home banner, and they look good. And I think this is an up and coming young team that can definitely make things happen. They're Even not they getting so outclassed in these matches. It's not at all. They're more like outclassing Aster. Like yeah. this move, this dodge of the smoke. Let's see if 70 will get caught in the end. Nether Shaw might want to pick that up. There we go. It's too many branches, you know. I don't want to drop them. get that branch again. Yeah, like, okay, now everything changes. <laughs> like, you drop that GG lucky branch, everyone knows what's what's next. You're going to the feed. bottle. Yeah, of course. Disruption to avoid the X, but he still throws the ghost ship out. And that'll slam down onto the Shadow Demon. XXS trying to make something happen. They've got the damage to get the kill on his EZQ. The LSA lands under the Queen of Pain, Bobica. Hit with the Shadow Strike. He's getting low. They've got the Telekinesis. And with the Swashbuckle, Zeal will take out Bobica. They look over at XXS. They have the damage. They've surrounded him. They'll get the kill. This is all without Monet. And like you said, Monet's not really a hero that can get involved at the moment. And he is bottom continuing to farm while the rest of his team tries to hold on to the game for him. These kind of fights are not necessarily what Aster wants to uh, have, but these kind of plays are sometimes plays that you must make. Like, you can't let them just go from one tower to another and take objectives without any contest happening. Yeah. If you defend under, under the tower, most likely it's a full wipe. But like this, if you force their hand, if you initiate on the Shadow Demon, perhaps you can trade two for one or support for a support, obviously, in this situation it didn't really work out for them but Monet is getting closer to the BKB that's really all that matters you want this PA with her BKB as soon as possible and now the BKB lets Monet fight but is it, it's not all the tools they need they still need another item on PA right but it does give the option like Monet doesn't just have to be out of the fight yeah suddenly you have five heroes yeah um, still though that BKB you will be playing into a shadow demon he can purge you still uh, can uh, prevent you from actually dishing out damage and 
being that impactful, but at least you have additional hero that will, will be up there leaving Ori more space to work with. Like, when you're fi fighting 4v5, Lina feels so bad because she's very exposed. Yeah, when Ori's just the target, right? Yeah, Every single time. Exactly. And when you have a PA, it's a bit more messy. There's more people up front. It's it's harder to find that Lina. So four-man smoke from Aster away from Monet. Let's see, they're not going to find anything up here. They're None just of their the smokes outpost. connected. Literally zero smokes connected so no. far. But it's harder, right? Like... You're playing into traps, you're also playing versus a team that's ahead of you, that's kind of in control, so... Every movement feels like it has to be smoked, right? Otherwise you're gonna get caught by something. Yeah, and even these smoked movements are mostly telegraphed. And they've you? got the X, but now they've got the silence! Bobica caught by Shiro! Well done by Shiro, he's got the Orchid, the Rolling Thunder comes out, and now it's on XXS, Shiro positioning himself pretty well to go after XXS, the Ghost Ship from the Rubik. And then a ghost ship from the Kunkka, I believe, just was not enough. The lineup of E-Home, their draft is just destroying Kunkka. Like, UX the Pango, he uses the Shard. UX anyone else, they get disrupted by the Shadow Demon. Dagger crits? Not a second time. Monet jumping into this. He wants ZZQ. And he'll get it. But they get more? Inkswell, that pops, not near 7E though. Right clicks coming in, BKBs being popped around the horn by Aster. They've got the telekinesis on a Siamese cat. They'll catch the Grimstroke. They land the finger on a shield. They get the kill on the Queen of Pain. Ori just out of the fight. 7E was out putting a lot of damage, so Ori needs to bail on this one. Shield Crash comes in from Zeal to kill off Siamese cat. And Aster, they get Shiro, and that's a big prize for them. That's a big kill. That's but a big... Is it enough? It's a good usage of that first BKB on, yeah. on uh, the Phantom Assassin. Good ward that they have on that cliff, if you see around the Ancients, allowed them to notice exactly when Ehome is separated enough for them to pounce. And they did exactly that. So, really well played by Aster. When I try to get the Ayasha, go build into the Banta. Queen of Pain going AC and then the shard. That shard always good against these supports. If you can jump mm -hmm. the back on, get that silence. And some extra armor versus the PA versus the Lina definitely comes in handy. Yeah. And, and not only do you have, say, the shard that will be that initial silence, you also have the Orchid to back it up. And I just think there's no way <laughs> Bobica or Siamese Cat survive. XXS moving forward, just trying to push out these waves with the X and feel safe. Five minutes smoke coming out from Ehome. No vision for them. Late Roche. Now they have. Oh, long range steal. Yeah, X marks the spot with Aether Lance. Feels <laughs> good, man. You better not clo get close to this ward. Oh, 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 planet. Whoa, now you don't got it. That was a thousand damage crit. They're going to look over at ZZQ. ZZQ, though, showing off the blink. They get the kill into Boba because Shiro's onto the back lines. They get also Siamese Cat. So they are back here, exactly what they wanted to do with the BKB being popped by Shiro XXS. Now dancing around both 70 and Shiro. Zeal maybe looking PA for an back. opportunity. PA, Monet, looking for ZZQ. They've got the disarm, pops the BKB, and immediately to the TP out. And that was a good job by Ehome to just jump the back lines, knowing that the cores have kind of left them by themselves. Yeah, Monet did a nice play there, jumping on top of the Rubik. Sadly for him, ZZQ with the Blink Dagger, there's just no way you're killing him. He disrupts you, he ultis you, he blinks out. Um, but also, well played by Ihom, like you said. Jumping the back lines, killing off both supports. I feel like you had to kill that Rubik, he has x the spot. Spotted again, Monet, he just used the BKB. They've got the soul bind, they have the disarm, but is it going to be enough? Ori hitting from the sides, and now Bubba comes in. They've got the kill on the Zeal. Sonic Wave pushes them back. Ori's BKB is going to run out in just a moment. They've got 70 hitting away, but the Laguna Blade comes out of ZZQ. They get the kill on a two. The stolen Laguna Blade thrown over on Ori to get the kill on the lead. They look over at 70, who's really low with the BKB, and rips so up Harmony and XXS with such a sliver of health. They'll get the kill onto three, and then finally 70 dies. Shiro That's kills off Sonic's cat, and it will be a full team wipe when they eventually kill Bobica and it's Planet who does so.
Ehom, man, 70 standing his ground. He had a sliver of health the entire time. Feels good having refractions versus PA, man. What, the, what else can I say? Really nice fight there from Eho managing to steal that Laguna Blade planet. On it. On it. Indeed. We all live on it and planet, it's his world, man. Yeah, did some pretty, pretty good, damn good plays. Uh, unfortunate for Ehom to have the Pangolier instantly locked the way he was, and then Lina just destroys him. Then ex exactly the double hex that came afterwards. Like you can, you, you have to respect the control that Taster is bringing to the fights. Yeah, and, that, and that's what they did in the fight previous yeah. to that one when they jumped the back lines to go for the supports. This is going to be an interesting Roche, 70 up in 15, but everybody is here for Aster, and they know it. Instant smoke. Five-man smoke. They're going to go their way towards the Roche pit, which Ehom are already occupying. They're nearby. But only the three vision heroes. is down for Ehom. Planet, he's inside the pit. They've got the Hex. They'll land the Earth Spike, but Disruption comes out. That'll line up the Ghost Ship. He's got the roll-up. Swashbuckle away, and now they've stolen the Ghost Ship. Planet, he has been on it with the steals. This is uh, one of his best heroes, a comfort hero for sure. And yeah. I, I've said it before, he gives me FY vibes. Yeah, he certainly does. He gives every good Rubik vibes when, yeah. when they have a good game. Um, good disengage by Ihom. Like managing to not lose any single hero to a five-man smoke. Both these teams kind of recognizing that they didn't want to overextend, which has been a common theme throughout some of these series in the Chinese region. Trap down, hits on a Monet. They are setting up on the side of Astro. They've got Planet over to the side. Rolling Thunder starts with a blink forward. They go to the Ghost Ship, being thrown by the Rubik. And now they've got the Telekinesis. They'll keep him there. Soul by now on his zeal, but he's not close to anybody else. 7E hit with the X. Pull back into the Torrent. Rolling Thunder's going to be out. They've got the H12. They're going to jump 7E with the BKBs being popped by both 7E as well as Monet. They've got the Sonic Wave pushing Monet and Wells Ori. They've got the LSA. XXS trying to get up the steps. They'll throw the LSA. That lands out of the Kunkka. And now Laguna Blade thrown over by Ori. One more strike. Shiro gets the kill on XXS. He buys back. They go after Zeal. They get the kill on the Pangolier. They look over now at the Rubik. Planet caught out of position by himself. Both heroes down for 50 seconds. No buyback. That might be enough for Aster to step into the pit. But do they even get Roche? It's still a tough one. I know they've got two heroes dead on Ehome, but they can still fight back if they choose to. Well, there are no BKBs. X. They already landed the Torrent. They've got the finger blowing up ZZQ, and he'll buy back immediately. I feel like if you want to defend, you need to buy back on the Shadow Demon, but it's not easy. You don't have the BKBs on the on the TA, on the Co-op. You already use them, obviously. And the Kunkka is just a predator right now. You have to be careful. If he gets close, you're dead. So Roche getting low. Is anybody going to make the jump? They're trying to, but look at Bobica's positioning the blink in. 70. Woo! Loses his oh. life for a moment. He thought he could get the Aegis, but well, Aster lock it down, and they get the kill as well as the Aegis. You guys obviously can't see it. B Cop slams the desk, <laughs> looks at my screen, looks at his own. He's not sure who took the Aegis. Uh, yeah. A nice attempt from 7e, but... Got him. I feel like you got to make that move, right? I, I'm not sure. At this point, I feel like you're giving Aster a little bit too much. Even if you take that Aegis, most likely you die two times. They've been... Like strategically, the game hasn't been in the best spot for Ihom in the last five minutes, mostly because they're trying to fight into the enemy high ground around the shrine, around the wards, instead of, you know, just perhaps camping their own triangle, farming up, waiting for the best moment for, for Roshan, not just forcing it. Aster now working with an Aegis timing, four minutes. Building an Ags on the Kunkka, Stifling Dagger, and Monet getting a quick kill. The fan of knives. Well, ZZQ is not one of them. Yeah, PA gonna do PA things. She's getting, to the, she's got that critical mass now, and uh, Titanic's gonna be the breaking point of yeah. like. Even right now, if she sees you, you're most likely dead as a support. Uh, do you, does ZZQ have enough time to disrupt himself or her, perhaps? But it will be. A clutch play. Yeah, it would almost. It almost feels like it extends the inevitable anyway. Yeah. If he's by himself, especially. So it, it was literally the second rush fight that uh, could have brought game home for E home. Um, a couple of extensions, and now we see Astrid in control. 
XXX about to, about to have the gold for the Ags. Esther is just so clinical. Like straight into the high ground Ooh. push, no messing about. They know Shadow Demon is dead for another 10. XXX was going to buy the Ags, had it queued up, goes straight BKB instead. Maybe needing a little bit more survivability, knowing he doesn't have buyback. The Torrent Storm is always nice when the BKBs run out, but to get that far, still got to survive. So it goes to the BKB. It's a safer route yeah. for sure. I would still rather see the Torrent Storm. I feel like it would have more impact. Like if they focus fire the Kunkka and he dies, by that time, Lina and PA should wipe them, right? So right. So they have to choose wisely on e -home and kind of be meticulous about where they go. Yeah. Still, though, BKB makes your game easier. So mm -hmm. can't blame him for that. Still two minutes on the Aegis, and they got the top tier one and two. They'll head over towards mid. We'll see how much they're willing to push on this one as uh, Ori's over to the side and bottom now. It's crazy uh, how much I feel the power spikes and uh, game equilibrium is shifting in this match. Even though uh, Network Swing has been maybe 5k the most mm -hmm. at the whole game. I don't even think it ever hit 5k, so... Oof, Scotty. Or the Lina. Always nice to get. Tanks you up a little bit, works like really a charm well. versus DA. <laughs> and the Queen of Pain. And the club, obviously. Yeah, that is uh, rough to deal with. And now Monet going after ZZQ. He kind of lets Planet live. <laughs> he was really low himself, but they'll take the kill out of the Shadow Demon dead for 40 seconds as Planet does get away while XXS. He's over here mid, yep. just hitting away at the tower. Their, their game plan just completely switched after the last Aegis. Suddenly Monet is this PA that is jumping in first, and you don't have to be scared little kittens waiting for Kunkka to X marks the spot anyone. No, you just jump in with PA. They can't really do anything about it. Now he feels pretty comfortable to just jump in. He's got that ink swell whenever he wants to make that move. They look over at 70 with BKB. I don't know if it's going to be enough, and it certainly isn't. Whoa. Bobica with the kill on a 7E. They'll throw over the Laguna Blade and get the kill on a Zeal. No 7E for 78 seconds. That is a long time to be without your TA, and they're still smoking up and potentially looking to make a move, but... Maybe ill-advised if they do jump on this Astro lineup. Over to the side, Monet and XXS showing. Smoke breaks, ZZQ, he's also in the trees. Follow up. Yeah, stolen Earth Spike. There's Shiro going in. They get the kill on a Siamese Cat. They look over, but the Phantom Knives comes out onto Planet. The Queen of Pain will blink away. They get the kill on the Rubik. Rubik has a buyback. 65 has buyback. Aegis expires. They're still working with a one-man advantage at the moment, and they're going to take this top set of racks, it looks like. Melee goes down, range next to fall, and they do buyback on planet. Uh, there's a tier two on the bottom lane, and your TA is still dead for 20 seconds. I'm not sure if this buyback was completely necessary because Aster isn't going to push and you're not going to defend, right? Right. So, uh, still though, maybe Aster would have tried for the, for the throne. It's tough. And they do kind of have building damage now. A lot different than when we were definitely talking about objective taking in the early part of the game. They do yeah. take it pretty quickly these days. Uh, they could have, but it's always a it's a risk. It's a, a massive risk when you go for the tier fours. Yeah, for me it feels like Ehome was climbing this huge hill just to throw themselves off of it <laughs> at the summit, right? Um, a little difficult for them to come back into the game at this point, but definitely possible. They have a ton of damage from the TA, from the Queen of Pain. It's like that uh, mythology story, the guy who pushes the rock up the hill only to be pushed back down again at the top. Have Sisyphus? to do it again. Is it him? I think so. Yeah. yeah they, got, they got close to the summit. He's cursed to push the boulder uphill all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like, Never-ending struggle. He sees the finish line. Zizikius. Well dead on his screen already. Zeal 
thinking about the Rolling Thunder, and Ehome are in a position to maybe get a jump here onto Ori. They've got the telekinesis. They're looking for something, and the Soulbite comes out, but they've got themselves a Sonic Wave to get the kill on Ori. They'll take him out, but they end up losing 7E. They're still close together with the Soulbite. Double finger, double guns coming through. Shiro dead, and that's a four times killing spree that's out of the hands of Shiro. GG. They'll get the kill on Azeel, and they'll call GG. Aster will take home game number one. And what looked like a good start for Ehome crumbles under their feet as Aster secure it in the late game. Yeah, they played uh, the early game really well. It's how they line up, how their lineup really should work. Like when you look at Ehome and when you look at Aster, if the teams are kind of matched in skill level, when you look at these two drafts, you understand that Ehome should be the ones taking advantage early on. Right. And they did that. They did that extremely well. They pushed the tempo. They took that first rush. It all fall, fell apart around the second one. Like, literally, second Roshan killed their game for them. Yeah, it was they the were turning point. It, they were a little bit too eager, perhaps scared of the PA, but small steps lead to greatness. If you try too much, if you try to go into that rush pit and just force it next to a high ground, it usually ends up badly for you. Yeah, it was uh, 7E makes the jump in there. I kind of thought maybe he had to do it, but if he doesn't do that... They have TA not dead at that point. The pressure doesn't continue to mount from Aster, and sure. the game could go a different way. But ultimately, Aster do put themselves in the right position, and they held on because they were getting pressured pretty heavily oh, as sure. Monet was just trying to farm up. And he got to that BKB. It allowed him to fight, and then it really got out of control, mm -hmm. like you said, by the Roche Pit, where Aster had the uh, overall better vision and better game plan. And it, it, not to take away from Ehome, because they knew what to do. Yep. They, and they did it in the fight before that, when they killed the supports and took them mm -hmm. out and worked on the rest. But ultimately, it goes Aster's way, and it's just that little bit that they needed for Ehome to take the game. But they unfortunately don't find it. Aster take game number one. And to break it down a little bit more for you, we've got the panel. So, guys, take it away. Buenos dias, everybody, and welcome back to the panel. Indeed, it was, unfortunately, E-Home, which it ended up going uh, no bueno for in this game. Ricky, you know, unfortunately, you, you put your heart on the line once again, and it was trashed once more. Um, what was it which didn't work out compared to what you're expecting after that drafting phase? Well, luckily, I uh, can't understand any of the words that you're saying, so I'm going to assume those were mostly compliments, right? E-Home, just doing great stuff? Yes, Yeah. exactly that. Mm-hmm. No, I, it was it was a little bit of uh, an outshining going to the late game. Like the the Phantom Assassin, is, as much as like it, it on paper struggles against the TA refractions, you get to a point where this hero is is too big, like too difficult to deal with, and um, it didn't really matter. You know, you you have uh, too many ways to to actually kill this Templar Assassin going late game. So, how would you have liked to see them address that issue then, Black? I mean, they were really on a timer, and they actually looked like they were in control for quite a while, but then they had this one team fight that they messed up, and then when it happens and you're on a timer, it pretty much just seals the deal right there. Obviously, don't GG out right away, but yeah, ever since that one fight at the Roche Pit, it was all Asta from there. You know, the, the, TA, uh, the PA suddenly just got one or two more items, can't kill them anymore, the support just die in one hit. It's just very difficult to play. Yeah, very rough indeed. But there were a few glimmers of hope for Ehome. You know, a few fights which they were able to take, especially one pretty major fight. But uh, Astra's come back and, and, and fight them again. I mean, you know, how did those two fights go in such different directions? I think it is just timings, right? Like a lot of it is you, the later this goes, the better the game gets for Aster. And, the you know, our caster said it very well. Like Ehome did a really good job in the early game. They were able to shut down a lot of Aster's progression. They were starting to take over a lot of the map. They got tower after tower. They get first Roche. But uh, yeah, you get to a point where your lineup doesn't scale as well. And the later this goes, the better it is for Aster. And like Black was saying, they missed their timing. They certainly did. Yeah, it was unfortunate. But uh, this does mean that uh, Aster take game at number one fairly convincingly. Um, I don't know. Like, Aster pretty, pretty, pretty damn good from them. Is there anyone who had a standout performance from them in your eyes? Uh, this game, not in particular, to be honest. Yeah. I, I do think that in the early game, they dropped the ball a little bit on the Aster side. They got picked off a lot, especially on Monet. Mm -hmm. But uh, come mid-game, they rectified some of those errors, uh, just farmed up like they had to. 
secured their farming triangle, their own jungle. And then once they hit their timings, just ended the game. But you, you can see that there, like when things click, they are still quite a bit above eHome. Like yeah. those t the team fight execution was really, really good from Aster in those late game team fights. Especially from Boboka on the line, getting some really clutch initiations. Very good combos also with the Grimstroke ult, the double hexes, double impales were very impactful. Yeah, we wanted to see the uh, double finger um, yeah, Laguna had, but it, it didn't happen, but yeah. I mean, it, it kind of did. Here you got double zap though on the yeah, Hey, there we uh, go. <laughs> anime lasers coming through. Yeah, it's, a, it's just such a difficult game to play though when you, when you draft your lineup like this and then so many of your heroes are just in, in Italy countered. I mean, you put yourself in a tough position. And you actually played really well, considering the fact that you were in a rough drafting position. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it was um, it, it was definitely a good look for E-Home, but unfortunately in the end, not quite enough. Um, did you kind of... We, we weren't sure about the PA pick in the draft, right? We said, you know, we would like to see them go in a different direction, uh, but they do go towards the PA in the end. Um, what did you end up uh, uh, thinking about it after we've seen it all break down? I mean, I feel like the PA was great late game, but if they just picked a better hero in the lane and something that scaled well uh, a little bit, but still had like decent scaling, I don't think the game really changes is the thing. Like the uh, the game would just probably still end up being about the same. Like Esther going late, all their other heroes still scale very well. Whereas Ehome, you kind of have the Shadow Demon that's going to fall off. Planet, as well as he played on the Rubik, it's, <clears throat> it's not like having this Inkswell uh, soul bind combos that you have from these other heroes. Yeah, sure, sure. And it kind of just became a burden in the late game, right? The supports. Yeah, that's like, what exactly. The yeah, SD Rubik, they, they're all right, but we did say how squishy they are, how, how useless they might become when this PA gets big, and that's exactly what happened. Monet always found one right at the beginning of the fight, gets one lucky crit, you're gone out of the fight. And then uh, what did you do? You have just no no damage really. Once that TA and Quop like unloaded everything, what do you have? Nothing. Yeah, I kind of feel like they need to somehow like wait out the BKBs, but that's not going to happen when you're playing against these heroes. And even your lineup as well. It's it's neither had a slow lineup, which just again made those supports feel extra kind of confusing. They didn't really work, and you know it was something we saw coming from a long way off. And of course, Monet will be our MVP on that uh, Phantom Assassin. Just a pretty straightforward game for Monet, to be honest. Just farming up, hitting them creeps, having a great time. Um, I mean, yeah, what would you have liked to see in place of the support send? After seeing how the game played out, do you think there's a hero you could have put on the 4 or 5, which would have made a big difference to this game? I mean, usually with Rubik and SD, you want to have just like a frontline support that can actually you know, give information and just be there and tank up for you. Like something like a Tusk, something like a Spirit Breaker would be very nice. But if you pick two of those backline supports that can't really help each other, then you're in a lot of trouble once the hero is actually in that backline. Sure, you have one disruption, but PA doesn't care about that. You have a five-second blink cooldown. You're just going to jump on the next target. And then you, have, you already used the saving spell. There's nothing left. Yeah. yeah. And what about you, Rico? Do you think that would have been a better option? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree. The Shadow Demon was very strong in the lane. right? They were able to slow down Kunkka's game a little bit, but you could have picked a... Like, like Black was saying, something that's a little bit more in your face, even an Ogre Magi on the five. You have the yeah. Quap that still takes advantage of the Bloodlust, but you also have TA that's fantastic with it. So an Ogre five may have just been an easier solution for them this game. Or Elder Titan, a hero that doesn't really get picked anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't know why. I still think it's very strong. Yeah, it's actually uncontested in this region. Yeah, yeah very, very, picked for, or banned at all. very forgotten. Or actually, may maybe... Maybe we saw it once. I think it might be in the one... Yeah, maybe one band. game. We saw the... one ban, I think, of Elder Titan. Yeah, one other time, Ben. Kind of sad. I'll check shortly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what are our thoughts going into the second game? Then what did E-Home need to change up on that support duo as mentioned? Uh, honestly, I, th I was pretty impressed with the way they were playing. Like I did yeah. believe they were quite outdrafted, um, but the way they played the early game was really strong. They changed their lanes also to give them an advantage there. The Quap against the Kunkka is a much better matchup. And yeah, I, I like what, I've seen, uh, what I'm seeing from them, but the draft, just like in the last series they played was the issue again. Like, uh, it, it, it just feels like they're always on the back foot when it comes to the draft. When it comes to the yeah. draft. Maybe that's because they're sticking to their comfort zone, which is usually a good idea, but you can't always do that. You know, like, if it puts you in a bad position, it doesn't make much sense. 
It doesn't make much sense at all. All right. I mean, you you know the team very well, right, uh, Ricky? You know, you Relatively, yes. Yeah, yeah. You're casting them in uh, yeah. in summer summer division two. Um, previously, I mean, what is some specialized picks which uh, these guys can pull out? And we're actually seeing them. That's the thing. Like we saw a couple of them in that game. The TA is something that they flex a lot between their team. It looked like a big bait though in a TA, right? Yeah, it did. And but again, I think it's partly because they didn't have like typically you, when you have this hero, like having an ogre with bloodlust makes this hero's life so much, so much better. <coughs> Excuse me, so much better. Yeah, Just but dying, don't mind me. That's the thing, though, right? They didn't really pick to what their lineup was designed to do. Yeah. They they just stuck with the comfort zone, which doesn't work against a team like Aster. Like you actually need a solid draft to beat a team like Aster that also has a solid draft. Sure, if Aster also you know take a misstep in their draft, then maybe can work out, but they didn't. Yeah, nah. relying on Aster to make a mistake, especially in their current form, seems like a a silly thing to do. They're one of the most consistent teams so far that we've seen for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially uh, as. This time around, I think China is feeling very inconsistent. It's uh, weird, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, would you agree, Black? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. I think other than LGD and perhaps Asta, I mean, even they, they have like the holes here and there. Names, yeah. yeah, it's uh, not looking as crisp as the other seasons have. Maybe that was because of the prolonged break they were forced in, because some people were still stuck in Europe for a longer time. Yep. But yep. it's uh, definitely not as refined as, as the last season has been. Yeah, because previously we had, I think both seasons we had uh, LGD. I think first, firstly it was um, Asta and IG at the top. Yeah. Then it was LGD and Asta at the top again for the uh, for the second yeah. season. So. But the other teams also look so much more consistent, right? Whereas now it's kind of like true. We knew what to expect, but yeah, now it's season, all over the place. It's crazy. It's crazy. Anything can happen, and uh, indeed, we do have a draft coming up just around the corner, which means it's time to say hello to Nef Sensei. On the drafting panel. Thank you. You got it right this time. I'm impressed. You're welcome. Uh, so, quick thoughts before we get into the draft of this uh, this last game. Quick thoughts about the previous game. I mean, I think the, the PA pick Black was talking about that one in the back room. It was an amazing against the Templar Assassin, but they basically already had their draft completed at four picks. So it's something that we all agreed on. So regardless of what they could have picked, it was already pretty solid. It was definitely an out draft by Team Aster and... As much as Ricky believed in, you know, his boys on E-Home. They played well. They Rest actually played a good game. It's just an outdraft. Well, playing yeah. well is not enough nowadays. I know. All right, let's You're see. You're about facts and logic here, Ricky. <laughs> I hate it here. Let's see if E-Home can <laughs> sort out their drafts for game number two as we jump into the picks and the bands for the second matchup. Also, a quick question. Do you think TA should have item messenger into an MKB much earlier? Of course, then the PA would not have been a problem. And when she jumps to the back line, you can actually handle her. Whoa. Instead of Silver Edge? Yeah. I think TA's job was killing the Lena, honestly. TA was just going after Lena the whole Ooh. game. They needed other heroes to deal with the PA, which they, they, I guess they didn't really have, right? That was one of the faults of their draft. Like, yeah. you have Shadow Demon who can, like, purge her, but she just still blinks around. What I realized when I play against PA, if you don't have that MKB and you rely on a break, it's very inconsistent. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Your BKB suddenly just before, you're like, oh, I guess you have like, I don't know, I don't know if you took the evasion talent or not, but you have like 80% evasion. Okay. Yeah. You no need problem. something to do it. Treant. Treant, Treant. Slow Dota. Slow Dota 2. My favorite Dota. Oh, we're pushing treant. the tower for 20 minutes. Ah, it's <laughs> full HP. They're even into the Treant mindset now as they're taking their time with the second pick over the second pick mm. they're cosplaying hard uh I mean, what does this here i mean obviously slowing down pushes being annoying um healing up towers contest pkbs yep, yep. Good at that. so it's not really an answer to the bane is it it's just their own idea yeah um, but okay. like when you pick trin usually you want to really pick heroes that make use of all the space he will give you inevitably okay because otherwise, why would you pick Treant? Because you really pick it to do uh, slow down tower pushes, have those BKB answers. So you mm -hmm. want to pick heroes that really scale well into the late game. DP is one of them. Mm. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. And so, not banned uh, this time. Yeah, you know, Dota's often a game of push and shove and pull. And uh, you got the push in the DP and the uh, shove in the Treant Protector. And the pull and the charisma of Ehome. Pulling the viewers towards you. Yeah. I mean, look at those trousers. Those are some charismatic trousers. I love it. Yeah, look at that pattern. And then... They're all dressed to impress, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. They all look great. Yeah, street, street wear. Mm -hmm. uh, the 
One thing that I'm excited about, though, is we're going to see uh, something a little bit different, maybe, from Ehome this game. Like, these are, like, outside of the DP, like, the Treant Protector is definitely something new. They take the Bane away from uh, ZZQ, so he's going something else. Now, time. Ricky, do you know who else picked up Treant Protector in their first drafting phase? Me. Uh, I do not. Woo! That was no. four Zoomers, and they lost horribly. Oh, my God. I thought you were talking about in the region. No. God damn it. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Good mother. NA Talk is banned in this house. If you do it again, you'll be demoted from Draft Master to, uh, to Draft Peasant. You can't talk to the sensei that way. <laughs> <laughs> Broodmother, though. Away. We got a Broodmother first phase, guys. Good mother. Is, uh, yeah. Aster, XXS, does he play a lot? He probably does, otherwise I wouldn't pick it. Yep. I haven't seen him a whole lot on it. I, I, I think he I think he plays it a lot. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. Uh, he played in the Huya tournament, uh, I believe, too. Oh, Decent effect. They've been trying to run this one quite oh, a bit. Oh, the one where they lost horribly. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's interesting seeing these different heroes picked up at the beginning of the draft. It's a little bit refreshing. The Bane, uh, not so much, but... Surprised that the Morphling has ended up making it through here. Uh, Shiro obviously very much loves this hero. Uh, we've interviewed uh, the team about it. They seem to think Shiro is a better Morphling player than Flyfly. Fly. Hell yeah. Agreed. Really? Yeah. Flyfly's Shiro. Morphling is... If IG picked Morphling, it should be on Emo. That's my opinion. Mm. Emo's Morphling is... Mwah. Flyfly's Morphling is very hit or miss. Uh, they banned out themselves, actually, here on Ehome, so that means they have something else in mind for their position one. You can't take it into the brood mother as a thing, right? That lane is very sad. Ricky, so you... does tree and old cancel bane ulti or not? It does. It, it does. applies a mini stun now. Yeah. For a little while, it didn't. Yeah. But uh... Neff helped me there. Yeah, but I, I, I was <laughs> kind of. I was like, a lot of people don't know. I was like ninety nine percent. I was like, I'm almost po like I'm positive it does. But there's always that like voice in the back of your head that's like, you're an idiot. You're wrong. Yeah. Like, it's not right. It's, it's like the only route that. Has like a mini cancel on it. It's yeah. Super weird. I don't know why it works. Like it that. didn't for a little while. Then they realized it was kind of an underpowered ultimate if it didn't apply mini stun. You'd uh, <laughs> be running into things like a witch doctor. Or a <laughs> it's like a witch maiden. doctor's like, I'm just going to keep channeling. Yeah. <laughs> just holds that uh, in place and absolutely destroys you. So it did need a bit of an improvement. And the hero still isn't, in my opinion, uh, you know, a top tier pick. But you can't beat three in the matchmaking games, though. It's R impossible. Really? Yeah, because you just keep the tower forever. Well, they farm, and your teammates are like, oh, we need five heroes here, but only two come. And then Triant just like meteor hammers the wave, and then... Yeah. What and here's the tower. Yeah. And then he overgrows five heroes. Whew. Good stuff. I love that hero. Bans, though. What do you think? Naga Siren. Very... I mean, it's good into the brood lane, right? That's why we see the ban? Yeah. That's gotta be, right? I can't think of Could any other reason. Too? It's got Riptide. It's a very high armor hero. It's a melee hero, so it's got the damage block built in as well. Kunkka deals with it, Tidehurt deals with it. They're just stopping anything that's able to play well against the Broodmother, but there's too many solutions to this hero for you to be able to get away with picking it this early, in my opinion. There so. it is. Ugh. Mars, my, I was, I'm, I'm blown away that Aster leave this hero. And this, that's in my, insane. In my opinion, it is that the is number crazy. one best hero in the game against Broodmother. It's very, very strong. And, I mean, look at this, right? Death Prophet's going to pop out Ghost. You're going to be like, oh no, Ghost, very scary. I'm going to run away, but... How are you going to run away? You're going to get rooted by the tree and you're going to get held inside an arena. You can't escape the spooky, scary ghosts. Yeah. You have to face your fears, Aster. And that's not something we like doing as humans. Depends. Some daredevils do. True. Are you True. one of Some them? people get a thrill from it. Yeah, are you one uh, Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. I, like, I like extreme sports. I like jumping off cliffs and stuff. Mm. You don't like glass panels, though. I don't like glass panels. Glass panels. Oh, glass on, panels. On, on bridges. No, that's true. That's true. You're right, though. Yeah, you're... To be fair, we so we're walking on this bridge in uh, no, in uh, the center up. of uh, Ukraine, <laughs> yeah, in Kiev, a uh, beautiful city, and uh, we're, there's this bridge they have which has some glass panels in it. And like, I, I I'm not really comfortable with heights, and I was like, I, I, I don't want to step on this panel, but you know, I overcame my fears. I did, I did step on it, didn't I, Black? Yeah. Uh, and then as you turn around, there's like a like a construction kind of <laughs> some some blockage. Cones. Yeah, yeah, some cones have been put up to stop you walking on a certain area. The, the panel actually broke like next to mm, it. Like, it was great. Like, yeah. It's very, very scary. In. As soon as we saw it, we were like, okay. <laughs> maybe maybe we we'll don't, stop maybe walking on the panels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, regrets, but, uh, you know, I, we didn't Lots fall of Mirana. I actually don't like it, this game too much yet. It, it's good with the wow. bait. It's good with Bane, right? We see the nightmare setups, but right now, like, you don't have another option. Bane doesn't help you. 
or I'm sorry, uh, Broodmother doesn't help you. You can go for like some mid lane, but your big setups are Ember Spirit and Kunkka, and they're both already bent. So you have. I don't really know where this Marana is supposed to fit in the draft yet. Lucent Beam, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty decent stun with the talent. Yeah, with the what talent. What is it, 1.2 seconds? Pretty good. I think it goes to 1. It goes to 0.6 to 1, I believe. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I can check. Something like that. But uh, my question one to you guys something. is, where do you think this Mars is going to go? We see it, uh, and the Death Prophet. Death Prophet has almost exclusively been played in the offline. I think we've seen a mid maybe uh, once. Yeah, I think they're just going to put a mid and off then Mars. Or oh, Mars, middle into is the also fine. They're just going to put Mars into the brood lane, right? Well, that would probably be in the safe lane then. Yeah, they'll just like, they'll off lane. The... I mean, you could also just play it in a way where once Brood hits six, then you change the lanes. Yeah, you can do that. We've seen them, you know, more than willing to change who's playing what heroes on Ehome. Seven E played mid tide hunter uh, a couple of games ago in order to counter out uh, what they're doing on the enemy team. So, Shiro Mars, let's go. Yeah, it's possible that they do something like that. Sweet. But uh, right now, Aster very scary with a, I guess, a snowball y lineup. They don't have much team fight Ooh. there. Really banking on winning these lanes here. Wow. Uh, so, just so we know, for, for everyone's information, the uh, Lunar Stud is 1.2 seconds with the talent. Okay. With the talent? Nice. Okay. Uh, that's a dang good PA pick. It is. Also scary against the Brute, though. It is. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't really lane that into the, into the Lunar early on. And even if you want to do the thing where you lane Swap first, eventually. Uh, it's also super hard against the Lunar lane stuff. Yeah. So, the PA is going to have a very rough early game. Yeah. And this isn't here which can really retreat to the jungle too easily. I was kind of expecting them to pick up something like TB or something, because you've got this tree in who can kind of hold the lane for a bit versus the Broodmother. But they banned out their own TB. Yeah, TB was banned. Yeah. But they banned it out, yeah. So which, They could have gone Razor, honestly. That was something that yeah. they could have gone with into it's the Luna. Jungler. It's a good matchup. Doesn't struggle in lane against Brood either. But mm -hmm. I, I know uh, Shiro likes PA quite a bit. So this is, again, Ehome going for a little bit more of a comfort pick, potentially. Yeah. Yeah, the... I don't know, the draft looks quite greedy, no? All the way up the to the Mars, I was sold. It's just like the the PA yeah. pick, I think, is a, is a little bit too much greed. Black, do you ever have it in a team where someone says, trust me, bro, you know, this is a good, you know, like a carry here player says, trust me, bro, this is a great X hero game. Trust me, it's going to be great. Yeah, even though it looks bad and on paper. And the whole team's like, guy, you know, are you sure this doesn't look good to us? And they're like, no, 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 trust me. Yeah. I, I mean, I've done it myself many, many times. And, uh, sometimes it works. Most of the time it doesn't because if something doesn't look good for most players, then it probably isn't good. Okay. But you know, when I'm like, <laughs> pick me carry patch, man, I've practiced it many, many times. Yeah. <laughs> that is... I'm practicing my hooks all But that is something most people won't know. You know, they're like, okay. You know, mm -hmm. because they don't know about it here. But probably they can see the PA is, uh, yeah, a little bit greedy when you already have Mars who needs items, you have DP who needs items. But... That's where Treant makes sense because you can delay <gasps> the game a little Slow longer. Slow oh. it down. What if we see a support Mars here? Potentially. But I know that we've seen okay. we've seen people rotate it to the support position. It's been run four and five before. Yeah. It's not that good against the Brute though then, right? Because you can't actually yeah. kill the spiders. Because you, you need the face boots, maybe Blightstone for that. I it's mean, face boots and Blightstone allows you to one hit them, I think. What is it? Three, four points in uh, God's Rebuke? Yeah, and you won't get four points in God's Rebuke. You don't just get one four as a as a support mass. Go Lush Rack. Lush, well, yeah, an Ori is special. Yeah. Look at Aster right now. They're, 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 they're swapping, swapping seats. Yeah, yeah, it is going to be a support Mars. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought they were about to get up and do like a little hug or Dude, a Dude, this five, is a sick invoker too. Nice. It's, it's, it's struggles into the brood though, right? Wait, so, no, it's a 5 DP off in Mars. Okay, okay. Oh, uh, so it's 5 DP. Okay. And a 4 tree and then. Yeah, yeah. Planted on tree. Right, tree and Mars. Tree. I like the Lesh pick a lot because it kind of solves the tree and problem, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I do think that uh, Invoker was one of the best answers to the Lesh rack. As long as you keep his mana drained, you stop him from playing too aggressive or farming too fast and being able to run at your towers. So that's uh, about the best they could have done to that one. So hopefully they managed to keep things alive, allow Tree and Protector to heal up the towers, and putting that on position four was pretty good as well as Tree and Protector is a hero that moves around the map by himself, cuts creep waves. He's going to eat that farm. If you put him on the position five, he can't do that as well. Yeah, I think we'll see a meteor hammer from this game, actually, which yep. is going to be very interesting. Um, based on what they've said and what we've seen so far, I mean, Ehom were fighting very, very well in that uh, in that first game. I, I think they've got the second game. I think we're going to see a 1-1 here. Um, Black, what about you? We'll do a reverse order this time. 
Mm, I think I like Ori on Lash Rock a little bit too much. Yeah. That's Especially when point. you have this 5 DP also. Like 5 DP, how it works well is when you really get some items at least, but you have so many heroes that want to farm around this map, like you won't be able to get anything really. And you're just walking in feet. All right. Ricky? I am going to go with E Home. Uh, surprise, Unsurprisingly. <laughs> yes. E Home. E Home? All righty then. That's uh, three for E Home. One for Esther. Let's find out how game number two goes with our casting duo of B Cop and Lizard. Woo! 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 I didn't know we were doing that, so right. timing's kind of wrong, but at the, uh, you know, at the same time. It was perfect. It right, doesn't so have to be timed, it. right? Yeah, it doesn't have to be As timed, long as it yeah, comes from the good. soul, right? It came from my heart as well. Exactly. Just like those picks for uh, E Home. Maybe Caster's Cursing E Home. <laughs> I've got this invoker. They have the uh, a position for Treant. Obviously, we always talk about how Treant kind of changes the vibe of a game. It's a four Treant. Do you like that? It's a different, definitely a different one. I like when I get to see Treant just slam his tree barks into people and have a little bit more mm -hmm, form. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, he usually gets that meteor hammer a bit earlier, perhaps a veil. I feel the tree is one of the sickest laners at the moment on five and four. Just so much damage coming from him, healing potential. Did you see the three three build or like, I mean, three three zero or three two zero? Huh? Just maxing out lead, two three zero even maxing out leech seed. You constantly fight. You just can't kill anything in the lane. I was playing up against a tree the other day. I was playing in the top lane as a five position, and it just he was playing the four. It's the nature's grasp, just right in line with where you're trying to stand and. Mm -hmm be at an ancient apparition already kind of slow as it is and you feel like you take so much damage just off that level one grasp because you do right yeah do you like the brood mother in the first stage mm, is it gonna go oh and two it definitely will. feels like brood is gonna struggle <laughs> this game i i like that you're picking brood and then you're putting the enemy team uh in a weird spot, right, in which they have to now be thinking about answering that hero. Mm -hmm. I feel that E-Home have got what it takes to answer it, but uh, you never know. It's Brood. You feed her a couple of times, she rolls out of control, and your game is just help. Ooh. God. 70. Already taking a lot of damage in this lane, but he does have 10.4 regen at the moment, now 3.4. Tango helping him out. He's doing all right. Uh, he did take a ton of damage, like you mentioned, but uh, a lot of creeps under the tower should get a couple of uh, new lastits. Bottom lane as well. Even though there is three on one side, Bane is just as scary. So uh, Bane plus Luna, that is. A lot of damage coming from them. This is a lane where we can expect stuff to happen. Perhaps our first blood even. Level one leech seed and. You were talking about how it's heavy into the grasp and the leech seed, which means you don't really have the armor the, early the on. Healing yeah. and I mean, you, you still can. Don't get me wrong. It's it's an option. It's not a necessity. There, yeah, he there does it is. go he for does. the grasp. Yeah. But first blood comes out from Shiro on a Bobica. ZZQ getting chased here. We just see this very often. Uh, Rana dying just when she's about to get that leap mm. and be able to get out of problems. And it's definitely a combo up top that can kind of Spirit Siphon, Stifling Dagger. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're just kind of hitting away at these heroes. You need to be careful if you are the Marana and you want to be uh, showing off as a Marana when you've got that $1,000-something $1, bunny mount. Yeah, it doesn't feel that great uh, until you get the leap. Once you have the leap, it changes everything, right? Like, they can't really go on you. You'll be able to just leap. No away every single time they have any aggressive movements. They're going for this Mars. Zeal's kind of low. Monet putting the damage in, putting the hurt on. Ooh, taking some right clicks from Planet. They'll change who they want to go for. 70 gets low. Planet dies in the bottom lane. Zeal as well is in a he's dangerous still, yeah, spot. Yeah, he's still getting yeah. run down. He won't have that heal or help from the Treant for eight seconds. Zeal of... also losing his courier, so he loses that Tango region that he wanted to pick up. One second left, and... That's rough. Um, at this yeah, point, just, just let him go. Oh. Let oh, the Bane no, the deal courier. No, 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 no. Yeah, now, he, oh, that heal, not going to work out for you. 
So you lose the courier, you lose your life, you joke around forever, you don't deny any experience or farm away from the Luna. And you give Bane an early level yeah. 3. We were talking about this treant pick on position 4. So far, to be honest, not looking that great. I'm not sure. Getting living armor on level 2, the way he did. Even getting leech seed level 1. Because you're playing versus two ranged heroes, right? They, they are Luna okay, and Bane. They're not the best ranged heroes. Right. Uh, they're more like some extended melee, right? But still, they can move away out of uh, the Leech Seed. Leech, seed, leech Seed's range. You don't really get a lot from it. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't feel as effective as to say, if you were to put the Nature's Grasp down and try and just output some mm -hmm. damage onto these heroes. I, I, the spell is amazing versus melee course versus melee supports because you can trade hits much much easier much much better but uh, versus two ranged ones mm, just feels off oh each seat again zeal trying to pressure in on this monet not really feeling the hurt and a lot of what Siamese Cat is losing in health. He'll take right back in a brain sap. I wonder if it's level 2 at this point. Um, I believe he didn't go for the grasp still. Yeah, he. so they'll just be using the seed to heal up like like that. And stay in the lane. Yeah, just sustain yourself. It. Yeah. It's not bad. Haven't really felt much from XXS yet, but obviously you're waiting for that moment where he does then get to the level 6 and see what he can do. Ooh, Zeal pops the salve, but the Lucent Beam is there, and a right click in from Monet. Planet, all he can do is just watch. There's really not much he can output in terms of slowing down Monet on that one. He tried to body block, but he didn't even get that. Yeah, and Monet going all in on that uh, lane domination, 202 on the lane, on the Luna. Difficult lane for Mars and the tree. Shiro now to level 5 as EZQ left the lane for a little bit, giving up some soul experience. XXS, he's also getting some soul experience while the Lina, or sorry, the Moran is out. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably uh, the best thing that you can get in the lane from your position 4. They're chasing. He's fine. There's a one, there's very far, there's no way. Yeah, 18 charges, and he's just going to be past the salve. He'll hold on to the charges. I feel B Boboka is doing exactly the right thing, moving away from the lane, just letting the Brood get six. Mm -hmm. You don't really have kill potential. You're not really helping her, so just move away. Get some stacks, arrow some creeps. Sometimes less is more. Sitting in the lane really wouldn't Sapping be helpful. experience, yeah. doing nothing. Wouldn't be helpful at all. ZZQ spots Bobica coming over. You know, what he was trying to do, obviously, over mid. Maybe you get the stun from Ori, you get that follow-up arrow. A lot more useful over mid than he's going to be up in the top lane if he can land that arrow. An arrow over in the top lane I don't think really produces them a kill. Um, definitely not until the Brood is uh, higher level. Again, getting chased. But Siamese Cap finds himself a little bit out of position here. Leech Seed, Nightmare coming through onto the Treant, and again... They're, they no have no setup, right? Yeah. Like, they, they have no kill, no setup. The Squalling Blade on Luna, it's it's something that you usually get, right? But versus Treant, it's just amazing. Just cut down all these trees, you can see that he's doing it all the time. And you want Sami's Cat to move forward and get the Nightmare because they have Ori coming through. And they'll have the damage to get a kill on Azeel. It's just a question of who picks it up, and eventually it will be Ori. It's good rotation in from this Lashrak moving over out of the mid lane and giving up some soul experience for Bobaga. Yep. Iho Marina spot in which PA is doing well, but I would almost always trade my carries well being early on for my position two and three. Because in that mid game, in the next 10 minutes, my mid lane and my off lane need to be making plays. PA is going to be in the triangle anyway. No difference if she has 500 gold more or less. Meanwhile, getting levels on this Mars, getting uh, more farm on the Invoker, makes a huge difference at who pounces first, who makes the first move. Spirit Siphon trying to survive, Ori coming over, but the Diabolic Edict and the damage from the Pulse Nova more than enough to get the kill there on his EZQ. It's a 2k lead. This is just pretty methodical so far, but they've left Monet by himself. They've got three heroes coming over. They want the Nature's Grasp from a distance. They'll have it. The Spear lands. They'll get the kill. It is a rotation that brings over Shiro, though. A pretty nice rotation Leaves by Shiro. Leaves the top lane over for XXS to take the tower. 
which is something that he uh, didn't really have a say in. Mm -hmm. At this point, <laughs> Brute is taking that tower. You like it or not, you have no ways of defending it. So, a really nice rotation for, by him. Going bottom, taking a kill on Luna. Monet perhaps could have rotated out a bit earlier, but look at that. He's actually tipping back in. So, he wants to stay on the bottom lane. How do you feel about that? If they can protect him, I think it's fine, and it kind of makes Ehome a little bit uncomfortable if they do, because tops, if you keep it unoccupied, gonna get taken. Mm -hmm. And they've got some tower taking on this on this Esther lineup. You need to play pretty protective of your towers, and with Uri and I'll, I'll, Monet. I'll, I'll stop the bait. It looks like he just TP'd bottom, farmed a couple of camps, and moved into the jungle. Well, you know, yeah. I, I did my best to try yeah. and explain. They go after 70, arrow on the money! And they will kill off 7E. Bobica ready. It's that thousand dollar mount, that accuracy when you throw cash at the game. But it's not it's not only that. There's that, the fiend's grip too onto Zeal. When you have that thousand dollar amount, when the arrow connects, it turns off the electricity instantly. Like <laughs> you, you your PC restarts. Yeah, they'll go again. The arrow lands. The arrow connects. They've gotten the damage to kill off ZZQ. Thinking about the ult from Trian. He puts the hands down, but doesn't bring the hands up. And, uh, well, they'll let Aster leave. Yeah, hands up is the important part. Hands up in the chat. Oh. And this is something that you kind of worry about sometimes with the Brood. We saw it in the last Brood game. Where do you find yourself? After you take that tier 1 tower, what's your game plan? What's your objective? What do you do now that you've done the easy part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you took the tower and then mm, I rotate mid. Arrow, ooh. Ori. Planet and 70 spotted it. No mana left for Ori. They've got the overgrowth and now they're going to try and get this kill onto the Lashrak with the Crypt Storm. They do. And another Hoka one. Has kind of come a little bit too close, but the Nightmare might save him as it allows him to leap afterwards. TP. Uh, He's got it. Yeah. Almost another one. That sleep, very well placed. He manages to TP away, survive even the earn charge. Nice little comeback there, there by Ehome, uh, managing to kill off the left rack. That's partly because of, like, where should your offlane usually be at this point, if you're Radiant? Somewhere around the tier two on top, right? Maybe uh, their jungle. Look at him. He, the Broodmother is in his own place in the Radiant jungle. Right. And that's allowing these sort of plays to happen. Like, where did they come from? The Dire came from their side, from the jungle, into that rune. Caught Ori by surprise. If you have an offlaner somewhere, they're farming. That usually doesn't happen. Right. You also talked about how the electricity turns off when you uh, Get hit, hit the arrow. arrows yeah. for the other team. But he missed an arrow, and now two players disconnect. <laughs> yeah, it's really powerful. Like, it's really, really Double powerful. Double-edged sword. Exactly. Yeah. Put all that money into a courier. Or into a mount, Into I guess. a mount, yeah. yeah. Look at that. Well. This one is not as expensive, right? Yeah, this it's is just the weird Luna one. Yeah. Kind of looks like a gremlin. Like a what? A gremlin. A gremlin. <laughs> yeah, it does. A bit. When, you, when you feed them well. after midnight. Yeah. Whoa. ZZQ. Yeah, they kind of passed each other. Ships in the night. And now he's being that uh, spider ward. Oh, yeah, he's going to start doing and that. Yeah, the Siamese cat catching the nightmare, but they do have the rest of the team coming There's over. The XXS recognizes this, nope. but they've got the arrow. And, well, now the electricity bill is being paid for with the life of 70. All the little spooders are out, but maybe they can get an additional kill. Nope. Yeah, can't two do. CS equivalent right there. <laughs> getting the, the I think there was a ton of them worth nine. At least 90 gold, I would say, like 10 of those. They get the tower. This is the pressure they can put on from Aster. They do have really good tower-taking abilities, as we've talked about already. They have a 5,000 net worth lead. Yeah, all three of their cores really come online extremely fast. Right. Like you have Luna. Ooh, Nightmare again. Brood, Lash. Uh, this is a bait. Yeah, Bobica's top. No arrow. Does lead 7E to TP down bot, though. Yeah, perhaps with this uh, TP. Mm. Nah, they're not gonna. Will they? Uh huh. Mm -mm. Yes, no. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh. oh. Uh. <laughs> Silence oh. comes out from XXS. He's got that orchid. And uh, the orchid burn will burn the tree to the ground. Uh, I'm not sure Ehome knows what to do right now. 
They're being overwhelmed. They're just being so overwhelmed. They're being they're, swarmed. They're, they're being swarmed on the map, and it truly looks like they don't know what the right move is. And, and it goes back to what do you do if you are the Brood coming into this point of the game? And right now he's just continuing to put the pressure on, especially with that Orchid. Shiro in the jungle getting caught. He's, he's just breaking their angle, ankles on the Brood. He's giving so much info at the same time forcing all of Ehum's moves, which allows the rest of Aster to make a play like that one and kill off the PA. Yeah, they go after uh, ZZQ bot. That forces another TP. Like, and then they're TPing down bottom while they go for Shiro up in the jungle. It, it's just hard. <laughs> XXS, he's... Like, you're thinking there isn't a huge impact, but it's so much. Like, Ihum is not playing Dota right now. No, they, they have to, yeah. This is it. Like, when you don't know what to do, when you can't make a proper play, you just smoke up and try to make something happen. Bobaga. He's in smoke break rain, uh, territory here, where it's like, oh, well, we caught Bobaga, and then he just leaps away. But he avoids them, and the smoke stays on. So, no. I would get all the way up. I would really like Ihum... Uh, to perhaps... No, it does it anyway. It's just Boboka. And One leaps. leaps. Two leaps. Tornado EMP. Spear. All right, they got him. That works out. But look, they didn't even ward the triangle off of that kill. Yeah. I would really like to see Ehom take an objective with that smoke. Perhaps a tier one on the bottom lane. Perhaps at least ward up the triangle so that Luna cannot farm out of control. But right now, you have all three cores of Aster just farming away. 17 spiders for 153 gold. I think the spiders might need to give a bit more of a bounty. I'm not saying a lot, but maybe a little bit. Orchid comes out. They go after the Mars. They have the Moonlight Shadow. They were putting the pressure on here with the Diabolic Edict onto the Tier 1 tower. And again, they're forcing Ehome to move where they want him. And Aster immediately smoke out off of that. And they're going to head towards top because they know this now is. you've TP'd in. We know Shiro's t jungling and trying to farm. We're going that way. Brood Mother is just... A weird hero, man. It's not only that she's difficult to play against in the lane and whatnot, takes your tier one. It's 70? this thing. Yeah, this Medium rotation. Feature. Like, this rotation, it's, it also comes down to the fact that you can play this way as Brood is giving all the info. Mm -hmm. She's constantly on the enemy side of the map, making things happen. And uh, Aster seemed to understand that really, really well. It's so crazy how well Aster are moving around the map, and it... It does feel like we're just constantly complimenting Aster, and, and sometimes it's just that's the kind of performance teams put on. And they, they really are doing such a good job at it, and we, we call it out. We say, hey, like this is exactly mm -hmm. what they want to do. They do it, and they've done it, and forced Ehom to play their game plan. Yeah. Ehom's not playing their game right now. Aster's forcing them to play their game. Yeah, Ehom right now, what they're trying to do is just... Survive. Mi survive. Mitigate the damage, right? Like just damage control. That's it. Um, they're trying to move towards bottom at least. But uh, they'll get swarmed most likely again. I mean, if you're Aster, you don't even have to do that. You can let this tower go at this point. Just let, You can really decide to just let the tier 1 go. Continue farming the enemy jungle. Maybe even go into the pit. Keep control on the top lane. Yeah, you don't need to force the fight. They do glyph to take up more time from E-Home. They've got Mars showing. Yeah. You see all these spiders on the map. They're literally all around the bottom lane. They're showing everything. Like how bottom tower every move that you make will be scouted out. Yeah. Exorcism even to go for this tower. Just to make it a bit quicker, I suppose. As Roshan is falling on the other side. Yeah, Aster they're is, getting an Aegis out of this. Yeah. It's like at this point, it's 15 minutes in. You really don't have to defend the tier 1 tower anymore. Nope. And they get the Aegis, they have Monet in such a good spot in terms of net worth. He is really just so far ahead of this Phantom Assassin. We've well, seen all three cores yeah, are. Uh, we, we saw something similar with uh, the PA game in the last match, in which PA eventually made a comeback. I'm not sure if this is a same situation in which a PA can just get that critical mass and own the game on her own. Yeah, it wasn't entirely like this though. They were down about 4,000, so it was half the net worth yep, deficit. Yep. And they weren't getting pressured nearly as hard. There was, there was pressure there from Ehome when they were going up against the Phantom Assassin. And, but the fight's never like 
they weren't manipulating. Yeah, Aster. I agree. Yeah, manipulating is probably manipulating is probably the best way to to put it. <laughs> yeah. Right now, e home is exactly where the brood wants them to be. Right, yep. they're playing with their food. They're tingling all the webs, walking across <laughs> them, and XXS is like, yeah, that's where I want you. Yeah, brood being the little orb weaver right there Radiant's and just spinning them up, ready for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Radiant, and they suck out the juices. Anything else? I don't know. I'm a arachnophobe something, anyway. Something more grisly, perhaps? Come on. <laughs> I just watched um, Monster Hunter recently as well. So, did you see that? No? I honestly thought you were going to say eight legged freaks. No. Not that. Top tier two is going to go down for free. You can see Treant's trying to cut the waves, maybe get a Nature's Grasp out there to do so, but it's not effective, and eventually they do get the Tier 2 top. That opens up the outpost. They've still got a lot of time on this Aegis. And again, XXS. Look at where the spiders are. Everywhere. Yeah. It's a little train of spiders. Wow. They're holding the line. Yeah. Brave warriors. They're their own outposts. They're yeah. the checkpoints. And they've found ZZQ. They've got the Orchid, they have the arrow, there's no way out. And XXS wrapping up another prey. Ooh, they found this Phantom Assassin as well. They line up the stun and the damage is coming through. Shiro trying to jump back, but he's not going to get far enough away. They'll get the kill or he gets credit for that one. Yep. 70 was there, but not there on time. Nope. But maybe a Cyclone before or a Deafening Blast a second earlier could have helped a bit, but I think he dies anyway. Interesting to stay down there too if you're Shiro, right? Because you just saw ZZQ die. Yeah, because you have blur, right? Like you're trying yeah. to play around that. Uh, it's just tough though. You yeah. got the arrow had come as well. You knew that Ori was there too. Sometimes you're you're trying to position yourself to farm where the enemy team will not be 30 seconds from them, right? right. Because if you go to your jungle, you know they're probably going to start searching you there. Yeah, rough spot. PA. She has a battle fury, right? Like she's. I hope completed that at least. Doesn't feel like it. Ori taking a lot of damage, but he does have the Aegis. Not enough damage though. Still there survives. Lives, yeah. Sips on that bottle a little bit, and XXS nips on this tower a little bit. Yeah, just look at Monet. That's a BKB fully completed. Going into the Silver crit. Edge. Yeah. yeah. As the crystal is, I think it's, it's flying out. Just so much damage coming from him. Already, I believe, with this Aegis, they should be able to pick up the last tier 2 tower. Oh, planet. That was... Close. <laughs> that was very close. Doesn't know there's a spider ready to use its trap door and jump on them. Yeah, Ori up into the air, but... I mean, he's still got a minute on this Aegis, and they're still just pressuring forward. ZZQ. They see, yeah, ZZQ gets hit by a nice arrow from Bobica. He's in the nature's grasp, but Ori doesn't really care. They'll get the kill, and XXS is ready to back them up if yeah. he needs to. This is truly a beatdown. I'm not seeing Ehome actually doing uh, a lot any longer. They haven't, well, I haven't seen them do a lot so far. Not a single arena was used. Uh, to their advantage, right? To, to there was only that one. It was only that one, but even that one didn't really help them, right? They didn't get any a lot out of it. Hey, he got spiders from it. Spiders, yeah. You're right. Back door is gone. Yule's up into the air to avoid the EMP. And EMP. It's Dino Might. EMP. <laughs> I'm gonna win the fight! They're going in with the arrow, they'll look over at ZZQ. Stunned up, killed off, XXS, takes out ZZQ. <laughs> Make a kill streak here for the Brood. Yeah, XXS having a brood real fun mama. time. Brood mama. I just killed the Lash. <laughs> I can't. Put spiders against his head. Pulled the trigger, now he's dead. BKB. Monet Ooh. <laughs> going after Zeal. You've got Siamese Cat who's kind of caught in a little bit of a bad position. They get the kill into Zeal. They'll look over as a stifling dagger is thrown over at the Bane, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's that's slow, just killed creepy another man. approach. Yeah. 
Shiro blinks back, and again, it's just manipulating Ehome to Aster's will. They'll whittle them down, and eventually there'll be nothing left. 18 to 4, 20k ahead, 22 minutes in. Yeah, it is it just is about rough. a thousand gold per minute on the advantage. These, just shy. These songs were inspired by sadness. I expected a much, much closer game two. Hoped for game three. Arrow pff, on the money from Bobica. The timing's right. But they still back off. Or he kind of galloping in place there. Just resetting a little bit, waiting for Ehome to perhaps uh, pop their heads out of the basil. Just a tiny little bit, and then you can uh, take an easier fight. Yeah. You see how the spiders are separating across the map? He's just... Just looking. They want it. Like, this is the worst part that you can be in right now for Ehome. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I don't know if you even... Didn't see I, a spear I don't know if that was the in uh, intention of that, but... It was more for the spiders. Yeah. There you go. This is the one. This is the desperation smoke. We mm -hmm. see it very often from teams. When There's the non desperation smoke from Aster. Yeah. The counter. Can oh, this is a good position for Ehome. Oh, Spear lands with the arena. They're going to get the kill here on the side. He's kept the look over it. Ori the Yule's up into the air, but he's taking a lot of damage. He'll pop the Bloodstone, trying to stay alive, but they've got the ice wall down, so he doesn't have a lot of ability to move out of the fight. Nice. They get the kill on Ori. They take out the Lestrak. Doesn't buy back yet. XXS, though, doing a lot of damage. Bobica comes in with the Exorcism going from ZZQ. They get the kill on Azeal. They'll take out ZZQ and 7E. Planet TP's back. Three heroes dead on the side of Ehome. They did get Ori. They did get themselves yep. Yep. a plus one on that, but it just was not enough. With that fight, they actually gained net worth advantage on the side of you. <laughs> like, uh, it swinged, buyback was used. Yeah, buyback was used, so it actually swung in their favor a little bit. And you couldn't really ask for way more, considering what the shape of the game and what state they were in. Yeah. Here come the Glaives, bouncing around. Oh, once more. They bounce around the room and they'll take out the bottom set of racks or the top set of racks. Oof. And, uh, well, what used to be a shrine. They almost took out that old shrine building. Remember, oh. you could just heal on the high ground? I remember. Good times, good times. Have a good time. Survive forever. Ori getting caught for a second, but I don't know if they have much more than that. They're going to look to go on the Death Prophet as well as the Mars. They get the kill on the Zeal. They look over at ZZQ. The Nature's Grasp is down, but it's not really accomplishing much. The EMP is out, and Monet doesn't have any mana to work with, but he's already used the Eclipse. He could just right-click for now. He still has that BKB, so same he's goes fine. for XXX. They're not really afraid of pressuring this tower a little bit longer, perhaps even take down the side. Shiro just going in, but there's the Satanic. Overgrowth used, everything being thrown at the side of Aster, hoping, praying that they can bring this one back. The Meteor gets dropped down, but Shiro's body will hit the deck. Down goes ZZQ, down goes 7E, GG. and down goes the hopes of Ehome splitting the series one apiece. Aster will take it 2-0 in a very convincing fashion in game number two. I know we have a lot of Ehome fanboys on the panel here in the room. I, I became definitely one of them recently as they've uh, shown their strength. This game was one of those off ones mm -hmm. that doesn't really look that great. I hoped and expected game three in this series because the first game was really good. Yeah. Like first game, both teams played exceptionally well. The second one, I'm not taking a lot. I'm not going to blame Ehome a lot because you are playing versus a Brood. She was picked early on, but still it's a Brood. It's hard to play against her. And sometimes it just gets into your head. This is definitely one of those games in which they couldn't really combine their forces in the first 10 minutes, 12 minutes, to decide what they need to do on the map. Right. They were just kind of juggling around the brood, around the webs. And if you allow yourself to do that, remember, there's Lash on the other side, there's Luna farming the triangle. Eventually, they will just outscale you with their ever-growing net worth. It was so rough for them, and right? That one fight that they just had, it looked amazing. But Lash had, has a Bloodstone, Luna <laughs> has a Satanic. It, it, you set up the fight well, but you're way too far behind. Yeah, it's it's everything they wanted in that fight. The setup was there, the high ground was there, the advantage was theirs. Yeah. But when you're down by so much, there's only so much you can do in a fight like that. And at the end of the day, Aster set themselves up for that. That's what they did by manipulating Ehome's presence. And Ehome took a Desperation Smoke. It didn't work out, 
and ultimately Aster take the series two yep. zero, and they look pretty good coming into the back half of now their season because I believe they're three and one. They got what three more matches to go, and so it, it could look good for Aster. I know I'm ready to get my tear jar ready, as uh, you know the whole panel was on Ehome, so we're gonna throw it back to them, and I'll collect some tears. Back to you guys. Yes, indeed. Another 2-0 to get into the second series of the day. And unfortunately, you know, home, their run, their momentum might be ending here, Black. Yeah, but uh, I have to make a correction first. Uh, Mr. b -Cup, if you can hear this, I did not say e was going to win. Thank you. Please don't uh, spread rumors. <laughs> spread misinformation. Yeah, thank you very much. Fake I forgot news. your question. Sorry, can you ask that again? Uh, me too. So uh, let's let's let's. All right, you your turn, Ricky. I didn't hear his question. I don't know what you're asking me. Just say something, Ricky. Oh yes, e home. Uh, a real rough day for them. I mean, honestly, game days. Uh, days. Uh, true, true. I think game two here wasn't necessarily like a an outdraft. <laughs> they just they got outplayed in all lanes. Like this was really just Aster being a better team here. It's interesting when you started becoming an e home fanboy. You know, don't 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 say it. Kind of just crumbled. Don't. You know? Don't. Not saying you did it, but maybe you did it. Meanwhile, Sorry. me, the true, the true LBZS fan, they're still riding strong. Are they? They are, but they're no. gonna play LGD. <laughs> yeah, I was like, are <laughs> they? Are they? <laughs> you might wanna not off the day. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. They're gonna do great. They're gonna do great. But <laughs> focusing <laughs> on this game. <laughs> <laughs> no bad later today upset if the season is coming uh focusing on this game i mean we felt like they had the answers to the brood when they're in their draft but they just didn't quite execute it i mean what happened ricky i mean they like i said they just got outplayed in all the lanes the mars struggled way too much bottom um it's obviously not a great lane for him into the luna to begin with but this was far worse than it should have been you also lose mid lane as the invoker into the lestrack matchup which you shouldn't lose um, and then as a result, Lishrak rotates bottom and kills Zeal. So you just had this scenario where like Zeal had no game and he is your only real answer to the Broodmother. Um, yeah, it is honestly Aster just dominating it from minute zero. In my humble opinion, mm -hmm. if you may. Nothing's humble about you, Black. Nothing is, but <laughs> you can act like sometimes it is. Okay. Uh, Broodmother, when you play against it, you really can't rely on having one hero to counter it. Like you need multiple answers. Sometimes two, like my personal favorite is three, just so you have... Mm, a sweet spot. Yeah, th sweet spot, because two might also not be enough, you know, because they might be busy ganking around. So you really want to have a, optimally a support, a carry, and another core that can deal with him. And this game, they only had a Mars, who had a super rough lane. And once that happens, Brute, completely unchecked, takes the top tower, runs middle, kills like four heroes, takes the mid tower, runs bottom, takes that tower. What do you do? There's no place. You don't deal with Brute by not dealing with Brute. That doesn't work. I guess that logic checks out. I yeah. can't really... But can't some heroes, you know... Don't eat without eating. Like, like, you, uh, you, you can deal with Alchemist eating. sometimes by not dealing with Alchemist if you have like a draft that really hard counters him, you know? But against Brute, it doesn't work. I see, I see, I see. Okay, I see where you're going. Deeper okay. thought behind it, you know? Yeah. Not, mm -hmm. not, not quite as surface level as it appears sometimes. Yeah, like, you know, the when I talk about my deepest thoughts, it's like mm -hmm. a milk bottle, milk carton falling over. Have what? Like, a, like a flower where yeah. it just looks like Have you like watched Spongebob at all? Only Spongebob people would know this uh, yeah, reference. Yeah. Where Patrick is like, oh, my, thought com my thoughts are so complex and it's like a milk bottle falling over. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of me. I also look like him. Niche reference. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure all the, the, the millennials are... Is mayonnaise with, an know? instrument? I mean, there's nothing wrong with Spongebob references. Those things can go on for days. True, true, true. As niche as that one may be. Um, yeah, I think... I don't know. For, for me, like it kind of comes down to like this idea. They picked the PA, right? Like, yeah, they did. They picked the PA, and mm -hmm. they were like, okay, lane might not go so so fresh, might might not be so hot and funky as we would like. Yeah, but we have the Dream Protector, as his name suggests. He can protect the tower. He can protect the lane. He can protect the game. Um, you do give the Brood a free lane under that logic, unfortunately, and then. I don't know, like, it, it, it didn't work. Planet, I, I'm not sure what's happening there. We saw one moment there where they were running top of three heroes on Aster. Planet was positioned absolutely perfectly to cut the creep wave. And he kind of just used nature's grass once and then kind of got scared and ran into the trees and just hid. 
Yeah. I don't know. Is, is, is that what you expected from him there? I mean, it's definitely not a hero that he excels on. Like, he's not his Rubik or his Shaker, right? Yeah. You could see he's pretty unfamiliar. Also, his skill build, he went like living armor as a Ford free end, which is something I usually never see. Like, mm. usually you go full on aggressive. You want to win the lane, right? Yeah. And you got to make sure that the only brute counter actually has a good lane, which then you kind of skill in a way that doesn't ensure that. And yeah, it all pretty much went downhill. Uh, they tried to maybe go a little bit out of the comfort zone with a tree end pick, but... Didn't seem to work. Yeah. But they did half-half, right? Yeah. Because then they go back to the Invoker PA again. It's like, okay, so what yeah. is the big idea behind everything? It kind of felt like, I want this, you want this, okay, we pick you this, and then... I mean, we did say the, the PA pick felt super greedy yeah. uh, in the draft, and it is it is a comfort pick, but it just wasn't the right one this game, and even 7E getting his Invoker was... Ended up backfiring. Or he's just too good on his Lishrak, it seemed. Like, he crushed a lane yeah. that uh, normally you don't see the Lishrak coming out ahead at all, let alone that far ahead. As we say, Ori Lishrak. Ori You Lashrak. did say Lori, Ori Lishrak at that least once. That is what they say. That is what they always say. The legends. Yep. And, of course, without any great team, there's always a great mind behind it. And we are lucky enough to talk to the great mind behind Team Asta. We have Lanham on the mic to talk us through that last game. So the first question I want to ask you is actually about that mid matchup. Was Ori confident he could beat the Invoker on the Leshrak at mid? Uh, I don't think that's uh, that's too important in that game because uh, the the hero we pick uh, oh, gonna oh, perform oh, after the laning stage, so it doesn't really matter if he wins the lane or loses the lane. Cool, just a nice uh, <laughs> nice consequence of it. Very good indeed. Um, something else I want to ask you uh, revolves around the um, Marana pick as well. I want to know, Baboka, did he just say? I don't need a setup stun in my lane. I'm going to land the arrows regardless. Does he have that confidence? Uh Pomps can still perform in the team fight without landing the arrow, so it was all right. And also we have the we have a ban we have been after the landing stage, so there there is a combo in the middle of the game, so it's fine. Fair enough. Makes a lot of sense. Um regarding the Phantom Assassin, what is it that you felt your team did to make it win uh versus how E Home played it? Uh so which game are we talking about? First game or second one? Both. Uh well, both. Uh I'm asking how Asta utilized the hero uh compared to E Home. Uh, well, I just feel like uh, if you think the hero is good in this game, you just pick it. But I don't feel the the Phantom Assassin from their game, so that's it. Fair enough. I don't feel the impact. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Ricky? No, I mean that was that was actually going to be one of my questions was about the oh. PA. So <laughs> you're good. <laughs> uh, Black, do you want to ask anything? Yeah, I have a quick question about uh, matchmaking. A lot of Chinese players are playing on the uh, SEA server. I wanted to know why they play on a server where they have much higher ping than on their own server. I want to know why they play on a server where they have much higher ping than on their own server. 
。但是其实 Pin 肯定会比打国内高，你觉得是为什么大家都愿意去东南亚服务器打 P 打天梯呢？现在这个国服，首先国服的人不多了嘛，然后再加上国服的天梯环境不太好，就是，呃，打法有点问题吧。呃，大家更喜欢东南亚那种风格吧？嗯嗯。呃、uh, ，First of all, there aren't、uh, too many top players in Chinese region right now. And the second of all, I think the playstyle of, of C server in the top ladder match is better, so that's why player prefer to play on C server. Okay. All right. Nice. Last question for me then.、Uh, in a previous interview,、uh, they informed us that、uh, you're. Quite good friends with Baboka, so my last question is: Do you miss your friend Baboka since he's been away for so long? 嗯，之前就是采访的时候，波波卡也说他有点想念大家了。然后你有没有想念波波卡？<笑>我想，我很想念我的队友，在东南亚的队友，感觉他们很惨啊。呃，应该马上就回来了啊。Uh, yeah, I miss my teammates uh very much. Uh, they kind of. Uh, it's it's a pity for them to stay out of China, but they're gonna come back soon. So, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. We are too. All righty. Congratulations on the win, and best of luck for the rest of the DPC Lanham. 感谢你，希望你们后面有好运。好，谢谢。不用谢，不用谢，不用谢。All righty. Well, that was Lanham indeed spreading some insight on the draft there, and、uh, yeah, I mean, one thing I've noticed between these interviews compared to、uh, some of the interviews from the other regions is that they're very happy to share <laughs> their insights into、uh, you know heroes and drafts.、Uh, it feels like they're much less protective over the information, and even that extends to Chinese language interviews as well.、Um, it almost feels confident to me that they're just like, yeah, you can you can take our ideas because we just understand the game at a deeper level than this. It could just be confidence in their play as well. Like a lot of these teams, like we're so deep into the patch that a lot of these ideas may just be common knowledge. It just comes down to whether or not you can actually utilize it. And Aster is one of these teams that is exceptionally good. They've been playing super well, but、uh, yeah, not real secrets from them. Might also just be the art of misdirection. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about this with the brood, yeah. yeah. That they, maybe they're、uh, trying to make people ban the brood and they don't even really play it. But I mean, after this last、oh, performance,、uh, <laughs> honestly, looks, looks like they play it. Like if you're really versatile as a team, I don't think you know giving away secrets is really going to hurt you. Oh, oh, they banned this hero. Well, we're just going to pick this. Oh,、yeah. they banned both. Well, we still have this. And then you know the the, the magic box is never empty. The magic box is never empty. There's always more inside of it. Indeed, Pandora's box.、Um, yeah, it's.、Uh, it could have just been a brood pick to get the brood band. You know, especially when you pick it first phase as well. That's going to scare people when they're looking through the replays. They see that first phase brood. They're going to be like,、oh. statement pick right there. Exactly,、yeah. exactly. It's only the second brood pick of the tournament. I think like the seventeenth ban or something ridiculous. Like it's 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 been banned so much and picked so little. So they know that if they just kind of stir that pot a little bit more. Then、uh, they will be able to eke out a few more broodmans. Alrighty, guys, that is going to be it for this series. Then, as Asta take the clean at two zero, and、uh, the one question I guys want to ask ask you actually is:、um, Do you think if this team were all together, whether they would be able to beat LGD yet? I actually think they would have. I think I think the first series,、uh, Aster looked very good into LGD, and LGD wasn't in, in maybe in like perfect form.、Mm -hmm. I think at that time, if the whole team was there, it's definitely possible. I think Aster could have taken that series. Yeah, I think you're probably right. But the LGD that showed up on day one was a lot、uh, less in shape than the LGD that is there now. Yeah, they, def they definitely yeah. get better the more games they play. Like you can、yeah. tell, like every game gets more refined. The draft gets better. The play gets better. Everything is just much more crisp, and they're slowly and surely and surely getting back into shape where they were before, where they were the favorites. And now, I mean, they've been the favorites all along, but now they're playing to that level again. Yes, they certainly are. They're warming up. They're finding their momentum. And、uh, meanwhile, the momentum of Ehome has unfortunately stopped once again. So、Crushed. they will have to recover somehow in this DPC, or they could be in some trouble. But right now, middle of the pack is an okay place to be. Alrighty, guys, that's going to be it for our second series of the day. But stick around as we've got one more to come, and it's going to be LGD versus LBZS, the David versus the Goliath. Can they pull it off? We'll find out after this break.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back here to the CNDPC. We are going into our third series here today. It is LGD versus LBZS, and I'm joined by a wonderful panel. How's it going? Black Lizard, how are you guys doing? Doing great, doing great. Yeah, First time to get on a panel in this tournament? Yeah, it's been a long time, Ooh, man. Oh, it's going to be so good. There's a lot of testosterone on this panel, I can already tell. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, have, we haven't been to the gym for a long time together. Since Romania. Yeah, soon. 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 soon you can yeah. join if you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'd, be a, it'd be my pleasure, really. Yeah. Peacock loved, Peacock it. loved it. <laughs> like, he had such a good time after. Couldn't walk for like Couldn't a week. Walk. I think he told you about the story. I heard a little bit about it. Yeah, it sounds terrifying, honestly. It was a lot of fun because we had to walk to the studio. There was no cabs, nothing <laughs> 15 like minutes. that. 15 <laughs> minutes of walk every day. And uh, yeah. He enjoyed it a lot. Mm. No, nice, nice. Sounds great. Yeah, it sounds like a great time. Um, but coming up next, obviously, we have the LG LBZS game. Now, let's talk about L uh, LBZS here. They had a pretty big upset, honestly, the other day against RNG. Is this team capable of upsetting LGD? No. No. Just I mean, straight up no? Not, not LGD. I think LGD is a little bit too strong. Probably against Asta, they... You know, wouldn't be able to do it either. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe against the rest of the teams, yes. But Aster and LG, their the, the, the leadership just seems a little bit too strong, to be honest. Like, they're just too consistent. Consistency yeah. seems to be beating all those, quote-unquote, lower-tier teams. Because, like, if you know you're better than them, and you just consistently do that, there's no way they should be able to beat you, right? Yeah, makes yeah. sense. LBZS, they had that uh, amazing series versus RNG, for sure. But RNG also did show sign, signs of weaknesses, right? Here and there, um, they, they, they would catch themselves in drafts that would have no stuns, like that one versus LBZS. Yeah. Or sometimes they would be just caught off guard with a snowball sort of a lineup. Um, obviously, RNGs look even better than, than that right now. Like they've improved too, but... Uh, you're you're facing PSG LGD. I'm gonna. I, I, I we can merry go around here forever. You're playing LBZS versus PSG LGD. We have one outcome that we're looking at. That that's PSG LGD just taking this series. The only question is just how difficult will it be for them, and maybe hopefully LBZS can make an upset. Go to game three. I probably not. Am I too harsh? No, but probably no game three. No. Probably. Yeah, I mean. Looking at the stats here, you can see they've only dropped one game so far, and it was to Aster, who looks amazing, right? Like, off yep. of the series we just watched, this team is, like we were saying, consistency is key. They're the only other team that's really showing consistency, right? Yeah, at the same time, though, when they played the first series, LGD looked like they just came back from a Disney long break. Yeah. They definitely got better against Phoenix Gaming. They gave them no chance. Against VG Gaming, they had one rougher game, but the second game was completely one-sided as well. And, yeah, they're just getting better the more games they play. That's something to expect from PSG LGD. Like uh, a team, the way they are, the way they play throughout tournaments, usually you expect them even at the majors and whatnot, they start a little bit slow and then they pick up towards the end. At TI it was a different story because they were just dominating um, everyone. Yeah. I mean, they were expected to be the winners. The right? winners, yeah. Almost yeah. were, but Got things close. happened. Got things close. happened, yeah. Sometimes um, Magnus is uh, an interesting hero. Yeah, yeah. Magnus was a, uh, more than interesting hero, I think, at TI. That was uh, a... <laughs> was a great hero. <laughs> Very fun to watch. Else. Like, a way better bad rider. Yeah. Okay, so uh, LGD looks definitely like the favorites coming into this. We've mm -hmm. seen LGD kind of clown around a little bit and have fun in the past. Could we see, like, LGD do something fun, or is it just not the day for that? You're playing versus LBZS. If it, it, LBZS, Phoenix, perhaps are the teams to practice strategies around in the DPC. If you want to do that in the DPC, yeah. I think it's probably better to save those new strats for scrims. Yeah, I think you want to lay that off until you're really first place, because then you go directly mm -hmm. to the playoffs, and then perhaps if you're five zero and you're already locked in that green on the Liquipedia. Or six zero, and then in the last years maybe you can be a little bit more adventurous because like the playoff spot is really really yeah. important, right? Yeah, uh, we, we've seen even PSG LGD in the. I'm not sure if it was the first or the second season, but it wasn't easy for them to e even go through, yeah. right? The, the first one, the first season, it they was took tiebreaker. Exactly, yeah. it was they a took tie, tiebreaker, and um, you have to be careful. Like all of these teams can contest you if you give them the chance, and 
you really cannot drop a game or the series versus LBZS if you're PSG LGD. You shouldn't allow it to happen, at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But look at that sunshine. Yeah, hey, look at that. <laughs> like I was gonna say, we don't have the sunshine. The sunshine specialist on panel right mm -hmm. now. Nomad isn't gonna be giving us any of those biased uh, opinions at the moment. But well, uh, you can't count them out completely. You can't. Don't let the sunshine fool you because it's dangerous. But did you see the stats? The lane advantage was very much in favor of LBZS. They're actually always performing very well in the laning stage. Just after where they seem to struggle, like a lot of the China teams yeah. actually seem to struggle after the laning phase. But if they come out of a strong landing phase, maybe win yeah. two, maybe even three lanes, they could definitely take a game of LGD. That's what happened versus RNG. They picked three yeah. heroes that are extremely strong in the lanes, and then they just never stopped. You don't need strategy if you're able to just snowball without control after the laning stage. You win three lanes, you take Rosh, you just constantly pressure. Mm -hmm. But PSG LGD, they're the kind of a team uh, with so much experience behind them that they know how to position themselves in those times. Mm -hmm. As long as they have a draft that can have the late game potential in that core, and they'll be able to come back. Yeah. Or at least I expect that to happen. Also, Zinq Pudge, maybe some... Uh, or Techies, or, or both. Techies, yeah. yeah, that's the thing. I was going to say, you know, LGD has so many picks up their sleeve, right? Like, there's just one of these teams that is so difficult to draft against. Mm -hmm. And uh, LBZS, you know, they're going to see this firsthand in just a moment. Are there any heroes that they maybe need to look out for? I think LGD definitely loves their first pick, Bane and Kunkka, like first two mm -hmm. phase, or first phase rather, they love to pick those two heroes together because the Kunkka can go to three roles, probably even four, let's yeah. be honest, Shinku probably plays a two, and then Bane, they also play on two different positions, uh, mm -hmm. Y has like a 16 win streak with him. You can think about that Tinker as well, right? Oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. so, so scary. I, I would actually say that PSG LGD right now, not obviously because of TI and their past success, just looking at the way they've drafted, the way they play, they seem, the team that, they seem like the team that's the freest in their playstyle and in their drafts. And usually those teams are the ones that dominate the region at least. Like, you don't really see other teams experiment with something like a Tinker, right? Yeah. At the moment at least. Yeah. It's only PSG LGD that are letting themselves just pick these niche heroes and give it a go with them and still win. Yeah. But it's also because nothing to say is like a Tinker expert, yeah. right? He spams it here so much. As I said before, I, I lost many games to his Tinker. But he also carried me many times, so yeah. thank you for the free It evens out, yeah. Yeah, 50-50, yeah, yeah. always. Is it 50-50? Yeah. Well, well, people that love Valve say no, but... <laughs> it's one of those things, you know, we're going to find out whether or not this Tinker is going to be uh, banned or not. But before we do so, it's time to introduce uh, my close personal friend, our Draft Sensei, Nef Sensei. How you doing? Excellent. Um, here with no. some real panelists now that I can have a back and forth with. <laughs> Unlike wow. before, and uh, a real host. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I'll take that. Thank you. Yes. No problem, buddy. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, just jump right into the draft on this one. Um, very excited to see how this uh, turns out. And there it is. No Tinker Ban. Hmm? No Bane Ban. No Bane Pick. No Bane Ban, no Bane Pick. But it's because SB counts as Bane, so I just pick SB. They can still pick the Bane as well. Yeah. Bane SB doesn't sound like a fun time to play against. <laughs> yep. This is interesting. Uh, the Io, the Monkey King, and uh, the Death Prophet are the three most picked heroes on the side of LBZS. I thought that uh, PSG LGD might allow them to pick the Monkey King mm -hmm. or the Io and just counter it out with their picks because they've done such a good job, a job of picking apart other people's drafts uh, so far in the tournament. But I guess they're worried about the strength of LBZS rather than uh, punishing things that they want to play. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't pick uh, Tusk and DP on the side of LBZS. Instead, they go with Tusk and uh, Quop. Mm -hmm. Still still pretty strong. Well, one thing you have to be a little bit concerned about is we've seen the counters to the Death Prophet come out, one of the big ones being the Bloodseeker, who's still in the pool here. So maybe afraid that PSG LGD would instantly respond with that. But Ooh, instead, Morphling so early on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a really strong pick. We saw how easy Morphling lanes against Quop, so that makes a lot of sense. And of course, as a Tusk, you can't ever really threaten, threaten Morphling him. too much. Yeah. You, know, you just wave out. But uh, with the Monkey King banned out, you might have thought that uh, they'd be a little bit more open to picking up a Wraith King here as uh, both these teams seem to like grabbing that one. Unfortunately, yep. they uh, grabbed the Morphling, which Wraith King isn't amazing against. I like, do you like it when a Skyrat just creeps up to you and uh, one-shots you as, as you're Morphling? Like silence into whatnot. I mean, you say that, but then also just like two right clicks and Skyrath. Two right clicks later on, and he's dead, yeah. <laughs> it really depends but on how farmed the Skyrath is, how farmed you are, but uh, yeah, Sky, Sky needs, need, he needs to have that uh, 
one kill in yeah. the lane, at least that one. Yeah, like he, he stands like in the fog, you know, like yeah. in that little tree line. You're like, ah, maybe I go for this one last. And Silence then, and you're gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. While you're morphing down too. You're like, yep. ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Can be difficult. It's interesting that PSG LGD, like looking at this team, you're playing versus LBZS. I would expect PSG LGD to be banning out heroes that are kind of like niche picks, right? These uh, brood mothers and whatnot. No, they just ban out the standard. Um, Disruptor and the Skyrat followed up. Okay, by the nice talker, the LBZS does play a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they picked up the Tusk here on LBZS. Well, they actually have like a super high win rate, uh, the 100% of the games that they play, the combination of the Death Prophet and the Tusk and the Death Prophet and the Disruptor. So they might be trying to bait uh, the Death Prophet to come out here on uh, LBZS and their solution being that Morphling and uh, the Spirit Breaker, just being able to quickly run into him, uh, essentially steal the Spirit Siphon so the Morphling can stand his ground deep inside the team fight without having these big saves for him or team fight turners like the Tusk and uh, the Disruptor. Yeah, and all their bans are just completely Disruptor. focused on protecting that Morphling. They're banning three silences, yep. which makes a lot of sense if you first face it. And of course, you have that amazing combo of are Morphling that can build Aghanims later on. Are you worried about some PL in the second phase? It could, up could be very scary. Yes. But nothing to say, has a pretty good hero pool against PL, I would say. Like his, yeah. his Ember Spirit is very strong. Tinker can be very good still. So I'm, I'm not too worried unless they really like get a last pick. Yeah, and last then you're like, oof. I suppose PSG LGD will ban it out in the Same last way. two. Yeah. Yeah, in, if or third banning if it, Yeah, if it doesn't well, get picked up here. Queen of Pain is reasonable enough against the Tinker once you get the Shard, you get on top of it with that Silence, able to stop his Disarm for a moment, then your team can follow up afterwards. So okay. it could be that they picked apart uh, PSG's Tinker strategy as they've seen so much success with it, and they're saying, go ahead, pick Tinker, we have solutions. That's a fair point. Yeah. And, and you have this Tusk Co-op, right? It, it's that combo that can punish you in the laning stage, perhaps yeah. if a couple of good rotations happen. Question is though, are they going to pick the Death Prophet? Yeah, they are. They will. Mm -hmm. Because they have done the same thing the last time. They picked Quap first, and then DP wasn't banned, yeah. and they just picked they the DP it. in the third. Yeah. Yeah. Don't need to pick it early if it doesn't get banned. Yeah, yeah. they grab the uh, IO and the Death Prophet whenever it is they can. Maybe Innocence Ancient Apparition even possible here. Prevent uh, them from picking it, you pick it yourself. We've seen it banned versus Morphling, we've seen it banned versus DP. That's, that's Not necessary, but... Mm -hmm. Still like an Beastmaster, a pretty common oh, yeah. answer we have seen to a DP. Mm -hmm. and I, honestly, they're good against all three of these heroes right now. Oh. They all hate playing against summons, and of course, Faith Beyond loves playing those heroes. So. Wouldn't be surprised to see either of those come out now. And we already have not one charge, but two charges on the side of PSG LGD, so even if you get that Lycan, you won't be lacking control, which, mm -hmm. is, which is something that we've seen some teams struggle with once they pick off lane Lycan. Uh, if you don't have initiation and you have offline like them, it's just hard to play the game. Yeah. Mm. And speaking of, they lack control on the side of uh, LBZ as against a like, and they picked up a Death Prophet and the Queen of Pain. One of these heroes is going to go mid unless we see something crazy like uh, Pause One, Queen of Pain again. Mars is still in the pool, but you're kind of limited from your ability to pick him here. In as Walker, a the like. Phoenix in Walker, what? No. Very Ooh. interesting. Very interesting, yeah, indeed. The Invoker is one of the best heroes in the game to protect that egg, though. You have Deafening Blast, you have Tornado, mm -hmm. even Cold Snap with the egg po constantly popping the, the overtime damage. Very good tools to protect the egg. And they don't have amazing attack. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There it is. It's, it's now they have say, attack speed. I was about to say, there is a one hero still in the pool that does quite well dealing with this. Now, is LGD just being overconfident with like the Phoenix here? Or is this is there something that... Uh, I mean, they could go for the Mars if I mean, it's still in the pool after this ban phase. You can go with the Mars. You could go with uh, the Beastmaster that Black mentioned earlier. All of these heroes work well. Like There are ways to play against Lil Shredder, right? This will most likely be your position 5 grandma anyway. She gives out cookies but doesn't really have enough to buy that Blink Dagger. It's it's much harder to get in a position to hit the egg as a support snap fight, especially five. Yeah, it's a good, very good point actually. Mm. So, so they like, the like and Faith Beyond played this previously and uh, dominated. So yeah. probably not Beast. That surprised. It's gonna be the next ban of theirs. Yeah, Beastmaster was. Uh, we saw that in the last game as well. Yeah, and they ban out the TA, which is I think the exact same lineup they beat RNG with, pretty much. Yeah, just uh, three semi cores that are constantly active. Yeah, snowball after the laning stage. Not a lot of options for uh, something that's going to outcarry the Morphling as this game goes on. I still like the PL to be banned by PSG LGD. I feel that the hero is alright. Do yeah. you, do you, even versus Phoenix. It, it can be a bit problematic early on, 
but uh, of course, once you get items, Invoker can't deal with you. None of the heroes really can. Right? It yeah. feels like a perfect game for him. Mm -hmm. I, w I wouldn't be against it at all. But it's not really LBZS's strong point, I think. Yeah. Like they really love those safe lands that are just semi cost Like I wouldn't be surprised to see the Quap safe land again. Mm -hmm. And they put like a more scaling here in the mid. Found a lot of success with that. Yeah, if you put Quap on mid lane, like she will not dominate. Uh, Across Vex and Walker. <laughs> Walker beats that so Exactly. Easy. He'll yeah. he'll have a good time there. So maybe safe and co-op, that profit off lane with the tusk. And then you last pick your mid lane that can actually beat Invoker or do well. I don't know what beats him at the at the moment. Invoker? Uh, yeah, there's not many. He, he, he draws heals up, those right? heroes yeah. right now. Maybe Brute Mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything yeah. else just he just heals up against all the new Yeah, Quas is too good. Um, Even after the nerf, it's still very, very strong. They're taking a lot of time with the last ban, actually. Raid King and the Beastmaster, like we predicted. Like you but There's predicted. not much left. They could still do offlane uh, Spirit Breaker, of course, and perhaps like a Dark Willow could be pretty good with the draft they have, especially with the Morphling as well. Oh. High, high potential Aghanims on Morphling there, yeah. for sure. They usually play Phoenix on 5 on Innocence, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So Dark Willow would make a lot of sense, I think. Also additional save for the Egg. Like you see the Snapfire walk forward, you just egg him. Oh, sorry, you just uh, hear him. I think you could play the Phoenix as well. Right? Also, yeah, sure. And they're so it. versatile. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's PSGLGD. They played Spirit Breaker like a few months back. They played him on mid. How even. about Undying? Let's go for yeah. Innocence. Angle. Oh, angle here. Angle, yeah, okay. Nef. Some more control for the egg, right? And yeah, what do you think? LBZS, final pick here. If you're in their shoes, what do you, th what do you think? Not a lot of options left, unfortunately. They banned out. Uh, that Wraith King last. I think they do need something with huge DPS and can front line as the game goes on. PL looks terrible now, right? PL? Yeah, it looks terrible now. Really bad. After the Pango came out. I mean, you'd have to carry in the late game, but that's about it. I'm not sure you'd be able to get there, though, is the only No, thing. no, no. I, I think PL looks really bad right now. So I don't know what other options they already have. How do you guys feel about a Faceless Void here? Faceless Void? Yeah, but you have so many disarms and the egg. It's... Uh, even the Spirit Breaker can ult you inside of it too. You have Deafening Blast, Tornado. It's a tough pick. Like the draft of LGD is really complete. But you would have Snapfire to combo with the Chrono, right? So yeah, that, that would that's be good. Something. Like Co -op oh, there you go. Oh, it's LBCS. Right. Well, Safe lane co -op, right? Safe lane co -op, mid lane storm, uh, just like we talked about. Exactly as predicted. Great job, guys. <laughs> Woo! Well, yeah, yeah, I ended up doing something up. kind of crazy. I'm not sure Storm Spirit is the hero that you need for this game. I think the disengage and fight reset is a little bit too strong on the side of uh, PSG LGD. So that it paired with the fact that PSG LG are the clear favorites going to this one. I'm going to have to go with uh, them for this first game here. All right. Rest of you guys, what do you think? Yeah, they're, they're the clear, clear favorites. At the same time, I, I am really happy to see LBZS uh, doing what they like the most, right? So you're going LGD, huh? I'm going LBZS, guys, 100%. <laughs> I love it. Black. <laughs> LGD. LGD. All right. Uh, someone had to. Come on. <laughs> uh, I'm going to jump on sunshine. Lizard's train here. I'm going to say LBZS. But to go ahead and cover this game is going to be our lovely casters. So take it away, Nomad and B Cop. Thank you very much, Ricky. I don't know about you, Nomad, but I am a big super fan of LGD. I don't want to be biased or anything. Wow. Wow. But uh, pulling out the big guns for this one, you oh, know, LBZS, they jersey. don't have a jersey, right? They just, they got nothing. <sighs> Look at that bad boy. LBZS all the way, baby. Look they got smile. this. They're about to take down LGD. Right. They're going to prove everyone. They're not here to mess around. They're here to win the whole damn DPC. Those guns. Look at that oh, logo. Yeah, yeah exactly. Looking Look at that. good. Looking mm. fresh, ready to go. LBZS. Some, I need one of those. Yeah, yeah. Some definitely very official LBZS <laughs> uh, merch here. Which, very uh, official merch. Yeah, definitely. It looks, it looks good. It does look good, it doesn't looks it? Good. Yeah. And you know, I don't know what, it kind of plays off the shirt that you just broke it's open. It's a bit of look going on, isn't well, it? A yeah, couple buttons can... still falling down your chest. Yeah. You, know, you still look good, though. <laughs> you know, Black doubted whether I could do that. He doubted <laughs> where I could pull that open. I if took every get, button off that bad If boy. you could get the, uh, the, yeah, the buttons out. But, you know, I think I, I like... You Get a little chest hair out. I don't have any chest oh, okay. hair, so I'll just, I'll just zipper <laughs> that back up. Production, please. <laughs> get us out of here. Go, 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 go. But yeah, we get into this first game, LBZS up against LGD, and uh, it's always fun to watch LBZS. I, it's a growing team, backed by Cat. You. They've grown, dude. They're not Salad. a growing team. They've grown. They're already here. They're you know, here. people calling it David and Goliath, and me, literally last second, but it's not. It's Goliath versus Goliath. 
You think so? Hell yeah. Goliath versus Goliath. All right. I mean, I, I'd have to strongly. <laughs> I'm going to write you a letter on this one, how I strongly disagree with, uh, All right. with the thought process. Well, you know, I'll, I'll let my boys do the talking. I'll, I'll, I'll let PP uh, dominate. Nothing to say in the mid lane. Yeah, that would be interesting. You know, PP, this is probably going to be his hardest challenge in the mid lane, right? Uh, for sure, for sure. But uh, no challenge is, uh, is, is, is too great for my boy PP. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, over in the safe lane, Kagome versus Ame. Not the easy matchup for LBZS, I would say. <laughs> You're just saying that they're all just easy matchups. Okay, all right. Well, you know, my boy Ame is going to come over there, and when he comes to town, everybody stops talking, and he's going to put the smack down on you. Yeah, we'll, we'll, see. we'll see about that. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> all right, I think, I think our peacocking is over about our teams, right? right? Nah, I'm, I, I, mean, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in on LBZS here. Um, but genuinely speaking... I, I like this LVZS draft. Like this is so much of what we saw last time, which worked so well for them. I feel like they watched the replays or like, you know, just, just looked back and were like, hey, screw carries, man. They're, they're, carries are overrated. Let's just run at our enemies and this is gonna be a great game. Yeah, you, you'd like to think so. They, you know, they've got the movement. They have the Death Prophet, always big on that. Oh, yeah, the LBZS, what, when they won against RNG, they picked it all three games, right? That Death Prophet Tusk lineup. Yeah, they like it, they like it. I mean. Most of the teams in this region do. Death Prophet, for some reason in this region, everybody wants to go on it. Yeah. Been a very popular pick. I don't know the stats right now. We're not on panel, so you know, nah, I'd have to worry about that's out. Yeah, I just don't know. Stats are for nerds. Here on this Phoenix, that five position Phoenix, I was wondering who they were going to put. Is it going to be the five position Phoenix? We've seen X Nova play a five Spirit Breaker. What, what were they going to bring us for LGD? But it's never so simple with them. No, no, Phoenix not been a popular hero in, uh, in in any DPC region recently, really. And uh, but LGD, and it's it's a long time favorite of theirs. And this is part of the reason why. Like you pop that tag team, and in innocence just says, "Yeah, nice attack speed, bro. Goodbye." Yeah, here's eat some fire spirits. Yeah, Appreciate nice like ya. nice snack stack, bro. I'm gonna mess that up as well for you. Detachment getting chased down, some body blocks from Jin Q, and he is on this Pangolier. Faith Beyond on the off lane, Spirit Breaker will get first. Blood. I don't know what you were saying about Kagome earlier, but uh, well. Yeah, I'll be ZS, you know, just giving them a little bit of hope. Uh, important to do so. Lull them into a full sense of security. Classic LBZS move here. For sure. And, uh, you know, they have All made right, some major cheating. comebacks. You, you so, got to get that 17%. Bump it up. He's just straight up cheating. That's, that's the lengths LGD have to go to to be LG, LBZS. So. Yeah, you got to throw it in the cheat engine, uh, search programs, Dota 2, bash percentage. <laughs> 100% enter save file. Crank that up from 17 to 100. No one will notice. No worries. Mm, nothing to say. Getting the range creep with the tornado, but not hitting PP. He does not. And last hits at mid. Looking pretty even for the time being. So, yeah, I mean, I think we kind of expect the Storm to get a little bit of advantage at mid, I would say, at least early on. But Invoker doing pretty well for himself. Yeah, even at the moment, that's for sure. As uh, 13 and 4 to 13 and 2, it's practically the same thing. Just, uh, you know, two numbers less in the denies, <laughs> obviously. Faith well, Beyond getting low. You. Well done. <laughs> As uh, Kagome gets that kill on a Faith Beyond. And big. Big? Big Massive. kill. Big kill, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the first, like, major core and core kill we've seen. You know, none Ooh. of the support nonsense. Oh, Shin Q as well. Getting pretty low here as Kagome comes across. The dagger's going to connect attachment. Is he going for this? No. No, and that hesitation is going to cost him a, uh, a, a lot of health. And actually, the Spirit Breaker is straight on in here, and he's, he's looking at detachment, but won't be able to do much more than this. Not a big fan of just running in and getting hit by that Scatter Blast. That doesn't feel that great, but there's no Shadow Strike behind it. And we've seen these safe lane That's Queen of Pains max out that Shadow Strike, looking to just dagger, dagger, dagger. And, uh, well, you know, it works. And then you can kind of rotate with that. And you see the damage output that comes in from the Shadow Strike. It really feels kind of bad if you're the other side, if it's now level 3, level 4. And, uh, you know, you're just getting rotated on. Yeah, it feels super bad when you're like, oh, hold on. They're fighting with the water rune here, interestingly. PP manning up on the next day as Zinku comes across as well. Yeah, PP looking to get himself out, but it's not looking likely. No ball lightning. He's only level four still, so Zinku gets the kill onto PP. Taking out the storm. That helps nothing to say, because this was an even lane. It was looking good. Yeah. But now you get knocked down a peg, nothing to say. This is, like I said, this is your hardest matchup in the mid lane, and we've talked about how hard mid matchups are. 
it's Ooh. gonna be tough. Bit of a rough and tumble going down Faith Beyond with the batches, but the cookies there from Detachment. Ooh, just coming off cooldown there at the right time. Does that say 20 health? That says 20 health. Ooh, Tornado EMP again. PP now in a lot of trouble with the cold snap on him. Trying to run, he just got back. Look at that TP. Still on cooldown, 68 seconds. Walk of uh, shame. Temporary setback here for uh, my boys LBZS at mid. Um, you know, nothing to say. He was just feeling challenged. He was worried, so he brought in his friends to help him out. You know, it's, uh, you know, you can say what you want about that. I think it speaks for itself. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. Scared. Scared. Salad coming to take over some experience here, knowing that Storm has to walk all the way back. You know, it's it's a long, it's a long walk. It's like a, it's a 3K. Stride of pride, baby. No walk of shame here. Stride of pride. Yeah, we've seen this matchup so much. The Death Prophet versus the Morphling. I mean, it's 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 kind of okay for the Death Prophet, right? Because you've got that Spirit Siphon, which percentage-based damage versus the Strength more for the Morphling. Like, it's 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 kind of okay, but. At the same time, if you don't have help, the Morphling is just going to do very well, and it's Moss in some trouble? I don't think so. I think the one thing that we really haven't seen from LBZS in this top lane is just the aggression, right? We've seen the Death Prophet Tusk be super aggressive, pound it down, and try and get something out of it, but they just weren't able to accomplish that in this top lane. So now you see a Death Prophet that is in top of the net worth Ooh, early. Could deadly. It, it, it could end up being a, a, a big problem for LBZS, especially with how the other lanes are going, especially PP. No! He's going to get low, no mana, Run! no health. No oh. life. PPY. Ooh, aggressive play from Ame. Yeah, that's way that's... forming in without knowing where detachment is. Pretty wet and wild. Well, actually, nah, that's a new ward, so maybe he didn't see him get into those trees. Yeah, I was I was really hoping that the Tusk was going to move up and make a play onto the Morphling with Snapfire. She got that nice little combo with a little Shredder in the tag team, right? Yeah. Um, it absolutely shreds people if you can get it off, but uh, unfortunately. The tusk was needed at the mid lane, didn't arrive in time, and yeah, I do kind of feel like this uh, Salad Tusk is not really getting a whole lot done at the moment. No, and it does lead to that combination with Shards, Cookie kind of set each other up. There's definitely a lot of synergies that can be put together, but at the moment Faith we're just beyond. not really seeing that. As I say that though, Salad missing Shards, Faith Beyond though, will still die to Kagome. Nice, the Caster's Curse working in Elba's at his favor, just as I planned. Yeah, Inuyasha not needed to help Kagome get that kill. Okay. <laughs> okay, Biko. Come on. Some, okay. uh, that's some anime references. That's some old school. Hit me up yeah. with the Toonami at midnight. Bring me in with some Inuyasha, some Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, me and my with sister the classics. Actually, yeah, me and my sister actually used to get that from the library and read it together. That's how old that is. Libraries, I don't even know if they exist anymore. Mm, depends, you know. <laughs> Where you are. It's. I'm, I'm trying to think. Because it doesn't look that bad for LBCS. I know the mid lane's been a bit of a struggle for PP. But overall, net worth is pretty even. Kagome is excelling. Uh, and Faith Beyond. Uh, all right. Stopping it right before oh, you make contact. Leave PP alone. He's just trying to get some farm. He's just trying to get some stacks. But LBCS are just getting bullied. Well, PP is getting bullied. And now they'll move over towards attachment as they start the fight in the triangle. Start getting loads out immediately. They see the storm. They jump to the storm. Scream comes through from Kagome, though. Doing a lot of work. Yeah, they're trying to get the EMP down, get a couple of kills here for the side of LBZS. They've taken out two in Faith Beyond and Jinq. Yeah. But it looks like LGD, well, they know they've given up too much and they want to get out of here. Kagome, nice sonic wave. LBZS, again, sticking with it. Don't count teams out. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, again, they've killed the storm. Um, I mean, it's... At what point, do, do we have a uh, uh, HR department at Perfect World, do you know? Because I think I should report this bullying that uh, LGD are doing here. It's actually cyberbullying. Yeah, it's pretty unfair. It's not very nice. Um, it's not okay, really, is it? Yeah, you know, now you've got Kagome, though, taking over mid. He's like, all right, PP, I got this. <laughs> yeah, you know what, I'll take over. I'm having a good game. You try to farm somewhere else, and I'll, I'll protect you. I got this. Will LGD let him farm anywhere else, though? Where is, it, where is he headed? Where's my boy? Okay, he's, he's taking the safest camps he possibly can right now. He's, he's very scared. So the thing that scares me, though, is, like, Ame hasn't been touched. And he is top of the net worth. And then, of course, nothing to say. He's doing really well, excelling, getting a couple kills here and there. And they're top two on the net worth by eh, not that much, but a significant margin. I, the split between nothing to say and PP is ob obviously massive. But, like, Kagome to nothing to say, not that big. He's still doing okay. But PP is just level six. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Yeah, I guess I didn't really. You don't really feel it till you see it. Yeah, yeah. I give my man a tome. Come on, like this is uh, this is a this is a rough old storm game. I mean, this is this was by design though, right? Like this wasn't him throwing the lane or anything like that. This was LGD just collapsing on him again and again, isolating him as a threat, and doing their best to deal with it. And now it's just recovery mode from him. And unfortunately, that's going to mean the rest of LBZS without a mid lane are going to be feeling pretty slow. But they have a Queen of Pain. Okay. It's kind of like a mid like safe lane hero, so they can still make plays and they might try and defend this mid tower. Yeah, they've also got the Death Prophet as well. EMP goes off with the Snowball, looking for Ame, not going to reach. So he's yeah. able to escape, at least for now. If they want to re engage, that's up to them. Yeah, just not dodging the uh, EMP on the, the Tusk. They're not really looking for the for the play, to be honest. Oh, there we Wow, okay. They're gonna go for Kagome. Cold snap out. They'll look over at the Queen of Pain, but the turnaround is on Faith Beyond. They'll get the kill. There it is, yeah. I mean, Faith Beyond going down on the Spirit Breaker, and the rest of LBZS just gonna happily skip away, having finally had something go their way. I mean, to be honest, the fight in the triangle kind of went their way as well, you know? They, they, yeah. they got LGD out of there, and this fight as well going their way. You know, they're, they're getting the kills, but that net worth chart is looking a little concerning. Yeah, it felt like PP in the triangle fight was a calculated loss. You know, he's struggling. Yeah, they want to keep him alive, but if Kagome can excel, and the rest of your team here, Molasses, t Molasses too, that's fine. Yeah, I think they yeah. can hold it steady for PP because he is starting to get past Faith Beyond, who really hasn't felt like a presence this game, which is super uncharacteristic from what you get from Faith Beyond. Yeah, yeah, no, he's he's a very in-your-face player. Um, but doesn't really have the, the net worth to carry him mid. through here. Whoa, nothing to say. Being jumped on in the middle lane, and they'll be able to take him down. The Invoker Whoa. is gone, and it's Ame. What? They got them both. A detachment with one, Kagome with the other. That oh. is. Whew. Okay, LBZS. I mean, exactly as expected. I mean, LBZS getting the two big kills in the middle lane. No, no, that, that, that's actually crazy. The fact that they get both the one and two, those two top net worth calls at mid. That's wow. A perfect play from LBZS. Ah, you got me on the Z train. I say LBZS so often, now you got me hitting the Z. Yeah, Queen's English, mate. And Zed's Deal dead, baby. Ooh. And a strike into the Rolling ooh, Thunder. That ooh, was an uh, impressive combination, uh, but uh, salad. Uh, 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 happy feet. Walrus punch. Uh, yeah, happy feet, happy uh, sun. Uh, no, nope, not this time. Salad ends up going down and a pause. Bug. 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 Disconnect. All right. Does he have the <laughs> Does he have the snap fire? <laughs> Where Mortimer is just kind of floating around, bug. Not to well, us. He looks pretty grounded, but he might have it, and you know, he might be like, "Yeah, I need my character to be uh, looking sharp. If yeah. I'm gonna play to my full potential." I can't be living with half the movement speed when Mortimer's front two paws are on the, you know, off the ground. True, true. Does Aesthetics cut are important. Speed. Yep. These are facts. Ask Gaben. I will. Okay. I'll give him a ring now. After the cast, actually. In between games. G from both sides. Yep. There's the F9 press. Do you spam the F9 button when somebody pauses in your game? Uh, no. No, I'm a, I'm a civilized gamer. I'm, I'm cultured and, uh, yeah, good What mannered. if they didn't pause for you? Uh, screw them. Yeah, slam that button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel the same. You can wait for me. I can't wait for you. Yeah, and you love it when you happen, so do you. Oh, I don't love it when this happens, though. Molasses is in some trouble in the top lane. Big kill there. Faith Beyond, killing off Molasses. Four heroes, though, to get the Death Prophet. It's a big commitment, but uh, if they turn this into a tower at the same time, it'll definitely be worth it. And I'm not sure this is something which LBZS are going to be bothered about defending. Yeah, 12 minutes into the game, 13 minutes into the game, a tier one tower. Area um, of the map that they're not really too keen on being on it at all times. Maybe just give it up. Yeah, I mean, this top tower is nice to hold if you can. Like, it does give you access to the enemy jungle. It defends your triangle a little bit, but, you know, it's it, it's not a tier one mid. Yeah, but what I meant to say is everybody TP in top yeah. defend this exactly tower what you'd the expect. end. Perfect analysis they from the play-by-play play tower. Pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, just as we uh, we believed. Oh, Ooh, snowball forwards, but uh, Salad is going under the tower. He is going somewhere he does not want to be. No, and Salad... Jumping around, now Rolling Thunder coming through. They've got the Spirit Vessel on Salad. Nether Strike hitting on to, 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 Detachment. 
and the ulti comes out from Innocence. Dutchman fighting up here, but it's T's on numbered as he goes down, but Albizad has looking to fight back. Ooh. Beautiful scream of pain from Kagome. That's going to take down at least one. Nothing to say, still alive for the time being, but very low to the dagger. Meanwhile, in comes Ame, looking for Molasses, and the charge comes through as well, and they take down the Death Prophet as well. And they actually got three out of that on the side of LGD. I thought that was going to go a lot yeah. better for LBZS. And uh, yeah, three for one. The Sonic Wave well placed, but... Couldn't Not finish enough. off the Invoker. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, they got the dagger out on him. I, I don't know if they thought he was dead or they were just too low on resources to keep chasing. But, yeah, and great entry to the fight from Ame as well. Oh, God, Ame's going to be so much stronger with this alacrity when it's on him. And he's also, he's starting to really pull away in terms of net worth. This is potentially oh, scary. Yeah, Mortimer's Kiss is coming out. And now, Icarus dive back and forth. GQ burning Ooh. away the kisses. They hurt. Yep, some nice uh, grilled pangolier for dinner for the side of LBZS tonight. Delicious. I don't know how good that tastes. Me neither. Game. Yeah, probably uh, got to eat around the scales, which wouldn't be uh, too pleasant, I would imagine. Yeah. Save, Save our pangolin friends. Absolutely. Don't eat them. Not food. Be kind of being friends. stalked by the Night Stalker for a bit there, but uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's finding a bit of space back into the game. I'm not going to say he's uh, pulling ahead, but he's caught up to the gang. He doesn't feel like the one left out anymore, so mode recovery. Kagome looking like he might want to jump, but he doesn't have a Sonic Wave to play with for 35 seconds. Yeah, not a chance. Yeah, you know, PP on the Storm, like you were saying, he's finally in the mix. He's in the mixer. Gets picked in this uh, pickup game. Of uh, Dota? Yep, finally, finally, you know, unlike you and me in school. Don't call me <laughs> into that. <laughs> I was last pick, thanks. Oh. All right, we'll take the uh, the short kid. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank, you. thank you. This is the Orchid reveal, and they get on top of the Pangolier and take him down expertly. Yeah, quick kill, quick reveal. Uh, not like the biggest kill to get, but... Four position goes down, you get a kill. Again, it's helping PP find his way back into the game. Yeah, it is something, it's something, as you say, with your kid reveal, you'd really like to catch the morphing or something, but uh, yeah, not gonna happen, especially now he's got the Lincolns as well. All completed up, my goodness. God, he's farming so fast. He really, really is, b -Cop. He really, really is. Nothing to say, he's kinda, not petered off, but I almost feel like I expected more from Nothing to say with the start he had. He's three, one, and five right now. He had a, a lot of those, I think all three of those kills were pretty early in the game. And then since then, it's been a little bit more quiet from him. Yeah, I mean, nothing to say. He had a lot of guys in his lane, you know, harshing his vibe, just cramping him out a bit. You know, he's like, guys, I've got this, I've got this. But no, nah, they, they took a bit of his XP, so. PP, do. And they do, could kill him okay. as well. I think that recovery, what, he's level 11? Was nothing to say level 11? I can't remember. I already forgot. I don't look no, at it. Like he levels. just got to 12, though. So experience wise, PP's kind of. Got yeah. close. He had caught up for a minute there. Unfortunately, nothing to say. Just pulls up a little bit and then gets some Midas off as well, which is obviously a big chunk of XP. So Yeah, so now about a level ahead, but a three-man smoke from LBZS. Yeah. Yes. You were right when you initially thought about making the point. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's always matters. the worst. When you think about the point, it's right, and then by the time you say it, well, it's no longer available to you. Let's Ball lightning see. in. They've big. got the orchid. No. Ah, thank you again. Well, it you happens. <laughs> he even stopped moving. <laughs> he, he knew he was dead. <laughs> That's it. Hands off the keyboard. Guys, come on. He, they're ganking me all over. Where is my team? Nah, he's happy with this. He's like, yeah, okay, keep using your rocket on me. I'm, I'm fine with that. But this is a big play from LBZS. And something they've been doing a lot of recently is going for these Roshan attempts. Now, it has been scanned out by LGD. No Rolling Thunder, though. They are going to Sunstrike. Yep. Charge. Is this going to tie? This might time out pretty well. It's going to be on the detachment. Roche is low. The tornado. This it could comes be bad. through. Fabian. And the Aegis is picked up by PP. PP's got it. And now they're going to immediately pop it here. The supernova comes on down. But look at Molasses. He's just tearing through the fight with that BKB. Exum doing a lot of work, but it is ending soon. Yeah, they're going after Molasses. And they've got the Sunray on him. There's the Rolling Thunder that we wanted for the early parts of this fight. But, uh, well, now it's here, and it does net them a kill. I believe they bought back on Detachment. Yeah, three heroes die on the side of LBZS. That kind of salvages for LGD. It's the right idea for LBZS. It is, it is. Yeah, I mean, sure, you don't maybe get the Aegis and use it like you would want to. I mean, I guess there's something to be said about not giving the Roshan to LGD, but that's not really worth it. Oh, whoa, nothing to say, caught in the mid lane. 
Goodness me, that, that, was, that was so quick it even caught the Observer off guard. I believe that was the blink on Salad jumping in. On the tusk? Yeah. Was it the blink? Yeah, with the, like, the walrus. But yeah, but first, there it is. Salad likes this. That blink start walrus punch control. And that would, that's what allows them to kind of move forward and, and go for more. And they might just continue to get more heroes. It's Shikyu again. Kagome. Yeah. Having a great game now, dominating. 4-0 and 6 involved in 10 of the 15 kills. Kagome. Kagome. That's all Kagome, I mean. Kagome, Kagome. Yeah, he is uh, He is going, that's for sure. And it's not stopping in the middle lane as PP makes a bit of a play on Faith Beyond, but he did get off that ball, though. It's not going to happen. One thing I did want to point out, um, some analysis here, b Ooh, everybody ready? get ready. Yeah, yeah, that's my buddy, a crumpet. Molasses, in that fight, he had the ghost coming back to him. I was like, ooh. He's going to make a pretty big player. He's going to survive through this. There's a spirit vessel on him. So he didn't heal as much as he wanted to and uh, therefore ended up dying. So big spirit vessel pick up coming in useful as we have Salad dying down at bot. Counterpoint about molasses. Uh-huh. I used it recently in a recipe for cookies. Oh, how was it? It was actually really good. We don't really use molasses so much in the UK. What, what, what is it? It's it like was the sugar? first time I used molasses. I actually don't know entirely what it was. I just followed the recipe. It was molasses, ginger, cinnamon cookies. They were really good. Very they nice. kind of have like a snap to them if you do them wrong. I did them right, so they were soft, obviously. <laughs> yes, usually when you're talking about food, you talk about what they taste like when you do it wrong. Thank you for that. Uh, Jin Q coming in with the rolling thunder, and well, that's a blink away. They still have the charge. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Boo. Yeah, I you, feel you gotta commit to every dude, charge. There should be like some kind of bonus you get every charge onto an enemy hero you connect with to give you an incentive never to cancel charges. That would make the hero so much cooler. Based on travel distance. Yeah, yeah, why not? Like travel say, distance onto the enemy side. Yeah, make bulldoze a passive, which gives you status distance for each unit traveled whilst in charge of darkness. Like cancel if you ever cancel it, and here we go onto Ame. Ame, but he's got the BKB, just turning it around. Yeah, he gets out, gets the kill on a PP even. Faith Man just gives a little tip. Look at that, just a little tip there. Says a nice BKB, bro. It's the right idea, but now that's the BKB going down. I think they could have potentially broken out of that commitment. Yeah, I'm not sure they, uh, not sure they saw it. Not they sure didn't get they. The text. I don't know. Maybe just. Uh, yeah, they don't get the pop up on the screen like we do, so yeah. it's a little bit harder for them. I don't know if you guys knew that, but some in depth there. Hey, we get the text messages that say leave this engagement. Yeah, yep. do not go. Abort, abort, abort. Five K lead though for LGD. Starting to break away a little bit. I, I think again, it's just maybe the lack of. Molasses is doing all right. I don't really want to beat up on him. No. I think he's doing fine. I think he. I'd like to see more pressure though. And they, they've been trying to do that. You can see with that play on Ame, they're trying to make it so LGD are a little bit uncomfortable. I, I don't know if Ame's the right target in a situation like that. But and now he's going Ags next, so he'll turn into the Spirit Breaker. Uh, here we go. A little bit of a play onto nothing to say here, but Salad does seem pretty alone. So team are actually going on the Phoenix in the middle lane instead, but that leaves Salad alone, and that means Salad's gonna die. So did Innocence, or Y. Okay. I hope Y goes back to Innocence. With all these name changes back to old names, yeah, bring yeah. Innocence back. It is the, uh, it's, it's a shuffle period, you know, after TI, but for China it's also the name shuffle period. Charge? Committing? Nope. Oh. Hello Detachment. Hello okay. Kagomi. All right. <laughs> Where is he going? Bottom lane, 10 out of what 10. What a charge, yeah. Oh, right. Hell yeah. <laughs> he was in this the whole time as well. They're just like, what the? <laughs> Who hit me? What? <laughs> what was this? The confusion from LVZ. I mean, they like, yeah, they had no idea which one they were actually jumping there. And yeah, wow. <laughs> they were less confused than <laughs> us, though. True. True. And it, I know they, the last time they tried to pressure Ame, it didn't work out. But he, again, it just felt like he's had a free game. Yeah, and I'm not really sure what the plan is with this BKB. You somehow need to draw out the fights long enough where you don't all die and uh, this BKB's duration goes down, then you can maybe pop him off again. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough old situation for, LG, uh, for uh, LBZS to be in. They are going to have to find some late game options here, which I'm not sure their draft naturally allows them so much. Shard for the Queen of Pain. Uh, we'll see what Kagome can do with that. I like that shard. It's always good to jump the back lines with it. Though, the back lines of LGD, the supports of LGD, aren't exactly that easy to kill. Yes, they've shown that they can kill Jinkyu, but like when you're doing it as the Queen of Pain, you kind of want like one plus one, right? You take him out quickly and go for it. Yeah. It may not be so simple when it comes to a Pangolier, who now has shard, 
and and that Venus. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, not the easiest kills in the world to get. It's looking rough on the pickoff side, but uh, still, you know, gold doesn't matter in Dota, as we know. Uh, net worth is a myth. All that matters is kills, and it's 16 to 16 right now, so very even game. Yeah, the, the net worth doesn't matter, like the points don't matter, and whose line is it anyway? Exactly. exactly. Link with the rolling thunder, shield crash down on a molasses who uh, pops his BKB. Okay. Bit premature. And now that means it'll be down if LGD do want to just force the issue again. Oh, they're trying Kagome. to do and get Kagome. Yeah, and he does not have a BKB. Ooh. Old Snowball, uh, not sure it's going to save him. Let's see, rolling into the BKB, oh. Morphling. That ain't going to end up too well, but oh. the Blade of Pain! <laughs> oh, gets caught out by the Adapted Strike. Yeah, they end up getting the kill on a Salad. They've got the Ice Wall down, making Salad's retreat very difficult. Mega kill streak and a double kill for Ame. There is hope that Kagome could get out of that one. They both have buyback, but LGD the move over and pressure mid. They've pinged up the mid tier, too. Nerf Adaptive Strike, please. That was way too much range. Kagome deserved to live. Justice for Kagome. 10k <sighs> lead, but I don't want to... This game hasn't looked bad from LBZS. I think it's just looked cleaner from LGD. Yeah, I mean, in, in a way, I think LGD have the late game options as well, which kind of means that the fact that they were actually meeting toe-to-toe -to -toe with LBZS in this early mid was a pretty bad sign for LBZS, but yeah, no, as you say, like getting this amount of kills versus LGD always has to feel good, um, but probably not as good as actually being would feel. Yeah, but they're not out of it just yet, but there is a big power spike coming out for LGD. It's the double Ags, one for Faith Beyond, one for Ame. Here's that charge. Ooh. Didn't commit, gets dusted, but he's also got Bulldoze. So even if he gets dusted, he just, Make it last a second. And we go with a team fight here as they jump everything onto Molasso. They want to take him down and no exorcism for you. They do get the return kill onto Innocence, but it's not much. And yeah, they'll continue to chase after Sal who goes into the snowball after nothing to say, but you've got Ame who's Yo. charging as the Spirit Breaker all the way in. Lincoln's Yo. pop, here comes Faith Beyond, and they get PP. What is Kagome this? Kagome low, and they'll get one bash. What they is just this? need to charge. Oh my god, full team wipe, LGD, and a triple kill. For Ame. That is not okay. <laughs> that no, is not is okay. Not. You can't have two Spirit Breakers running up your high ground like that. That's, wow. <laughs> Stunning indeed, Faith Beyond. Stunning indeed. I'll just take the high ground. I mean, nobody's alive, so there's <laughs> no defense. No, I mean, you, you could buy it back on your Queen of Pain, but um, I don't know, maybe you do that with your Storms alive. I don't really know. It kind of feels like uh, the, the dish might be a bit empty for Elbizinus, unfortunately. I mean, if we if we rewind the clock a bit, you know, think about what happened with the Storm. I think, basically, LGD were shutting out the early game options for LBZS to make. The moment he gets that Orchid, they can threaten the Morphling and the Invoker quite a lot. Uh, LGD recognized all of this before it even happened and said, all right, we shut down that Storm. Our game becomes a lot freer and the Queen of Pain didn't really adjust. Maybe I would have liked her to go for the Orchid instead and allow the Storm to go for the kind of more carry-ish build. I'm not too sure, but either way, LGD played this game beautifully. Yeah, it just... I, I think Kagome did what he could, right? Yeah. And it's just its so tough when your mid just gets shut out so hard. And yeah, for sure, for sure. He, he made some good rotations, you know, yeah, playing the Queen of Pain carry, carry, but... He's still under 10k net worth. Like It's been a really tough game for him. Yeah. No more outer towers for LBZS. The sun is starting to set on this game. <laughs> I still believe, guys. I still believe. You know, the comeback, the carryless comeback against Morphling. Let's go. Five-man gank on the creep wave. Got him, though. That's when the creeps type five heroes for me. Yeah. <laughs> worth. I don't know, man. The, 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 this fight is just going to be so insane. The double Spirit Breakers coming in at you. I mean, I wasn't entirely sure Armin was going to cancel that charge, I'll be honest. When he was going up the high ground now, I was like, yeah, I'm fully expecting him to go for this. Maybe once he has an Aegis, he can do that. And they can just go for Roche, too. There's not much LBZS yes, can do. They can five-man smoke and try to get here, but it's just, yeah, it's, it's gone. It's gone. No, it's time to do a bit of homekeeping in the base, I think. You know, trim the grass, maybe put up some nice flowers, uh, some posters. Would be nice just to make your stay a little bit more pleasant, because I don't think you're leaving anytime soon. Hmm. So Aegis into the hands of Ame, and I believe he also got the shard. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Pangle had his before, so yes, yep. indeedy. You know how the portraits glow blue whenever they have a shard? It's, it's a lot, isn't it? I, you know, if it was green, though, I would die. <laughs> you would die? Yeah. Why? Because I'm blue. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm regretting this already. Put me back to the pile. 99% chance of victory. 1% <laughs> chance here for LBZS. We have seen so they need. some massive comebacks, but, well, for Salad, I don't know if that is going to happen. 1% is all they need. Ooh. Okay, Salad. I see you. Embarrassed? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that Garen LGT. That's like, oh, well. Tusk got away. Whatever. Nice little blink away to the sidelines. Another good advantage of the blink on Tusk, of course, during that snowball, you can reset the cooldown and just get yourself a... Whoa! Okay. <laughs> and another snowball. This guy's everywhere. Yeah, he was just bottom. Now he's over to help out Molasses. Damn. They're committing the charges now. I don't think they're pressing the S button anymore. No, no. They, they, they've pulled it out. They've got mechanical keyboards. They just removed the entire input for the S key. What did they use? I'm not sure legacy keys are always weird. It's probably like a pound sign or something. Yeah. The backspace, I don't know. Uh, actually, I think it's called the hashtag sign these days. Oh, sorry. Oh. You can tell uh, you can tell we're boomers when we saw them there. It's a bit of boomer humor for you. Sunstrike oh. coming down and another ah. snowball save. They use the rolling thunder. Snowball going uh -oh. in. Oh, boy. Molasses <laughs> with the BKB. Turning it around with the exorcism, but it doesn't really do enough. They just rip through him. They don't really care about him or his ghosts. And now is going to look for the reset. Although, uh, jumping in on PP here, trying to follow up with more of his kisses. But in the back lines, Ame's just going insane. Yeah, Ame killing off detachment with a triple kill. Now, do we get another rampage? Does he just dive the base? Unfortunately, no. Boo. I can only hope that we get another Rampage. Maybe outplay the God King Triple Rampage and get a uh, Quadruple Rampage. I feel like we need to know no, the... Uh, ah, okay, GG's cool. That's going to be it, folks, for this first game. Yeah, valiant attempt from LBZS, but unfortunately, LGD just coming up big as expected. But yeah, I mean, not a bad loss. Not a bad no, loss, no, no, you know? No, no. I think the tools are there. I think the idea is there. And someone saw the execution. Storm's game just got ruined. <laughs> he, yeah. didn't, he didn't have a game. And that was uh, their biggest struggle to overcome. Yeah, Faith Beyond giving a nice stretch. He knew he just kind of oh, flexed hey, them for the yeah, camera a bit. Yep, yeah. yeah, I know I'm strong. I know that picture that you know, of our victory <laughs> makes me look strong as well. We'll see it in a second. Yep, look yep. at it. Boom. Arms crossed. Forearms looking good. Good lord. This he's man shredded, charges. He's shredded. This man charges, and he absolutely charged over LDD in this first game. Yeah, it, it, it looked good for up to a point, but unfortunately, the army problem was, was never solved. You know, they didn't have the solution to this morphling. Yeah. I don't know what else they could have done, honestly. Like, with this draft they had, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what the panel has to say about uh, how they approached this one, because I'd really like to know, like, what they could have done differently in the early game with that draft they had. Yeah, it, it seemed like there was definitely an opportunity to make it work. At the end of the day, I think maybe you got to spend more on protecting PP because the LGD threw, what, three heroes every single time they went for him? Started with the cold snap, into the tornado with the EMP. It's just impossible for PP to have a game. And he just, his net worth was never, never big. So, well, LGD, they take game number one. We're going to throw it back over to the panel, see uh, what their thoughts are on this game and game number two coming up. Back to you guys. Another dominant performance today from LGD is to take game one here over LBZS, but uh, break it down for you guys. What's got to change for uh, LBZS to come back here in game number two? We believe in power of the sun. Oh, it's, okay. it's, it's that will, simple. You're, yeah, you're joining. Happen. I went for LGD though. <laughs> yeah, let's wait a minute. Yeah, you can't, you can't backtrack. In, in, the, in the next game. Oh, oh okay. next game. Yeah. Okay, right, right, right. Next game. Maybe. Yeah. Didn't work out this time. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. LBZS they did show some strength. Like a couple of kills here and there, uh, a couple of plays here and there, taking Rosh, taking Aegis, even though they lose that fight, they took Aegis, they killed Storm and uh, 
they, they did play walk the around game. morphling on mid yeah they played it wasn't yeah they played the game they, they, they tried their best it's what everyone expected right like, yeah it's not much you can really blame them for other than not picking anything that's really good against morphling they first faced it and he had like a super free game. Storm is kind of all right. Like yeah, I mean, he's, that's the stuff. thing though. He's all right. It's not like yeah. a counter though, right? As soon as you have yeah. that Manta or the, the Lincolns, the BKB, what does Storm really do? Like, there's no like PL, there's no like anti mage, there's nothing that really threatens you like ever after that point. And once he had a BKB, they ganked him with four people, he turns into the Storm, kills mm. the Storm, and like, all right. <laughs> On the more meme uh, Mimi, an yeah. analysis of the game and the draft, they did stay true to themselves. They had the three semi cores. Mm -hmm. Storm Co-op DP is something that they enjoy playing, something that works for them against RNG. They tried it the same way against PSG LGD, but more often than not, you just hit that wall and you can't break it. And if you don't, with three semi-cores, you just lose. So that's what I was going to ask. Like, it, it definitely seems like LBZS has their own style um, in the game right now. Mm -hmm. Is it becoming more of a detriment maybe and we need to see them kind of play something more meta or... Do you think they should be sticking to how they uh, how they have been playing? I feel like we need to see them play against some someone that's not PSG LGD first. Okay, and then that's we fair. Can, like, it, you can have the best strategy in this world if you're playing versus a team that's on paper just much stronger. They can make it look bad. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. The yeah. draft sometimes it, it doesn't truly matter a lot yeah. and there's not just one way right now like how you have to play Dota right there's many different styles that work their style definitely also works but you really gotta make sure that you push that tempo and minimize the mistakes you make because as you can see already Morphling is top of the network that cannot happen if you play this kind of style like yeah. you want to be ahead all the time you want to minimize the enemy's net worth and you've got to get as much uh, as far ahead as you can like you can't give up any Roshans you're not allowed many mistakes, which is why this playstyle is very risky, especially for inexperienced teams. It did feel like LBZS, I mean, they were playing pretty clean game for a while. Like, they were very close into this one with PSG LG, but as you guys said, uh, they get the Roche on here, Lizard, they end up losing the fight anyway. Where's the turning point in this? Uh, there was none, right? Uh, if you. I agree. Uh, it's pretty much over. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> already done. Um, it, even before this rush fight, they were 3k, 4k behind. Like Black said, I completely agree. You're playing three semi cores. If you're not winning lanes and dominating afterwards, dominating hard afterwards, like they did versus RNG, mm -hmm. eventually your your game just crumbles. It's just the way it is. Yeah, and it's not like. They made any like super massive mistake. They played a good game of Dota, but with this kind of style against this kind of team, you can't get away with just playing good. You gotta play really good. You gotta play great, All, almost near perfection. And they couldn't do that. And you can't blame them for that because almost no team can do that against the LGD. And yeah, ultimately became the armor show. Yeah, I mean he had a great game. Mm. Yeah, that one. Uh, interesting like, death. Like he just tipped it in, didn't strength morph, and died instantly. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's an armor moment right there. <laughs> happens, happens. But this PSG LGD's draft as well didn't feel experimental at all. Yeah. It had a lot of synergy. They knew exactly what they're doing, and uh, they were not going to give LBZS a chance to take this game. We see Phoenix, which is like something new. Phoenix is something new, but there's method to the madness. If exactly. You, if you consider that you have not only Pango, but two Spirit Breakers charging, that tag will always go off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, what we've been seeing a lot is like people picking the Morphling specifically into the Spirit Breakers so that you have the hero for yourself, but now you just have two Spirit Breakers on your team. Yeah. yeah. The hero seems strong enough already. I don't know what you do against two. <sighs> What do you yeah. do against two Spirit Breakers? Morphling with 70% status resistance. Yeah, sounds legit. <laughs> and like a thousand movement speed across the map. And charges and stuns everything. Yeah, not broken at all. Very nice. Yeah. It has been a combo even before this like Spirit Breaker madness was coming. But now the quote-unquote broken Spirit Breaker is even stronger than it ever has been before. Yeah. yeah. And of course, I also agree with the MVP. He had some very good plays around the map he has that one death we'll we'll allow it it doesn't really matter for the kda mm -hmm. which is why he's like okay I'll, I'll take one death to make it look silly but yeah kda doesn't tank everything is okay still at 13 
That's good enough. The item build as well, I like it mm -hmm. with the axe, right? So <laughs> for the spirit breaker, for those charges. And the nether shawl too, again, a little bit lucky. Mm -hmm. Probably the best morph item there is in the game, from a tier 2 at least. Especially yeah. against the lineup you see off of LBZS, right? Like, yeah. there's so much more survivability now. Also just for your reblade, right? It does wonders. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what what is there to really say? PSG, LGD, just uh, seeming to be unstoppable here in yeah. the CND PC, right? Better draft, better individual plays. It's hard to combat that for, well, really any team. Like even Asta, which I consider probably with quite a bit of a gap, the second best team in the mm -hmm. in the league. They lost to a quote unquote weaker LGD. This, like as I said, LGD just gets better and better the more they play. For sure, like a fine wine. Yeah. Ages mm -hmm. very well, or, or cheese, <laughs> or cheese. Mm. We're big fans of cheese here in Dota. Oh, I, I love. Yeah, but you guys call yourself fans of cheese, but you don't like gorgonzola. Like I like cheese. gorgonzola. Blue cheese. Who doesn't Smelly? like gorgonzola? You, you like it? Yeah. I, I mean, you guys say you don't. No, not by itself, maybe, but like in dishes, it's very nice. Ooh. Yeah, not I'm by not itself. Go. There you go. It's yeah, but <laughs> dude. Okay. Um, <laughs> in a restaurant right here in Kiev. I made a mistake. I didn't really read the menu properly, mm -hmm. and I took cheesecake made out of blue cheese. Oh, yeah. that actually cheese sounds ca yeah, that it sounds I, a little bit putrid. I I love a little bit, yeah. I love I love blue cheese, love it. But that was yeah. an experience yeah. that I it's, don't want to repeat. It's putrid for sure. Yeah, it's yeah, that's <laughs> I would never. Like as soon as it's on the table, you probably like, smell already. Foo! Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blue cheese. cheese you know. like, for all of you that are saying that we should stay on topic, cheese is extremely valuable item in Dota and should be respected and discussed. I will eat in length. Mm -hmm. I will eat the cheese. Yes. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> I can't believe you guys. Uh, but yeah, like the second Roche back in the day, dropping cheese. We'll just keep the topic going. Why not? Too powerful, they moved to third Roche. What do you guys prefer on third Roche? Uh, Ags or Refresher? If you get the choice. Uh, yeah, Ags can be game-changing. I, I feel like Ags, especially on like some supports, like Disruptor and Bane can be absolutely game-winning. But then again, you also have like a tight hunter with Refresher. Tight hunter I guess it depends what lineup yeah. you have. Yeah. But if I ever play support, I hope that there's an Ags. Yeah. Right? So I That's get what it. it is, right? But if I'm a card, I'm like, yeah, give me the Refresher. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Well, none of this nonsense. We're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at the draft in a moment. But before we do, time to introduce our draft master once again, Mr. Nef Sensei. How you doing, bud? Woo! Yeah, just uh, hoping to keep these guys on topic here. <laughs> I'm sure it won't be You're too difficult. You're always on topic. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Cheese are very important to the game of Dota 2. Yes. Cheese course. picks. The item cheese. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we could have talked about cheese picks. Are we going to see any of those? Like no. At TI, obviously, cheese is given before the ages so <laughs> well let's go ahead and Obviously. jump into the draft and see if we have any cheese picks coming our way oh so cheesy not at all not a surprise unbelievable <laughs> i can smell it more of the same but uh, what is surprising is the fact that they ended up banning out the io themselves here on the side of lbzs usually it's uh whoever they're playing against uh bans that one out but yep Looks like they were a little bit worried about uh, PSG, LGD uh, grabbing that one. They might have something else in mind for themselves here. The Disruptor, they've picked a lot uh, so far this tournament. I believe, uh, what, three matches? So whenever they have the opportunity to grab that one, uh, they do. And this should give them a lot more catch. Queen of Pain, obviously, very good at uh, playing in the mid lane. You have a much more even matchup against a lot of things rather than that Storm Spirit versus Invoker match that we saw last time. Um, that one isn't really... A lane you can come out ahead on the storm, mm -hmm. slowed down quite a bit by the invoker. So Co-op a much safer pick here, which when you're playing against a team better than you like PSG LGD, no offense to LBZS. Uh I prefer that one a lot. Yep. Ayo banned out in the first stage, they didn't have the first pick, right? Mm -hmm. They did. They did? Yeah, but I think what they wanted is they, that they wanted uh, to Yeah, get you're the right, Quop. actually. They had the first yeah. pick. Yeah, you know, they, I think they want the Quap because LGD also loves their Quap, right? Mm -hmm. And Quap is pretty good against Ayo. So they're probably like, yeah, we want to have their co-op, so yeah, we don't give you the I.O. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Disruptor versus the Weaver looks pretty solid. Like this uh, Thunderstrike and your 50% HP in the lane as a position 4 Weaver. So Very fun. Fun indeed. Do you guys want to take a guess? How good is the win rate, do you think, for both Kunkka and Weaver on the same team? I think uh, 75%. Right. Anyone else? Anyone else want to take a jab at this uh, one? Let's Maybe 68, 69%. I like you. Thank you. 
I mean, 68, 69, and 75 ain't that far away. I'll take 71.5. Very not close, no. Okay. Uh, we are up to <laughs> an 87.5. These guys have won almost awesome. every game on the same team yes. so far. Black so pretty wins. strong opening duo here. 3.5%. Yeah. yeah. It is very, very strong, though. Like, the, they can be laned together in two different lanes. It can be Kunkka Middle, it can be Weaver Core. Honestly, it's so versatile. They bring so much damage to the table. Yeah, well, part of uh, the reason why it's so good as well is Kunkka is a core hero that fills some of the gaps that Weaver creates when he's picked as a support. It's a hero without a stun. Kunkka is a hero that's able to play very far forward, has several disables and catch of his own. Yeah. So it makes up for those weaknesses. Sure, uh, like they definitely complement each other. But Statsman, can you tell us uh, the win rate of the Weaver on his own? Just Weaver on his own. I yeah. can in just a second. You're gonna give me, I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah, Tide Hunter now picked up. This is this was like in a month. Disruptor though. Yeah, but this a month ago this was the opener. Yeah. Tide Hunter Weaver. <laughs> Everyone was literally just picking this. Yeah, because it's super strong. But yeah. why into a disruptor? That is like literally the best support against Tide, probably. Yeah. Difficult. Is there, is there a better support? No. I think disruptor. Disruptor. You, you got him in the kinetic the field. Yep. He can't. Uh, can't really use that ravage. But you, uh, also, why they pick it probably, it's very, very hard to kill that tide under the ghost ship buff, right? Not with the uh, Death Prophet, though. Not with the Death Prophet. But under the ghost ship buff, still pretty still, still tough, difficult, probably. But Death Prophet is one of those that can uh, chonk through the big yeah, boys. Always, like, more of the same. Like, again, the same DP pick. Honestly, I want to see an anti mage right here. It's so good against LBZS. Here's Joe's AM. Yeah. Yeah, sure, why Although not? I haven't really seen Armour play much of the anti oh. lately. <laughs> we haven't really seen way too much AM overall yeah. by anyone. But we, we see it a lot banned out in the last phase by a lot of teams. Shadow Demon banned out by PSG LGD. Oh, it's a perfect anti mage. There you go. Potentially setting that one up. But uh, as far as the Death Prophet goes, you guys were just discussing that one. Um, it is one of the, like, the more comfort picks for LBZS. They pick it every time they get the opportunity to as well, and you can run it in multiple lanes. Having a flex hero seems to be like the most valuable thing right now in the Chinese region. So don't want to reveal too much about their draft. Usually played in the off lane, but uh, you know, LBZS, they've been moving all these heroes around. In fact, we even saw a tie hunter mid the other day. And speaking of... Hey. Oh, Lycan, yeah. They're, they're the normal DP answer. They have yeah. nothing against it. This... I don't want to be Disruptor. <laughs> I don't want to be Bane. I don't, don't want to be Dead Prophet. Okay, as Queen, you can kind of link, I guess. But even that can't work versus X marks the spot. I don't want to be LBZS right now. Yeah. I mean, last game they banned the Lycan with a similar draft. And yeah. now they're like, okay... Maybe you won't pick it again so we can ban both. Please don't pick it. Ah, they picked it. Damn it. Yeah. This is very rough. You still have Wraith King in the pool. You very much need a frontliner, but you're playing that against a Tide Hunter. So your lane is going to be a little bit miserable. What are the lanes going to be then? Support Tide? Or just armor on the Lycan? Because he played it a bunch of times, but not super many. But I think like a five Tide makes more sense probably. It's doable. They're, yeah. Like all these four heroes on PSG LGD are extremely flexible, right? Can, yeah, yeah, yeah. They can. Uh, it's the power of LGD. Yeah. Who's you know, gonna play what? Only fact is, Lycan needs to be a core. Uh, these other three, you really can't uh, say for sure. I still want to see anti mage. For still an anti mage. Hmm? For which team? Uh, LGD. Really? Yeah. Anti mage against Lycan is like suicide. It, That's what I was gonna say. I was uh, I was a little confused there for a moment. <laughs> isn't this? Just nothing to say. Kanka, mid lane, tied Weaver off lane, like on safe lane. Sounds like, sounds like the most standard thing. Standard but thing. you are LGD, so I think it's gonna be five tight and off lane. Uh, off lane Lycan. Lycan. Yeah. yeah it's Faithion also played doable. it last time. Yeah. It's definitely also doable. They're banning mid heroes though, so they could also be expecting a safe lane Kunka and another mid hero. Mm -hmm. Off lane Lycan with safe lane Kunka. Yeah, it's bizarre that they would ban out the Invoker and Lina. Uh, both of those heroes kind of. Uh, Strong versus Quab, though, right? Yeah. I mean, it almost looks like they want to grab a Storm Spear here, but that would be insane. Yeah, no, Kagome, Queen of Pain. Run it back. They're the team that has been that are innovating I, the Queen of Pain safe lane, I it, would say. It's what it looks like here, but I don't think that's what's going to win them this game. Again, they need a <laughs> frontliner. And there's there your frontliner. Anti-mate. 
And the image is so good here. Oh my god. I want to see I'm a camera right now. I want to see him talk. I want to see AM, AM, AM with his mouth. Ah. So we're looking for the AM cam. I just love this mm -hmm. AM enthusiasm that's on the panel. Do it. Do it now. Do you, it. you like the AM that much? Yeah. Hit me any other hero that's not the anti mage here. Come on. <sighs> any hero. It's hard. At this point, their draft is just that good. I, Timber actually does show some problems at them. I like the Timber pick. <laughs> it's good, yeah. It's really good versus all of them. Like, if Timber can roll out of control, he can be uh, quite, quite a nuisance to deal with. That's why I picked the anti mage, so he doesn't yeah. roll out of control. But realistically, they're not going to pick it, so what are they going to pick? Um, what's good against... Uh, Monkey King is banned already. It's already banned, I was... Uh, Slark is terrible against Disruptor. What are like, your other go-to And Pop counters? as well. Yeah. There's her AoE damage. Abundance. What else is there that, that's good versus Timber that we're not that seeing? That also plays. Ursa would be the only other one, right? It's so hard to play against the other heroes, Yeah, though, it's like you're in DP, though. Yeah, you're kind of... All ending on the laning phase then. I mean, uh, this is if they choose not to run the Lycan or the uh, Kunkka in the safe lane. Very hard though against Timber, which is why this Timber saw pick is on paper really strong, but I do believe an AM would actually just result in an outpick. Yeah. Like they're like, ah, we outpicked you with this one, but the LGD will be like, ha, just an Ember. Ember. Well, okay. that is so boring. Yeah, a lot but of. It's, <laughs> but it's fine. Exactly what they needed though. A lot of uh, damage and. Uh, and it is going to be a safe lane Kunkka. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. If Ember is not that strong comfort too. against DP though in the lane. It's a bit scary. They could lose a lot of lanes here. Well, it's Kunkka, Ame, right? Ame Kunkka. Ame Kunkka, Faith Beyond on the offlane like, and once again, so a little bit of comfort for LGD here. Timber offlane and that Prophet safe lane, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but That's Timber nice. against tight Kunkka, that sounds so free. Yeah. Like, it can't get much freer than that. Yeah, well. Timber, gonna have fun? All right. Sounds free, but is it enough to make up for the difference between the skill gap of these two teams, Black? What do you know? It's a hard no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're going to go with uh, LGD then. Despite them Sounds not picking like anti mage, yes. Okay. I'm disappointed though. Yeah, that's fine. Not everyone er uh, earns Black's approval. Yeah, I, I, it's pretty I, difficult. I tried to give the sunshine a little push in that last game. I believed. I didn't truly believe, but I hoped. We were holding hands just now, though. So yeah. Did that do anything for you? I mean, you still went for PSG LGD. So True. Play, uh, so you got to go with me. Yeah, I'll go with him yeah. this time. Neff, what do you think? No, I like being a naysayer, but and disagreeing with uh, you know my fellow panelists here. But unfortunately, PSG LGT are just too good. So, <laughs> all right, this time. They look great indeed, and uh, I'm sure our casters look fantastic as well. So go ahead, take it away, B Comp and Nomad. Thank you very much, bro. Yeah, that's right. He's B Comp. I'm N Mad. We're super pumped to cast this game. Gonna be a dope game, you know and. The casters, you know, the analysts, they, they think they know a thing or two about the game, but one thing they don't know is how to read vibes, right? And I think the chakras of uh, LBZS's draft is, like, very awesome, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, uh, yeah, you're really harshing my mouth over there with your, like, crazy glasses. Uh, you know, you're really off-brand from the Ray-Bans, and, like, you're just is, trying to, like, live your life over Is there. hushing your get, mellow like, a yeah, bad yeah. thing or a good thing? That's I don't what know. I, I've said it about five times <laughs> <now> today. <laughs> Mulhala. Um, all right. Into this game, number two. And, yeah, I, I kind of share the uh, the concerns of our, of our very uh, worried panel over there that um, this might be one of those Lycan games. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, it definitely could be one of those like in games. I was just my my mindset was Death Prophet again, shot. <laughs> yep. What 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 an absolute curveball from LBZS. I mean, one thing which is technically a curveball is the Timber Saw because this is the first Timber Saw we've seen in the Chinese DPC region, which is kind of hard to believe. Yeah, uh, it ends up being molasses in that off lane Timber. See where they station everybody. Oh. Not going to get that bounty rune. Jin Q comes in and swipes it. So it's all four bounty runes, right? As Faith Beyond picks up a second one. Four LGD. That is not. It's already a 1K net worth lead. That is not the start you want. Uh, yeah, that's that, that, that's not ideal. I, I also noticed a, a really nasty trick which we didn't pick up on that last game. LGD drafted Phoenix, and we all know LBZS are fanatic sun worshippers, meaning they couldn't actually destroy the supernova because that would mean going against their beliefs. 
These are the facts, guys. Um, I mean, it, it, you, you think the games are just the drafts. You think the games are just, just the gameplay. Yeah, but it's so the lore. More. It's like the behind the scenes. There's yeah. more to it than that. Exactly, exactly. So dirty trick from LGD. But, uh, you know, they really did have to employ everything they could possibly summon to bring down LBZ. I just hope PP doesn't get bullied this game. That was so sad. Like, he, he's here like, you know, yeah, I want to play against nothing to say, want to have fun. And nothing to say is, well, his team are just like, no. We're just gonna we're just gonna stomp on you. Yeah, um, I have a feeling okay. this might go the same way as well. Honestly, uh, I think you have major rotation vibes from uh, LGD with their supports. It's not like they have major lockdown or anything like that. It's more so just like a gush if they come through. But we have seen Weavers make rotations in the past, right? Like he doesn't have that lockdown, but he gets a couple levels into the swarm, and that is hard to play against. It is, it is. Yeah, Swarm is very much a positioning spell. That's what a lot of people uh, kind of uh, misinterpret about Weaver sometimes, is that you want to get the Swarm on them when they're as out of position as possible, because you can't... You know, moving and attacking is kind of slow, it's kind of awkward, you know, it, it, it's kind of like an effectual slow if you manage to get it. So if a mid laner ever comes under a tower or anything like that and you manage to get the Swarm off on them, it can be super annoying. And of course, sometimes all you need is a few extra hits to bring someone down, and then of course the anti armor with the tower. Yeah, he's, he's, he's an underrated rotation hero for sure. Yeah, it comes down to do you want to get out of the way and get back to your tower, or do you want to take off this bug and yeah, you know, be, be hopefully safe enough with it now killed off your body? But well, usually you try to kill the bug and you end up dead. It's a rock and a hard place, speak up. Uh, yeah. I never got that 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 metaphor very much like between a rock and a hard place. Like what what is what is the what between where you're gonna fall or where you're gonna sleep tonight? Like getting crushed. The rock the is coming in and you're by a wall and it rolls. Is that, is that how roll. you've always viewed it? Yeah. So you've got rock coming towards you and you're like, oh, do I want to? How do I get out of this? <laughs> you don't. So, so one one direction there's this rock coming towards you and the other direction there's just a hard place. Yeah, potentially you could jump left or right, but it depends on your environment. Ooh. And look at that, JinQ already with the Shikuchi to get the kill on detachment. He's played this Weaver before in the forward position, but he played it ultra greedy last time and <laughs> went really carry did. items. Yeah, he kind of just played on the enemy side of the map the entire game, farmed up every wave. I mean, yeah, Face Beyond was poor that game. Yeah. But he was rich. Yeah, and it didn't work. I think that's the one game they lost. Yeah. Was yeah. against Aster. Yes, it was. Twas indeed, my boy. Twas indeed. So they're pretty, pretty much playing perfect. Looking for the torrent. Molasses wise to the plans of this Kunkka. Ame continuing to just chase, but Molasses should be fine. There's not another gush coming out from Y just yet. Yeah, if Molasses doesn't do... Oh, hold up. Top link. Go me. Getting very low. Trying to get the kill onto Faith Beyond here. Will he be able to finish the job? I don't think so. And even if he does get low enough, the Wolves will just deny him anyway. So all good in the hood for Faith Beyond and all bad in the... Um, somewhere for the Queen of Pain. All bad for that lad. No. Uh, yeah, I, can't, I, can't, I kind of marched into that rhyme very, very comfortably. <laughs> um, uh, so much, way too much confidence there. Much like Kagomi went for Faith Beyond. And that could just be a little bit of that last game going so well for him, right? Like, he had a really good lane with this oh. Queen of Pain in the safe oh. lane. Nothing to say. He's okay for now. Pops the stick. Oh, no. And PP now in too far, in some trouble. There's the swarm. Nightmare out. Slight in from nothing to say. <laughs> They'll get the kill on a PP. Oh, man. I mean, I talked about using the swarm when they're out of position before. I've been kind of like maybe too close to the tower, maybe across the river, uh, in between the tier one and tier two. <laughs> it's a very extreme example, but thank you, Jin for that one. That was prime time positioning. Yeah. yeah I mean, that was, that was just crazy from Elvis. We've seen them do this before, haven't we? On the Death Prophet in a previous game. Um, I mean, what can I say? My, my sunny boys, you know, they, they, they go full send sometimes. Full Devi. You, you, you can't. You can't fault him. Yeah. I guess you can, but well, please don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was going to say, you can. I'm going to say, though, he ends up surviving. And again, PP just having to deal with two heroes rotating. And actually, they did get the rotation from Y. I was a little surprised on that. But I guess Ami's having an easy enough time. Yeah, he's chilling. Chilling. Like a villain. Like a villain, indeed, yeah. I mean, if, if the Timber doesn't do well in this lane against Kunkka Tide, then I don't think anyone's going to pick Timber ever again. 
PP in trouble once more. Here's Jin Q and Y once again. They want to shut what down the this? PP. They really and, do. Oh my gosh. Dominating for Jin Q once again. This is so unfair. Leave leave PP alone. Come on, man. I mean, they must think he's really good, right? They're like, oh, this guy's so good. We gotta shut him down, although he's gonna trounce all over us. That, that's it, right? That's the spin you need to have some confidence <laughs> after this one, as they go after both Sound and Detachment. Nothing to say. He still has a remnant to come back after the glimpse. He thought ahead. He certainly did, yeah. They chased down Salad here. Jin Q will scoop up that kill, and I think Detachment might not be looking so pretty either, as there are plenty of spells for nothing to say to work. Even walks away from him. So disrespectful. He's, he's literally looking at the rune before he's even finished the kill. Cool guys don't look at explosions. They just walk away. Oh, PP, oh, no! God! He's back again and dead again and back Leave again. PP alone. Oh, gosh. And so is Detachment and Salad. OGD uh, playing super confident, and I want to say it's overconfidence, but I mean the results speak for for themselves. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to spin this one. Uh, nine zip no, three K gold. Uh, um, well, they had a good game one. Uh, we'll, we'll go. We'll go with. We'll go with that. Slide of fist searing chains on the salad. Shinkyu is there again. He's only got the urn so far. But it's gonna push him really close to that spirit vessel. The more and more this continues, nine nothing. Yeah, um, it's an issue, but you know what? Issues are only called issues because they can be solved. And that makes this solvable. Solvable. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's all solvable. All they need is uh, to stop mm -hmm. dying and to start killing uh, LG and taking their towers. You think Chad agrees with that? Yes. I'll take a quick look. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're good. They're good. They know They know this is still a very close game. Oh, actually, uh, what they're just saying is F10K. F10K. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Animalistic chance. <laughs> oh, Gush oh. over. Swarm on. Molasses, though. He should be okay. PP, though. Is he uh, okay? No. Yeah. Nothing, had, nothing to say was thinking about it, but they also have uh, the Bane ready to go. A Kukome rare instance where career. PP actually survives. Yeah. Love to see it. My goodness. And Ame at the top. Not surprised. Nobody is. It's, uh... Okay. Molasses is doing okay, right? He's He's got himself some money, you know. They picked this Timbersaw into the double melee strength lane. Are you about to pull a Ricky? Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah the Nightmare right. Save. He's Woo! fine, he's Let's fine. Go. Exorcism comes out from PP and the TP immediately away from Ame. Yep, but uh, you know he's got some he's got some creeps to farm here. You know, so he's just like, yeah, I wanted to farm with the exorcism anyway. Actually, I didn't really want to kill or, or a tower. And uh, wow, baiting nothing to say to use the chains on him here. Now that spells on cooldown, which is great for LBZS, right? <laughs> Look, okay, we got we we the play logic game. We need to make this game feel close for people. At moment. It is still close. I don't think it's that far gone. I think LBZS still have a chance. See. I, I do really think Molasses is having a decent game. They get this tower, they can start maybe rolling through the Radiant Jungle. It, it's just going to be a little bit difficult to keep control where you want because you're behind by so much. Yeah, I mean, okay, so <laughs> my issue here is that yes, Molasses had an okay lane. Um, unfortunately, everyone else had an okay lane. Um, in fact, a very, very good lane. <laughs> okay -er lane. Yeah. Words, sure. I knew there was a word better than okay, <laughs> but it didn't quite come to me at the moment. That's all right. Better lane. Mm. There's, there's many actually. It's quite quite a delectable choice of a, a feast of words. Um, I don't know. I'll be They need to just embrace some magic. You know, go for some five man. Find some fights. I mean, they they've got good spells. If they can get them off on tiers which don't run away from them, um, that'd be great. Unfortunately, I think if they can get to level six at a decent mark on these supports, maybe they have a chance to have some of that lockdown. But again, Salad's level four. He's dead again to Faith Beyond. It's just really tough to get to this position. It's now 10 nothing in detachment. He's also level four. Like they just don't really have the experience oh. and it's just really starting oh. to collapse on them. 11 nothing. All right. <clears throat> chat, do interaction. Some, uh, chat interaction. Yeah, all right, guys. I can, I can see it, hear it in your voice. You really can. We're so connected. Um, who do we think is going to die first, be the, the first and possibly only kill? for the side of LBZS. Who are they going to bring down? Type 1 for Kunkka, Type 2 for Ember Spirit, Type 3 for Lycan, Type 4 for Jinkyu, and Type 5 for Tide Hunter. <laughs> the only player you need with Jinkyu. 
He's yeah, the heroes mean, for everybody else. <laughs> he was on the screen. You know? I was I about to uh, call you on... out, too. What do you mean you were about to call me out? You did just call me out. Well, what do you mean I'm bouncing? <laughs> I meant more. You did it. I meant more. <laughs> like uh, that you were just naming all the heroes and then you named GQ. It kind of threw me for a loop for a second. <laughs> I was going to say, this guy doesn't even know the hero names or the player names. <laughs> I don't even know how to do insults. But yeah, uh, I think the entire chat is probably spamming Ame at this point. I feel like he's always the guy. It, it would be an Ame special, wouldn't it? You know, like when you're ahead, you've got enough. You know, it's... Uh, it's actually yes. Kagome now. With Ame getting the He's kill. not an LGD player, but yeah. yeah it still works. He wasn't a number. Not no, even a wasn't. number. It is potentially magical. TP out. Oh, oh, oh hey. Is it going to be innocent? Run. Ravage. Run. Oh. Save the five presses. Oh. There it is. You're all wrong. You all typed Ame. Yep. And innocence tips PP. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, in draft form, it's a pretty bad tide game, right? You've got the percentage-based damage of Spirit Siphon. You've also got the uh, Timber Saw as well. So um, you're just there for the Ravage. You're fine. Yeah, you're you're an R on legs. But now he's used the Ravage, and it was just to survive. So they don't have that big team fight spell. Although PP, this is what we've talked about in the past. Just uh -oh. uh, you know, going a, a creep wave too far. And he's trying to survive with the ghost coming back, but it's not going to happen. Ame with another kill, and he takes out and chops up the PP. He does indeed. Yeah, so 13 and 1, you know, hope on the horizon for Obi ZS as they get their first kill of the game. But, uh, no Brazil stat line, though. I think that's the most disappointing part. Brazil stat line? Well, what, what was that? Was that the first It's the 7 1, yeah. 7 1. Ramden back and forth, nothing to say. All right, see you later. Bye bye. He's, just, he's not even leaving. He's just got to watch. He's like, yeah, maybe I'll slide a fist. Maybe get myself a couple of creeps in the process. Yeah, thank you very much for weakening these camps for me, bro. Appreciate it. <laughs> That's all salad, okay. No, he doesn't want creeps, he wants uh, heroes. Watch out, watch out. He wants those cheeses. Yep. Creeps are too low value for him, you know. He's got a taste for blood now, much like a vampire. They do have Static Storm if they want to make this play aggressively. Well, let's see here. Glimpse back onto Innocence here. Innocence going to be losing his life, and they've got the grip out onto the Weaver as well, who's dropping low. Two kills for Albie ZS. Hello. Yeah, Salad trying to well, maybe find an escape from this. I'm not really too sure. The Ghost Ship comes in. They got two yeah. so far, but they're going to lose three, potentially four. Molasses on the run, and he's getting bit. It's going to know how metal tastes, but, well, nothing to say. We'll get the kill anyway. Yeah, unfortunately, the calls arrived. You know, you're beating up on the little brothers, and then the big brothers come along in the motorbikes, and, yeah, just... Uh, the idea was there, right? Like I said, you get level six on these supports, and all of a sudden, you kind of have this opportunity to do things, and I know cores weren't there. Yeah. Sure, but they, like, they put it together. Unfortunately, you're uh, like 6k gold behind by the time you get level 6 in your supports. So that plan doesn't really work out too well. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's, it's the draft idea. It's the thought. It's the thought, exactly. I don't think anyone plans for a lading phase to go quite this badly, unfortunately. Look at this. They've managed to catch attachments once again on the low ground. They barely even need to... The way they're just going on to New Horizons. Like they're, they're just treating detachment with so little respect. They just treat it as like a thing on the side. And they're going to catch another one. They catch PP in the chains. Ravage out. Kagome is also dead. He's solid. He's low. He's running. He's trying to survive. PP2, but hit with the searing oh, chains. They get the kill there. He was out of siphons. He was doing well for such a long time, but unfortunately, when those siphons run out, he's left with nada. I know everybody's thinking it. We're all yeah. thinking it. Yeah, we are. We are. <laughs> Two more kills. Two more kills. Two away. We're two away, guys. We can get the meme numbers or one more kill from LBZS. We're so close. This is usually when yep. it ends up being like 421 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, because We're so of close. Like we got the potential here is massive, VQ. It really is. There couldn't be a closer scoreline. But will we get it? That is a question. And will LGD get Roche? That is another question, of which the answer is yes. Probably. Unless there's some sort of a swipe here that I'm not seeing. Unless they can move all the way across the map in about two seconds. Turns out they can't. Shocking. So that puts in Aegis into the hands of nothing to say. 12k net worth lead here for LGD. Indeed. And looking to close it up. It might flash upon your screen pretty quickly, but ooh, maybe not. Fiend's Grip coming through onto Ame. Exorcism 
They're going to look to get this kill, and they will. Their full commitment there as we get the funny number, but in he comes from the back lines. Nothing to say. Takes down detachments. Takes down Salad as well. That's going to be two dead inside of Felpy ZS. Immediate buyback, though, coming out from the Disruptor. They think they can fight this, but let's see how this one actually goes down as they move on to the Death Prophet Jinku fighting up, but has the time lapse to work with, and Faith Beyond just takes him down. And they get the kills there onto the Death Prophet as well as the Bane, getting the buyback out of this Disruptor. They do lose Ame at the end of the day, but, well, everybody is very farmed on this LGD squad, so losing one is just not going to be enough to put LBZS over the top. Absolutely not. Yep. 12k gold advantage at 16 minutes, 23 kills at the 16 minutes mark for LGD. Oh, okay, they found Weaver. Keep Maybe. in mind, he doesn't have time lapse. Does have... Oh, no, no. The Shadow Strike, he's... Fine. I'm gonna say it, he's fine. He's earned. I will never ultimate him death. <laughs> I always Full end commit. up being wrong. Well, this time was one of those rare times you got it right, B-Cup, so congratulations. Oof. Close You're on that very one. smart and very cool. Don't lie. <laughs> I'm neither. <laughs> You're a nice guy, though. Still lying. <laughs> Three minutes, 20 <laughs> seconds left on that Aegis here for the Ember. And a 13,000 net worth lead here for LGD. Feeling very confident. You can tell by their positioning, the way they've been playing the entire game, how confident they've been. Yeah, Sard's that's got himself this Ghost Scepter, actually. I'm kind of surprised he's even able to afford that, but that's going to allow him... He's got. Yeah, yeah, just uh, clutching onto that Ghost Scepter. Unfortunately, it's not going to help him if uh, nothing say gets on top of him, as the magic damage will be a bit too much. But all the heroes, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's got a modicum of the protection. Might be able to get off that grip for a little bit longer. Maybe. We'll have to see. Slight. Searing Chains and the Swarm with the Gush. The Minus Armor coming through. Molasses getting pretty low, but surviving for now. He's Another Searing boy. Chains. Okay, Slight of Fist one more time, and Jinku gets the kill. Big, but not big enough, unfortunately, and especially without a team to back it up, but they're bullying the Weaver. Jinku just being blasted right now as they get that kill. Salad, meanwhile, being chased by Nothing to Say, who is getting pretty low, but don't forget, has the Aegis and doesn't really mind. They just want to control him up and do with elsewhere. Jinku actually buying back and time-lapsing into the back lines to kill off the Bane. Now that was cheeky. <laughs> That's revenge for a uh, best served uh, three seconds ago because of time-lapse. Absolutely, yeah. Temporal timelines are but a joke to Jin Q and his Weaver as they move on to Tier 2 Tower in the middle lane, which will quickly be claimed once again by Jin Q. Alright. Uh, how can LBZS turn this game around? Go. It comes from a high ground hole, that's for sure. Uh, that's about all I got for that one. Yep, and maybe uh, LGD uh, doing it. I think, I think they got to rely on mistakes from LGD, basically, to come back into that one, which. You know, relying mis on mistakes from LGD is probably not the position you want to be in. Yeah, uh, definitely not. Not exactly known for making mistakes, LGD. <laughs> well, I, I think LBZS is hoping that they pull a... Uh, this really hurts to say, a TI-8. Diving oh, too okay, far. Buddy. It's okay. <laughs> People don't forget, and I'm still upset. That's all right, that's all right. You sit there weeping in your... Uh, LG oh, he's getting tears on his LGD jersey, that's a shame. <laughs> Unsay jumping in here onto PP, trying to take down the Death Prophet. She is getting low, but inside that Yule's actually hitting quite a lot from the Spirit Slice, but nothing to say. He doesn't give a damn. He's onto the high ground, trying to finish the kill here. Nightmare buys PP a little bit of time, and actually, Why's PP will time? survive, but nothing to say. Might be glimpsed into a pretty bad place here. Ooh, this isn't a great place to respawn, Beak. Yep. Yeah, it's inside the base, but, but now you're in trouble of going in and getting ravaged. Meanwhile, if you're Kagome, Faith Beyond gets the kill with the help of Ame. Yeah, it was all a sleight of hand maneuver from the Ember Spirit, you know. A good More magician. of a sleight of fist. Oh, -ho -ho! nailed it. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, they were just kind of waving the the Ember, you know, using that he's going to kill onto the Queen of Pain. Ah, cute, cute. LGD just kind of having some fun with this one, you know, with these uh, buybacks, these jump ins. I think earlier, you know, that Ravage we saw on the Tide Hunter. I I've done some thinking. Actually, the only reason you would Ravage there is because you don't want to get a, to be the first death, right? You don't want you don't want that stick to be that team. guy. Exactly, exactly. Normal game you wouldn't ravage. Like, post post five tide hunter, you save that ravage. 
twenty thousand net worth lead, and this is it's fine. Uh, just one thousand net worth lead per minute. They were close on the last game. Now they're on it in this game. The thing is, right. Now that they're in their base, they're gonna have all these creeps coming into their base. You know, all that net worth from those creeps going to them. Um, oh, good lord! All right. <laughs> oh, cleave to death. That my favorite way to die. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> the oh, copious oh flies are getting low. That was just brutal. God. <laughs> exactly. Poor PP. Just been absolutely smacked down this series. I mean, wow. I hope he recovers from this, you know? I hope he's got someone to talk to, someone to cuddle with after this game, because he needs it. He, need, he needs some, some love. Definitely. And now it jumps into a 23,000 net worth lead, so it's, it's more than 1K per minute. They are really putting the smack down on him, and there's not even Stone Cold to say anything about it. Sanj Kaya gonna be next for the Queen of Pain and items. Very popular. People be loving the uh, the Sanj Kaya or the just generally Kaya. It's a cool item. I'm glad as well. I, I like Kaya. I think Kaya's cool. Sanj and Kaya. It definitely sounds like an anime name. Sanj and Kaya, two uh, yeah, two two protagonists fighting up against the world, such as LBZS are the protagonists of this series fighting up against the uh, the evil overlords of LGD. Which has been the story a little bit recently in the Chinese community. You know, there's, uh, they're very much divided over the uh, LGD fans and the non-LGD fans. It's kind of the the paradigm over there. That's uh, are you an Ame fan or are you a Maybe fan? Yeah. There's nothing else. There is no middle. Sorry, team. everybody else in the region. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're on another team, you don't exist. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm a ZSMJ fan. Where do I go? Nowhere. Uh, about eight years into the past, I think. So taking their time, maybe even waiting for next Roche if they don't want to get ultra greedy about it. But you also got LGD postured bottom doing a lot of damage there to Molasses. What kind of posturing is this? Um, better posture than mine. Yeah, mine too. We're, we're, we're very hunched over right now. Let's sort that out. So <clears throat> there we go. All right, now you've got well um, postured. Oh, God, oh nothing, oh, nothing to, say. to say with a ward impression. Oh, oh my <laughs> God! Oh, That's not fair, dude. He's just farming. He's just, he's just fine. Oh, get got a hero kill as well. Cool, no worries. Enjoying that. That's really rude, honestly. Wait. He didn't even use Silver Edge for that. I don't think. I think that was just a crit. All right, cool. No worries. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not 100 on that, but uh, I, I believe Silver Edge was on cooldown the moment we clicked on him. So that would have just been a random crit. Very nice, very cool, very fun. Bane having a great time in this game, I'm sure. Oh, PP. No. Oh. Actually, okay in a in, in a surprising turn of events. LGD are in no rush to finish this game, are they? They are. They are very much willing to just uh, let them sit in this high ground again. That's worse for LBCS because they're not going to tap out as a DPC game. You want to give it your all. I think this honestly. To pull positives, to pull strings here. <laughs> it is kind of a learning experience. Oh, the right? Yules, he's stuck on the high ground. Get him. No, wait. I would say it's a kind of a learning experience. Yeah, I mean, it's always a learning experience. Always to a play chance to come back. A team much better than yourself. Unfortunately, in the laning phase, you know, yeah, everyone can go in and watch their own lanes and kind of, you know, see what they can improve on, but. It's much better to kind of at least get to that mid game and kind of, you know, discover because lanes are a little bit easier to fix, I would at least believe, um, compared to team play. And right. so that first game is going to be a great learning curve. Help. So that's the thing. Every time we see these guys, they look better. Every time we see them, maybe not between game one and game two, but between series, they, they seem to be working on something new. And that's super exciting for a new team. And they've been in a position like this before against, what, RNG? Yeah, and they almost brought it back. Maybe not quite this bad, but yes, yes. Anything is possible, in the words of uh, Kevin Garnett. Anything? Anything. Okay. We shall see. He uh, <laughs> won the NBA championship. They interviewed him, and he said, anything is possible! And then proceeded to get fined, because that was not the slogan they wanted him to say. Wow, that's very cool. Yeah. I love America. <laughs> 
I, it was he was supposed to say something else. I, I believe for like Adidas or something like that. <laughs> wow, saying the wrong thing. Uh, maybe maybe LGD are just waiting until uh, until Ame could one shot PP. Just to just to really drive it on home here, then they'll end the game. Well, he does just have Daedalus, Daedalus, Daedalus queued up. Yep, yep. So he's getting there. He's hoping. These are the Kunkka builds that I live for, <laughs> by the way. Men only want one thing, and it's Daedalus damage. Oh. Crits, crits for days. Crits right. on crits on crits. <laughs> Just sitting in the Roche pit, waiting for it to spawn. Hey there, bud, how's it going? Might we grab ourselves an Aegis? And, yeah. Roche. and an Ag Shard, thank you. Yeah, got an offer on today, one Aegis, and you get an Ag Shard free with your order. Okay, cool. cool. I'll take uh, one one order. Thank you very much. Kunkka takes both. Greedy, greedy army. Hmm. 31,000. Still possible. I'm holding out hope. And that's not sarcasm. Like, I actually am. Because I, I love seeing comebacks like that. That's, like, one of my favorite things in Dota. I think it's everybody's favorite thing in Dota. There is... Uh, I know there's every chance like, they're going to do it. But uh, maybe not like this. As Masters gets cleaved down to oblivion by Ame here. Oh, and now... Oh, PP! PP! Oh, no! God, Peepy the shard, the tidal wave. The control that they have, the static storm, it's just not gonna help you out there, detachment. Triple oh. kill, Ame. All right. Well, yeah, now he's fiends gripped. Go on, Salad. But they've got the searing chains, Go Ame. On, All he wants oh. is the rampage, oh. but it'll be a double kill for nothing to say. That was griefing the rampage. Yeah, it was, it was. I mean, I <laughs> should have learned. Oh, Kagome comes oh, in. Okay, screams right. on his corpse. That's a nice little uh, message he's sending there. PP's going to come running in with the exorcism coming down, but uh, they've just got way too much damage. They'll take down PP once again, send him to the grave for good this time. Go join your ghosts, they say. As the sun worshippers, unfortunately, the sun will set for them. And that's going to be GG coming out from them. 37 and 5 with a 45k gold advantage at 27 minutes into the game. My golly gosh. That was rough. But I think LGD did a, a decent job. You know? <laughs> you do. You think LGD did a decent job absolutely uh, rinsing the deck with the uh, uh, LVZS there? They, they did all right. Yeah, did <laughs> okay. Was, they, met your, they met your standards there. They met your level honestly of execution. fell short. Oh, of okay. my expectations. But, you know, they did all right. Who still has a landline? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's all you cheats to get on here? This guy, he still wants to bring his family for free. Come on. Big win here for uh, for LGD as they take down the uh, the raid bosses of uh, LBZS. Sure, let's spin yeah. it that way. Why not? Yeah, I mean, this is a team that uh, brought down RNG. I, I do really like LBZS. Yes. I, I know we're kind of joking around a little bit here. but. I don't. I you're a liar. So, you know, <laughs> I, I do want to see them succeed. I always love seeing newer teams, newer blood come in, and it's it, it's a rough road traveled when you go up against any team in a region like this. It's just very tough to play against, and OGD kind of giving them that that welcoming, like that initiation. Hey, welcome to the region again. Um, well, we're going to we're gonna slot the door in and, uh, and then beat you down. I don't know if you've watched JoJo's, but there's this scene where two of them are beating up a guy, and then one guy was like, whoa, stop that. And then the three of them are beating up on that same yeah, guy. And I've seen the it, memes. It, yeah, it's that meme. <laughs> it felt like that. It's like, oh, game one is just the two guys beating them up. And then the game two, everybody. Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, LBZS knew the score coming into this one. We knew the score coming into this one. I mean, I think they'll still be at least reasonably happy with their performance in game number one. Game number two, probably not so much. Probably, you know, want to hit the drawing board in that one a little bit. But uh, still a great experience from them. And I think, you know, with all things considered... They shouldn't be too disappointed about this performance here. It is LGD. You know what to expect. And yeah, they did play to the caliber we kind of expected them to. Yeah, I, I think so. And, uh, you know, I, I always say it. Your biggest losses are your best learning experiences. You like to take out the best from things and uh, hope you can. But, uh, you know, really hoping that yeah. LBZS, they grow as a team. They can do more. Because they're one in three, right? Yeah. So major maybe not so possible they're on the cusp but it, you know staying in the division one is certainly possible so you know at the end of the day they do lose 2-0 to lgd but uh you They've, know it looked all right yeah yeah i mean it's lbz right they've been around for a long time you know they've been in the upper division before as well getting beaten on a bit they've had more losses than this they'll learn from it they'll move on this won't send them back at all but we know what we will send are we gonna throw it back we're gonna send it back to the panel I, 
I was a that was a terrible throw there, Bcom. But uh, I appreciate the attempt, sir. Um, LGD looking as strong as ever, I would say. And uh, Black Lizard, what do you guys think uh, watching that game? The PSG LGD is looking as strong as ever. Just reiterating what you just said. Don't mind me, because it, it truly is what it is. It, we called it from the get-go. It was to be expected. LBZS, they have a long road ahead of them to be able to face off versus such giants such as PSG LGD, sadly, but that's the truth. Yeah, like this game can't really be blamed on the draft either because mm -hmm. there was a really good draft, or at least a decent draft from game one, LBZS. Right? I mean, even game two as well, Okay, where like they just completely outplayed them in the lane. Like Timbersaw lost to a tight hunter. Kunka lane, which sounds really absurd to me. Uh, mid lane, the Quap also. No, it wasn't Quap. The DP lost to an Ember Spear because of all the support rotations. Like, I don't know, LGD just is on another level. And if they get the game they want, then it's going to happen. They had more than 1k GPM advantage per minute, which is usually a sign of an absolute stompage. Yeah, and that went on for a while. It wasn't like this just like the game ended and then suddenly it was like, oh, you know, they they just hit their 1k per minute gold advantage. It's like, no, they, they hit it and then continued it for a while. Yeah, what I love about them is how just disciplined they are. At the very end, I also just mentioned it in the green room, it's like, they're just all waiting for Roshan right there because they obviously know the timer. And, you know, other teams might just try to go high ground earlier or whatever. They just kept building the advantage, kept farming the jungle, the ancients. They gave nothing to LBZS. Mm. Take that Roshan, just end the game. There's nothing they could do. I think that's uh, actually a very important point as well. I feel that every single team... Yeah, the, you could make an argument for OG and the amount of fun that they were having and whatnot. But there was also method behind that fun. They were always very disciplined team. And I feel that you should really stray away, at least in officials that matter as much as this one, you should stray away from being undisciplined. Because it truly isn't about if you can end the game there versus this particular team or not. It's about building up proper habits. Like, one time, if you, if you let's say, not wait for that rush and if you push high ground, which they definitely could have. Mm -hmm. But if you do it way too many times, one time it's going, going to bite you and it's going to be versus a team that will take that advantage off of you and maybe in, in an important tournament. So building up habits is important. I mean, we've seen that exact same scenario play out here in the CNDPC. Teams dropping games or even a series off of a couple bad decisions. Yep. And uh, one of them has been Roshan. We've, I think it was IG, right? We watched them just go high ground without uh, taking Roche. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, they ended up winning that game, but it was, yeah, it was a, 20 a lot lead. closer than it yeah. should have been, right? And but... Uh, they're not the only team, though. Like So many teams just go, RNG yesterday. Yeah. They lost to, was it yesterday or maybe the day before that? LBZS just lost to RNG because, uh, sorry, RNG lost to LBZS because they go high ground. They lost to E-Home, sorry. They lost to E-Home, yeah. They go high ground, get ravaged, get ravaged again, and suddenly, oh, why didn't we wait for Roshan? Again, you know, just build our lead. Like, what are we doing here? Yeah. That was yesterday, right? Like, yeah, it was yesterday. They, yeah. Like, well, why? You know, like a team like LGD would never do that. Yep. If they if they don't feel like they're strong enough, they're going to choke you out and they're going to build a lead that is insurmountable, and then they just beat you like that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, super excited to say we are going to be joined in an interview here. So uh, please welcome Y from LGD. Um, so first off, congratulations, Y, on yet another dominant performance here for you and your team. Um, I just want to say your team seems to be improving game after game. You had a little bit of a shaky start, but uh, do you guys feel like you're back in full form? Mm-hmm. 嗯，最近是的吧？因为在偏向于也是版本的末期吧，然后也在家最近也集合之后开始训练的比较多。哦，no。呃，喂，你再说一下嘛，我这边网可能有点卡。呃，就是。一个是版本末期吧，然后再加上的是可能我们最近集合之后也训训练的比较久了。嗯，Yeah, I think we are improving. Uh, first of all, it's the end of this patch. Uh, we figured a lot of things out. Uh, secondly, it's uh, we've been boot camp for a while, so I think we're getting better. Love to hear it. Um, 
In a previous interview, uh, we were told that you guys are looking forward to playing against RNG more than anybody else. Now, is that because you think RNG is the strongest opponent for you, or do you just uh, want to play against the players? Sorry, can you repeat the question? I missed the later half. Yeah, no problem, absolutely. Uh, in a previous interview, we heard that uh, LNGD really wanted to play against RNG. That was their, the opponent they're looking forward to the most. Is it because you consider them the uh, most uh, difficult opponents, or are you just wanting to play against the, t uh, the team itself? Uh. Uh, 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 包括我们也之前有跟他们训练过,就是都是打得比较好出色,然后强势期也把握得比较好的队伍吧,然后也现在是不光是RNG吧,每个队手都会很认真的去对待。I mm -hmm. think it's not only about RNG, uh, we've been watching other teams play, uh, RNG, E-Home, uh, we watch them play together, I think they are all very strong teams, and uh, we've been screaming with them as well, they are really strong, they know what to do, uh, <laughs> they know what to do at their strong point, so I'm looking forward to uh, every opponent. Awesome, love to hear. I mean, you guys have RNG coming up next, so that should be a super fun series. Um, but uh, Black, yeah. Lizard, any questions? First, I need to say that that lounge looks amazing. I envy you. The cat is very cute as well. Uh, when it comes to the question, um, last year a lot of European captains and coaches were looking at China and the strategies to devise their own plan. Are you maybe looking at different regions and teams from other regions to draw some inspiration and some strategies? Um,首先我想说一下你们的GT看起来非常漂亮,猫的话我也很羡慕,然后就是上个赛季的话其实有很多其他赛区都在向另外的一些赛区去学习啊,去借鉴,然后你们的话其实现在有这样的一些情况
Okay, and one more question that I asked previously already, but I play a lot of matchmaking games with Arme and SEA, and I wanted to know from LGD's perspective, why are so many Chinese players up playing on the server instead of on the China server? 之前其实我们也问过其他队伍类似的问题，但是像我的话，经常在东南亚的服务器上跟阿美匹配到。我想知道从老干爹的角度来说，就是为什么你们特别喜欢去打东南亚服务器的天梯？呃，各个方面都有吧，就是有的时候是时间段的，也有的时候是确实感觉东南亚，毕竟现在玩的人基基数更加多吧，更主要是这个，然后可能东南亚那些什么。打不论是打法还是想法，可能就是更更多吧，然后更嗯，反正都是去学习吧，主要是。嗯，时间段是指什么呢？呃，就是比如有的时候是早上起来国国服拍到的高分的路人是比较少的，然后东南亚那边高分就比较多。我这边卡，您再说一下。哦、呃，就是。时间段是指就是一般像早上或者下午的时候，在中国的国服高分的路人是比较少的，然后东南亚是基本上一直都是有比较高分的路人在排的。So there's many aspects, mainly two points. First of all, uh, during the、uh, like morning and afternoon, it's、uh, it's harder to find a match in Chinese server. So、uh, okay. we prefer to、uh, match making on C server. Also, there are more top. Top rank players in C server as well, so there's、uh, some interesting ideas and uh, uh, some interesting play styles we want to learn from. That's why we like to match making on C server. Okay, perfect, awesome. Well,、uh, I believe that's all the questions that we have for you. But I just want to say thank you so much for giving us、uh, the interview here. Why and of course, best of luck in your future games here in the DPC. Good evening. Hope you have a good day. Fantastic,、uh, great interview. I mean, LGD seems to have a lot of、uh, great interviews every time we've had the opportunity to, to talk with them. Well, they're used to interviews by now. I mean, they're winning just every. <laughs> they win a lot、yeah. of games. That's、yeah. a very good point. Yeah. Sometimes you ask yourself, like, who's playing in in those teams that are not really winning all the time? They don't even get to interview. You don't get to interview them a lot. You don't get to explore the the mentality of the players, the personalities as well. It's it, it, it's a sad thing a little bit, but you know. Yeah, but also a fun thing for those that win all the time. Like, exactly. Yeah, more interviews. Yeah, they yeah、uh, they at this point they're just like rolling the die to see who's gonna be the one to do the interview at each after each series. You、yeah. think they discuss even before they go in? I mean, sometimes the team just has like one dedicated guy that does all like the interviews, but it's pretty boring. So what you said is quite nice. You just go to like.、Uh, Uh, RNG if, online. If you yeah, if、things. you tip yourself back into player mentality, like you don't want to do the interviews.、Uh, <laughs> In my that's, teams, that's, it was always me, like、yeah. all the time. It was so annoying. Literally anything and everything. Hey, black, you do it. Hey, you、uh, do it. By the way, do you understand any of、uh, what they're saying? Like, you, because you played in teams, right? In China. Yeah, yeah. Actually, like during those. Questions is、uh, I'm I'm also practicing my own Chinese. You yeah, know? it's、uh, when they start to speak a little faster, it gets more difficult.、Of、but course, yeah, yeah. I would say I understand probably about like forty fifty percent of、mm -hmm. it. So I'm always like very intrigued and like how much do I actually still know? And not that much, <laughs> but not too little either. Yeah, yeah. you、so、catch like, a few things here. Yeah, I'm like okay, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Okay, they wake up early. Yeah, I got you, I got you. So you would understand push, go back, defend. Ah, those Dota terms are no problem at all. There, there yeah, you go. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if、no、the team、problem. is looking for a new carry. My man Black here is. Yeah, I'll, I'll be. Still、uh, looking. I'll be、LFT. writing to some teams after、yeah. this. I'm like,、hey, yeah, yeah. you see how he's putting his little C's there. Like,、yeah. why are teams unstable? What's wrong、yeah. with the carries? These kind of questions. Why do you guys play with me in the SEA server? Yeah, are you yeah, scouting、exactly. me? Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. do you play on my 13k MMR average? You know? <laughs> yeah. And then on Twitter later on, <laughs> LFT. Anyone? Yeah. Hey guys, Black's guys. really on the long con here. He's、yeah. planting the seeds. He's gonna check after the season if、uh, he's got any、don't, blood spread. Here the only、not. problem is you haven't been around, but this is the third season that he's been doing <laughs> it. So. so, so far nothing's bloomed yet. Unlucky. <laughs> soon, no. soon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You might need a green thumb, you know. Maybe a. No, sometimes you get fiend script. Sometimes you're unlucky. It happens. I I'm、though. being gripped right now. You know, <laughs> soon it ends. <laughs> soon you'll、uh, be out of this nightmare, I'm sure. Right.、Um, but as far as the placement of the teams go, LGD at the very top of the、uh, bracket is that surprising to anyone at this point? Nah. Nah. They also. In China, at least, the only team that didn't make any changes. Yeah. So, 
pretty expected. Mm. No new patch. So they're, they're masters of the patch already. Yeah, probably no. we had bigger expectations for IG so far, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're the ones that also didn't make massive changes. And VG2, but only a name, really. They lost like a lot of their core players, unfortunately. Yeah. VG I mean, Gaming, I expected to be in the middle, more or less, right? The, yeah. the organization name still sticks. It's still there. Yeah. Um, but... The players, PYW and DY leaving is just yeah. a mess. Yeah, Ori too. Yeah. To me, the top three is almost exactly what I would have expected mm -hmm. coming into this season, right? You see PSG, LG, Aster, and RNG yep. looking at the rosters. That's not surprising, right? It's more of who's going to take the this fourth slot potentially, Yeah. right? And that's going to be very highly contested. Yeah, it, it might be less contested than the last couple of seasons, to be honest, yep. because the top four seem to be pretty clear this time around. Well, not pretty clear, but much clearer than before because it was always like a battle for fourth, fifth, maybe even sixth. Yep. But this time around, like the power level just doesn't quite match up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, E-Home and uh, you, you could see that even uh, Oli here when we were, sorry, Innocence, when we were talking, he's uh, really just mentioning E-Home. He didn't even mention IG in the interview when we asked him about other teams that are strong, E-Home yeah. and RNG. Maybe just took paid more attention to their games than didn't mention right. Asta either though. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just playing because oh, they've already played them. It's it's poker face. Yeah. 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 Ah, whatever. Yeah, I mean they they did take a game off of LG, so maybe it's unbelievable. A bit of bad blood, you know. That, like how dare they? Yeah, it's not allowed. We're not going to shout this team out at all. They beat right. us once. You know. How is it allowed? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, blasphemy. Blasphemy. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Wow, look at you guys. Two peas in a pod. Love it. But Stir the pot. Yeah. Stir it. Yeah. Well, uh, it's been a fantastic day here um, in the CNDPC. Three series now come to completion. We uh, are going to go to a quick break, though, as we will be coming back with our community panel to tell you all the juicy stuff that we have going on here, uh, maybe behind the scenes that you guys haven't heard about. So we'll see you after the break.
Hello and welcome to the community panel as we wind down the day with some information from the Chinese community to bridge the gap between the uh, English speaking and the Chinese speaking fans because you know we've got a lot in common. We like Dota. What we do. That's about it. What kind of bridge are you? Suspension bridge, or that's all I got. Yeah, uh, the Wibbly Wobbly Bridge. Yeah, We've that's got... the only bridges I know is a suspension bridge. Famous one in London. Uh, so the first thing we want to talk about is Chalice's interview, which he gave yesterday to the Chinese media, which he said some very interesting things. Uh, first thing I think most importantly to know is that Super is uh, coaching them now. So... Yeah, I'd like to know if that's Super Mid or Super Five. Who knows? There's two supers. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get some more information on that. Well, maybe it's because, someone else uh, entirely who's changed their name again. Because apparently that's what everyone in China's doing, right? Yeah, now. it could be a new super. Then we've got a, a trio of supers. Yep, yep. And supers everywhere you look. Um, he also said, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about God King doing the drafting. Is he actually drafting? Is he just clicking the buttons? Apparently, he just wanted to click the mm -hmm. buttons. So that's what he, he's, he's just a button clicker. Yeah, he, he, Black was right. He's like, sometimes you just switch who's clicking the buttons. It's like that guy has a lot of information. He does, he does. Like he's yeah. an analyst. Yeah, maybe. We'll have to uh, quiz him, find out where his source, what his sources are. Ooh. Maybe it's the fact that he's played with like half the people in the community. That's a good segment. It would be, it would be. Quizzes with Black. And finally, of course, uh, we have them talking about the newcomers because, uh, you know, everyone's kind of excited about the fact that LBZS are doing pretty well. E-Home, team of newcomers, doing all right. Obviously, after today, there's, uh, the things looking a little bit more The gap's out. getting bigger. The gap is returning, yeah. yes, yes. The separation is starting to appear. Um, but, um, you know, they're very confident on the side of RNG. They were just like, yeah, we got this. Like, we, we, we're going to win. It's no problems. Um, as long as we don't mess with our draft, don't mess with our lanes, they should be easy wins is pretty much what they said. Yeah, because that's something they talked about and uh, how they lost that game one from their previous series. Chalice was like, we farmed too much, and then we got five-man ganked, and that just, it just tends to happen. You just yep. you, you give up too much. And then you end up losing the game. All right. And what's the next interview we had? Yeah, we had one with uh, Pick You. Pick You? Sorry. Who's that? Uh, that is Siamese Cat. And uh, that is his name change. Because I think it used to be Siamese C. And now it's the uh, Chinese letters. Pick You. And uh, well, we know well, what his name is, right? Yeah. It's apparently his ID is a mixture of his two cats. Si cool. That also makes sense. Like Siamese Cat is probably two cats, right? Then he changes it to the name of his two cats. Okay. Well, it's two cats together. Siamese, Siamese cat. cat. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess, yeah. So it probably works out. It's not a breed of cat. It's also <laughs> a breed <laughs> of cats. So, honestly, <laughs> going a little bit further, they do talk about Matt, who's been the coach for, uh, for Aster for a while. I think he coached him last year as well. Yep. And, you know, obviously Aster had a pretty decent time, but he was talking about Mad get, getting a lot of credit, giving it a lot of credit to pick you, and uh, he ends up saying, you know, the typical, I think my teammates get along really well, you know, it's all of us, it's not just me, but, you know, then he probably got off the interview and was just like, it's me. Yeah, <laughs> it's a team effort, guys, puts the phone down, don't get any ideas, it was all me, I'm the best, uh, screw you all. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'd be like if I was on a team, hence why I'm very much not in a team. Yeah, that's why I'm not on a team. It's not it's the fact that, that yeah, that's yeah. the only yeah. reason. Move on. Definitely. Move on. But he also talked about, because you could see the player cams while they're drafting. We always got them big one, two like this, or like this, depending on how you are orienting this camera right now. And, uh, you know, we saw Monet laughing, and uh, he was doing a, a, a lot of laughing to the point where it was like, well, what's so funny, right? It must, it must be a pick. Apparently, it's just Lanham in his headset making jokes. Okay, fine. Fair so we, we always kind of okay. like over-identify the laughing. Oh, the Kunkka pick. That's why they're <laughs> laughing. And it's probably just... They've got an idea. They yeah, they, they, crazy. yeah, exactly. Tackies is definitely coming. And it doesn't. And then we're like, why? It's just because they're joking around the entire time. In a shocking set of events, there it's are nothing. human beings who communicate who, with who each laugh. other. Wow. Yes, uh, this, is, this is how it This works. is the insights we're looking for here on the community panel. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, they talked about the brood pick, which has been a big talking point for us. Banned like 19 times. Picked like twice. And uh, XXS, Brood is just too good. They Absolutely. weren't worried about it being picked second. No. Second overall, a lot of time to counter. Because. Doesn't matter, it's XXS. Okay, just take it up regardless. I mean, I still I still think they're just pulling the old, uh, <laughs> oh, he's so good at Brood, Brood dude. You know, don't don't check out his professional win rate. Yeah. It's 40%. Uh, it's, it's, he's so good at Brood. You want to ban it every game. They're fishing for the free bands, dude. That's what yeah, they're they doing. Are. They're fishing for the free bands. Yeah, yeah. The hero's getting banned at exponential rate anyway. Just another, uh, it just gets banned statement. all the time. Okay. It really do. It really, really do. Uh, something else interesting to talk about in the Chinese communities, especially when we're talking about social media, is uh, there's been a war waging 
Waging? Raging. Raging? Waging? They're waging war They're waging and war. it's raging. It both works. I slipped up, but turns out I didn't need to correct myself anyway. Sometimes you just land on your feet like that. Host. And host then you material. play it off super smoothly like this. Talking about it is always playing it off smoothly. Absolutely. Uh, there has been a war on the social media side of things where... As usual, the LGD fans are basically fighting off against the hordes of angry people in China who put their faith in them and they didn't deliver LGD there on your jersey as well. Um, yeah, I mean, you'd be one of the, uh, what, what are they calling them? They're calling them the Axos versus the... Uh, that might be pronounced differently. I don't know if we're getting it right. But, you but know, uh, like any good Westerner, we'll just charge ahead confidently pretending we know better. Yeah, um, So it's the Axos versus the Mixos. The Muxos are the uh, maybe. Are maybe fans, yeah. and the Axos are the Arme fans. And this is based off EXO, which is a, a K-pop band. So apparently the diehard fans of that are called EXOs, or, or I, don't, I don't know. I don't know it's like standing, people. For all you people out there, all yeah. you, all you yeah. Zoomers, it's standing. Yeah, yeah. So if you're an Axo, you're, uh, you're an Arme fan. If you're a Muxo, you're a, <laughs> you're a maybe fan. Yeah. And apparently that's what it's, uh, it's, it's divulged into now. They, they've formed their own clans. Who knows? We're going to get old, uh, you know, Lord of the Fly style. Some kid's going to get killed by a rock. Who knows? Who's going to have the conch? True, true. The, the, the conch, the power. I, I will say, I hope you all are all Bexo fans. Hey. All right, keep going. Come on, That flew right over me, but that's okay. B Cop fans, come on! Oh, right, 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 yeah. I'm a book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Next, thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. Please. Next thing. Yeah, let's, let's, let's smoothly move on from this incredibly smooth segment. Uh, apparently, plus XO is uh, someone just uh, holding a different opinion. I don't know. It's, it's, it's going crazy over there. You know, no, the it, war is getting mad when they're just creating a whole different language to talk about the war. Well, the XO is the first letter of them plus XO. Okay. Ah, I see. So yeah. Just, no, 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 no. My thing was correct. Let's pretend that. Okay, sure. Um, and then, yeah, basically, um, just a lot of people throwing out crazy opinions left, right, and center. Um, it seems to be everyone's really hyped about LGD versus RNG. That is, like, the biggest thing, you know? Everyone's looking forward to it. Everyone's talking about it. Um, you know, top comments are saying stuff like, um, ball prediction, LGD stomp over RNG, but is Mexo that... stomp over AXO, therefore maybe stomps over Army. Is that bold? Is that bold? Oh, yeah. undefeated well. team stomps non-undefeated team. <laughs> bold prediction. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stable okay. team which sure. didn't shuffle. Beats team which did shuffle and is still finding their feet. Who are they missing in interviews that are still finding their feet. Mm, yeah. Bold. As long as you say it's bold. Definitely not italics. Mm, indeed, indeed. Uh, next comment, B-Cop. I don't even know what that one is. I'm just yeah, giving that but to The you. comment is just, I will go first. You so good at DPC. But what about TI final? And I think this is just shots at LGD, you know? It's what it's devolved into. It really yeah. is a mess over there. Chinese community sorted out. Stop I fighting each other. Find peace. <laughs> yeah, find peace. Stop talking about TI8, please. Leave it behind. Just that. That's all or, I've got. Just just stop talking about TI8. Or TI9. Or, TI, or TI10. Probably TI10. God, it is so hard to be an LGD fan. It certainly is. And that's going to just about round off the community corner segment. I hope we informed you about what's going on in the China community. And we will see you tomorrow for more China Dota action. No, we won't. We'll see you in three days' time for more China Dota action as we go on a short break. But of course, we'll be back bringing you the games. So smooth. Uh, give, us a, give us a smooth outro. We're out.